Hey guys, King Gath here, and welcome to another episode of the King Gath Podcast. Today's guest is what I would say is the best Fallout 4 weapon and armor artist that we have available to us today. Um, and uh, his stuff is just always mind-blowing. It, it puts to, get to shame a lot of the stuff in the base game. Uh, welcome, Nero. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for all oh, that. Man. Yeah, you, you deserve the hype. Your stuff is so damn good. And <clears throat> excuse me, I, I before we did this, I was like, I've never heard his name before, and I've been playing, like, I've played so many Skyrim mods, it's ridiculous. And so, like, I was looking you up for Skyrim, like, nope, no dice, except for you put out one of your weapons from, uh, oh, yeah, from the, the melee pack from, from Fallout 4. Not too long ago. The Crucible one. My God, is that thing beautiful. Yeah, that one that that was fun. so perfect for Skyrim. But yeah, most of my uh, Elder Scrolls stuff, I, I modded Skyrim for a very long time. Uh, very, very, uh -huh. very long time. I still play Skyrim every now and again i'm playing it i have a playthrough going right now um but i never released any of it it's it's just it's yeah. almost all small um x edit if if that name if people know what that is not i'm never never sure if people know what x edit is but um <laughs> uh tez edit fo4 edit yeah, x yeah, edit it's all yeah. the same it's all the same thing it's got yeah. a lot of different names it's all the same program uh it's all very well made by the guys that put it together and uh, oh, but, oh they, yeah. those guys those guys deserve <laughs> if you are not everybody out there if you are not contributing yeah, go, go support patreon them. money to the to those guys go do it because they're indirectly responsible for like every month uh, yeah we all have <laughs> to be using the ck if it wasn't for them and good lord oh, does yeah. nobody wants to <laughs> anyone, anyone who's ever no. found x edit knows that they don't ever want to touch the ck ever again i know i don't uh, i dread having to i go still that. I still I still use the CK a ton. Like really? I love X Edit, and I will never get rid of it out of my toolkit for automation. But yeah, certain screens. I'm just such a visual guy. Like I'm a I'm a web developer, mm -hmm. so I'm just so used to having nice little boxes yeah, to yeah. work with. I, I can understand, but it, it is like it is enough quests and stuff and like dialogue. I don't actually yeah. I've I've never done a dialogue mod, so I don't have any room to talk there. But I'd imagine it's really good. <laughs> I've seen I've seen the CK's dialogue thing, and I I. I I opened it up and I immediately closed it because I was terrified of it. But uh, yeah, it yeah, it's a little intimidating. There's a lot of stuff in there, but there's certain there's certain things I find way easier to do in the CK, like script properties. I find to be a pain in X Edit. Yeah, they're yeah. a breeze uh, in. Yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I never think about it. So. You, well, you have to compile everything in the CK anyway, so yeah, I do. I, I guess I right. So it's like yeah, it's already going to be open, so might as well go ahead and fill in the properties and whatnot. Or I could do what some people like. I know uh, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. Dooster does this for all of his scripts for uh, Amazing Follower Tweaks. Is he just hard codes the the uh, form IDs right into his scripts? Mm -hmm. So I don't think he ever wants to launch the CK. <laughs> it's just like I'll just compile That's... my scripts with the forms already in. Them. Uh, you're giving me ideas. I don't know. I try to be a good. <laughs> I try to be a good developer and like actually make my stuff forward compatible on the on the the very slim hope that somebody will actually open up my scripts and use them. Which I've gotten a, ah, I've gotten a nice. few messages about that, but they're they're. Few do you put between. do you put your source in the in the mods? I didn't used to, but I, I do on all my recent mods, and I it's one of those where it's like, I've never had a problem with people looking at my source or giving it away. It's just it was never yeah. very clean, and I didn't want people to see it. <laughs> That's I'm, that's my, how I feel yeah, too. I'm a like I felt my if anyone looked at if anyone looked at the code to Sim Settlements, they're like oh my they'd be like oh my god we're <laughs> run, we're relying our saves on duct tape and glue. This is horrible. Yeah. So I try and keep my code on the DL. And I, did, I started doing the same thing you did, though, is recently I've been making an effort to clean it up and make sure it's open source so that people can either I'm hoping either people will either tell me where I'm screwing up and, and, and tell me how I can improve I've, I've or they will make use of it and improve the their mods. Yet. I've never gotten a, a the, script correction message. People, <laughs> there's not very many scripters out there. That's for sure. I, I wouldn't consider there's myself not, a scripter either. I'm not very good at it. I just I make it work, but that's about it. I, uh, yeah, I, I actually am now that I know you open source them because I, I once in a while if I have no idea how somebody did something I will uh, decompile their yeah their there's a decompiler out through there. it it's not very yeah and it works it works it works, but, it works uh, well enough yeah you do you definitely have to have some scripting knowledge to know where it's being dumb yeah it's, it's it's hard to read on decompiled scripts but that it, they do work and I've used the thing before I think I used yeah. that like um, the jetpack mod I did. I used mm, okay. the decompiler for some old Skyrim mod, and that was how I figured out how to do that mod. But uh, uh, that's, that's, the jetpack is so awesome. That's one of the ones I get recommended the most <laughs> in my playthrough. Like, come on, Gath, you're jumping around with jet. Just add a jetpack to it. I'm like, not, I'm not sure how much I would. Like, 
I kind of love and hate that mod. That's one of those mods where it's like, okay, this is this is one of those things where only modders are gonna get this. Any, any only people <laughs> that have okay. opened up the X edit or the CK are gonna get this. But like, um, you know, you know the the mod legendary modding is was that what it's called? Legendary modification. It's the mod the mod that lets you put legendary mods on anything, right? Yeah. That mod yeah. is. I'm not sure what it's called either, but I know what you're talking about. That's it's got like you know. 80 million endorsements on the Nexus and it was a very early mod and it, you know, don't get me wrong. It deserves it. But when you look at what that mod is, there's, there's really nothing to it. You just added a few keywords to a thing. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not disparaging the guy that made it. It's sure, just what sure. it is. The jetpack is just like that. And I've always kind of hated that. It's like that. Like it, it really isn't that uh, complex. Okay. It's, it's some sure. animations switched around. And I mean, it, st okay. it still breaks the original PA and there's no way to fix that because a lot of the PA stuff is a uh, power armor. I keep, I'm already abbreviating. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, oh, I think, every, I think anybody watching my podcast gets okay, it. I'm, okay, uh, okay, I'm okay. All, all about that Fallout 4. That's where everybody knows me. So. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, um, that, that, that mod still breaks the original power armor. And uh, so it still drives me nuts that people love that mod as much as they do. But uh, it's, it's, it's still it's, one of those. It works. I can't complain. It's, it's just one of those where it's like, I hate, I hate that people know me for that one when I've put out so sure. much better stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're, and you can see like the pattern of your – if I were to go over your mods – and they were just scattered in order. I think I could pick out which ones you did first, oh. not only but complexity, but I can see you experimenting with different features and stuff in the CK, which is kind of cool to see. Like you can clearly – watch your uh your rise to where you've learned more and more and just keep getting better and better at, at what you're doing like with your latest weapon the archimedes i think the archimedes was that your last one no the, thing the, is... the what is it i keep wanting to call it the db 507 but that's not it it's the uh the children of adam one chosen of adam that's oh yeah yeah i okay DB, i forgot I, didn't, I haven't loaded that one yet so i didn't know that had a weapon in it i thought that was just an armor set yeah oh yeah yeah no it is the 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 chosen of adam was the armor set that i just put out a few weeks ago and then the archimedes was before that and uh yeah right just the the quality of these just keeps getting better yeah, and better. yeah. And you can see like, when i when scripting I started, and special effects when i started it, like i was really just repurposing assets that bethesda had made and i've never had a problem with that that was what most of my skyrim mods were is just repurposed assets that's what most skyrim mods still are because the, right. the, i mean the asset you can't really complain like the uh, the assets for uh fallout 4 are pretty amazing i mean they're a little Little, they are they're a little dirty for my likes I, I generally make my stuff cleaner and then i don't add nearly as much dirt as bethesda does but uh yeah they're, they're like i said like everything everything starts from there i i had I'd, I'd never opened zbrush before i started modding fallout 4 so i i don't know if, really yeah. see i i was taking bets with people that you were going to come on here and be like oh, i'm secretly a bethesda oh employee. no god no. uh yeah you got to talk because to like Trainways your stuff is those, your stuff is that quality <laughs> have you had him on here uh who who is that train whiz uh no i have not had train whiz oh. on but i i am in on a tear just inviting people like crazy cuz i want to get i want to get everybody on here i want to talk to everybody oh, yeah. like i haven't it's so it's so hard. I mean, there's so few of us when you think about it. People who have committed to <laughs> this much sad, modding. Actually. Well, I mean, I'm not I even just Fallout 4, but I'm just saying, I wish there were more too. But I'm saying, like you, I bet you know no one IRL who is also a big modder. Oh like, yeah. At least maybe maybe you've met some other modders. In I'm life, not in but high I'm school sure. anymore. I'm sure if I was still in high school doing this stuff, I'd, <laughs> I'd have a whole group of friends doing it. But that that kind of mentality only exists in high school. Yeah. Fair. Um. I I, th I see a lot of people in college doing it still too, but I would say the, most of the modders who have kind of committed to it, uh, it seems to be seem to be people who are adults and have uh, yeah, well, have everything hobby, uh, have everything know? all sorted out. It's a hobby, yeah. It's a it's a fun hobby too. Uh, it, it's ba basically re for me, it's replaced most of my video game play time. Like now I'm doing yeah, now I get to feel productive. That's definitely while I'm how playing. it was when I first got into it. Like okay, I don't want, I don't want to say Fallout Four is not a good game. It is a good game, but I certainly enjoy modding it more than I do playing it. Oh yeah, for sure. It's well, and uh, the game was great for for a playthrough, and, but it doesn't have nearly the replayability of something like Skyrim. Yeah, there, there's yeah. Something it's, about well, it's, it doesn't have a good. I does I'm sure it has an alternate start mod at this point. But when I first played oh, it, yeah, like definitely. I, this is okay. This is me ragging on Fallout Four. I absolutely hate Fallout Four. <laughs> Sorry, I hate I hate being railroaded to be uh, what is it like a lawyer or a soldier, or whatever the, right. the male female thing is. You have to start. It's so stupid, and then you're you're chasing around a kid for half the game, and it's. You can't get away from it because you're 
your character is so soft spoken your character sounds like such a nice guy and you can't be you can't yeah. be a jerk and the jokes are all terrible Ugh. I'm, I'm very much against I have been wondering why we haven't had somebody why we haven't somebody re, why someone hasn't revoiced the protagonist that seems like oh, that could because be because there's mod. 80 million lines they'd have to revoice I, I will, you know you look at the depth of some of these mods and that still doesn't make it seem impossible yeah. or you look at uh, the some of these mods that are getting built for Fallout or Skyrim or any of these games where they're doing like there's people remaking yeah, all of New Vegas <laughs> so you know oh, redoing like a couple thousand too, player lines oh my god yeah they're doing full dialogue replacement See, like that's would, gonna be i would go unbelievable i would go in the exact opposite direction i would go back to morrowind and just do big huge dialogue boxes and just have <laughs> characters talk about whatever the hell they were doing and you know just just let let a writer sit down and just write and just do that kind of thing i love morrowind for that kind of thing because it's just it's there if you care about it and you can yeah there's, there's tons of story and tons of depth and you know, Oblivion came along, and that kind of all went away. It's just putty-faced dark elf that turned himself invisible, or something like that. I'm trying to remember the quest from Oblivion, and I can't remember it. <laughs> I think it was a high elf that I, turned himself. I, invisible. Well, Oblivion, Oblivion's one I have never got given a fair shot. So mm. it came out during World of Warcraft's heyday for me. Uh -huh. So I was hey, so I, I, was, I was so I addicted. Both, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tried. I tried. I remember picking up Oblivion day one thinking like oh yes it's been so long since morrowind like i can't wait to get into another one I mean, i put in maybe 10 hours and i was like nope back to rating I gotta get in there <laughs> I, I think MMOs. i was like okay my philosophy on like um gaming is like i go really hard on one thing so i definitely was i definitely rode the uh the warcraft train really hard yeah and uh class i know that's i rode every expansion up to I, you know, I don't even remember. I remember Ice Crown Citadel best, but more than anything. But I wrote it really hard up to that point, and I, I kind of gave up on it. But uh, I'm kind of yeah, the that's same about, way. That's about when I quit as well. I tried to poke my head back in during uh, the Panda one, uh -huh. and I actually had a blast with it. I know a lot of people like hated that one, but mm -hmm. I, I, I came in I came after the content to. was all out, so I got to go from you know play through all of the raids right away without having to wait for anything so it was a blast to me but yeah. then i was like yeah i can't see myself getting into that raiding loop again that's yeah, too that's, much time it's a brutal loop man get, like what was it i think we raided twice a week and it was just like you realize you're 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 tied into that time slot twice a week for that same time it's, it's usually like around just after dinner time or whatever whatever it is for you and it's just one of those yeah. things like when you when you finally get out of it you realize how great it is to be out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it's like, Oh, it, it feels like quitting a job. It's yeah, like, oh, it does. It, it feels liberating in a weird way. It's like, Oh, I can, I can spend that time doing productive things. That's, this is great. <laughs> I don't know. It's, oh, I, it's, I, it's productive in a different way. You don't. Right. You build well, MMOs are like, you build social, what do you want to call it? Social memories. Whereas like a, a game like oblivion or whatever, or, or any of the Elder Scrolls or whatever, you build like sort of your own personal memories. And that's like, I don't know, it's it's debatable which one is more productive, I guess. But that's how, that's the way right. I, I That's why uh, I go so hard at I it. Think, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I don't want to dilute either one of those. I either want to have that hardcore sure. social experience or I want to have that right. hardcore story experience where I am the Dragonborn or whatever. Actually, funny thing right. about, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'll, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I was. I I go back and forth in, uh, between them. Like I'll, I'll get a get hooked on a multiplayer game, mm -hmm. get burned out from it, and then I got to go to a single player. And it's always between Bethesda games and something else. Mm -hmm. but like, well, between Skyrim and uh, Fallout Four for me was Destiny. Got way into Destiny. Oh yeah, yeah. I I was Overwatch oh. for a while. I had uh, I did pretty well in Overwatch though. I don't know. Overwatch was one of those where it's like I want to. I still want to like Overwatch, but God, they okay. do not know how to balance that game at all. <laughs> it's just one of those the patches seems, just it get seems coming. like an impossible task oh, yeah. to try and do well, i would not want to be in charge of that it's yeah i think their problem is that they are they're so this this is like me from thinking about it from a developer side they the art assets for that game are absolutely insane like the amount of effort it takes for them to make a new character in overwatch mm -hmm. is maddening like they have to make like 16 skins or something like that they have to make the, the model itself. They have to do tons of voice work. They have to re-record all the voice work for all the other characters. They have to build the, the character in the game and make it work. And they have to make it bug-free, which is, oh, God, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> but it's just like the big problem with Overwatch is like they committed to that so hard versus like a game like Dota or League of Legends where like 
look at a Dota hero or a League of Legends hero, you know, it's it's a low poly model that you're seeing from a mile away. And it's got a few voice right. lines, not a ton. Like development wise, I think Overwatch was doomed from the start because they were never going to have like a hundred character roster that was going to make the game balanced. They're always going to be stuck sure. in this like 20 man roster. And it's just from a develop, like I said, from a development standpoint, I don't know how that game can ever be balanced, but they didn't balance in the way I liked it. So I stopped playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think any of those, the, it's a, especially in a game like that where they're planning on being at an online service, it's going to keep going on for a long, long time. I don't think they ever, they ever intend on it actually becoming fully balanced. I yeah. think they just shift who the most powerful oh, yeah, are. It's yeah, kind of like the TCGs and stuff. Like you're never going to have a balance between all the Hearthstone decks or mm -hmm. Magic the Gathering, same thing. So I think they just, they figure it's kind of a rolling metagame balance. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. just the, that's the life they're going to live. Yeah, well, that's so. that's well. I guess that's why I quit because I I quit because the character I liked stopped being decent. So <laughs> I'm one of those guys. I am. Um... I'm so bad at shoot multiplayer shooters that I never bothered to try and get good at Overwatch. Mm -hmm. I just played a handful of rounds with my buddies, and I was like, "Nah, this game's not for me." Yeah, it looks beautiful though. Yep, it's such a pretty game. Do you find that that game inspires any of your own artwork? Um, no, but it's I like very the robots. cartoony and very stylized. I like the robots. It's, very, it's in that also game. very impressive. Yeah. Uh, you like, like the robots yeah, yeah the, the way the the way like uh well i, I call them robots but like reinhardt the uh, the big tank guy sure i love the, i love that big armor i, I it's, it's the big big shoulder style i guess that's just blizzard style isn't it I'm that's a, blizzard I'm really yeah looking that's their, their to, uh, <laughs> what is it warcraft 3 reforged because like oh yeah they're doing it they're doing such oh, a cool thing with the art in that game like okay so the original warcraft 3 comes out right and they have this amazing blizzard cinematic and then the game itself looks nothing like the cinematic but they're making right. the reforged Warcraft 3 rebuild or remaster, whatever you want to call it. And they're matching the original cinematic style, which is so fucking cool. Like, that is very that's cool. so awesome that they would even do something like that. Because, I mean, you know, you can't deny Warcraft has a certain style to it. I mean, they, they took the Warcraft 3 style and made it into an MMO. And they're just, right. they're, they're, they're brave enough to throw that all away and try this thing with the the cinematic style, and I think that's really cool. I'm looking forward to that. Plus, I just like Warcraft Three, so yeah, it's but it's really dated in the graphics now. So it was all it was a big surprise. It's to still see them watchable. I still watch Warcraft remake. Three on Back to Warcraft's Twitch channel. That's I still enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. It's I put a lot of hours into that, but I I haven't watched any of it on Twitch recently. I should I should go poker my head in there. It's fun to watch some of those older games because it's hard to get the same like the nostalgia can only take me so far in those older games, mm -hmm. but you, there's a chance on Twitch to watch a lot of people who have never experienced these, try out these games for the first time. So you can get a little, little vicarious thrill out of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like the, um, I just, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, I've always been a fan of RTS games and, uh, I, I guess I, it's just blizzard, blizzard RTS games. I guess I can't really say I'm a fan of other, there's no other competitive RTS games, but I just like competitive RTS games. I like watching them especially. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun watching the uh, We Are Billions, which I know it's not a traditional RTS. Yeah, it's kind of it's like a one, PVE it version of it. It's I haven't played it either. Just watching people play it, I'm like, okay, this is really cool. It's kind of a uh, I want to say steampunk style yeah, versus yeah. zombies essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah but, steampunk. That's yeah, that's exactly it. Right, and that's uh, that's really cool to see and an involvement in the genre because really the there's not a lot yeah, of RTS yeah, going yeah, on. Now that I think about it, you're right. That's a that's a it's a pretty dead genre. There's not uh, not yeah, many I don't developers know why. willing it's... to. Well, it's I think it's because they all know Blizzard sort of corners the market, and they're never going to break into it. <laughs> Plus, it's like I sure. mean, shit. Starcraft Two is on life support at this point, and that's a that's a totally modern uh, RTS game, and like it doesn't right. get very much viewership on Twitch. I know that much because I still watch it. Yeah. I'm sure it's still big. And crazy, hey, maybe though. maybe it's just just lack yeah it's just lack of interest right now. But it, I, I would imagine that's one of those things that'll come back into it'll become vogue again. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a matter of people are focused on the battle royales yeah, and yeah. the the team deathmatch type games like the Overwatch and uh, Apex now. So um, maybe it'll just be strategy. It'll just get popular again. But it's Royale also it's probably also because it's one of the harder genres to play to play like to play even decently. I remember w how nasty it is to to try and ladder. Starcraft 2 even when it first yeah. came out I remember just getting my butt kicked over and over and over again yeah I was never good at it either <laughs> so that's, Starcraft's <laughs> definitely a, a more fun to watch I think that's one of the other reasons that nobody no developers ever want to get into it is Starcraft is sure. a it's it's a better experience to watch it than it is to play it and you don't have to pay anything to watch it <laughs> 
That's true. Yeah, that's that's got to have a big impact on the games industry. I remember watching a an episode of South Park where they the um, God, I can't remember the name of the new characters. The 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 Canadian kid's brother, uh, his head was like the ki- Ike. That's Ike, the one. Yeah, yeah. Was wa- just watching Twitch, and they're all like, "What is he doing? What do you mean he's just watching video games?" And I felt the same way. Like, wait, that's a thing. That's because <laughs> usually once it makes it to South Park, it's such a prevalent thing that everybody knows about it already. I was out of the loop because I didn't catch on to Twitch very quickly. Mm. And uh, now I, I get the appeal now, especially because I don't have as much time to game. Mm. So it's it's a fun thing to have on in the background when I'm busy doing other stuff. But it is a, it's got to be mar- a little bit market warping that oh, it's there, absolutely there's a generation market. that would rather watch than play. Yeah, one of the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the EA, like this is in the news, like either today or yesterday or something. EA just fired all their, a whole bunch of marketing people because it's like they just they just released Apex and Apex right. is literally like the well, it's not the biggest game ever, but it's like Fortnite. It's a huge, huge battle royale game. And like, how sure. did how did Apex get popular? You know, there was no marketing for Apex. They just paid a bunch of Twitch streamers right. to play it, and it worked. Right, and that's probably and way it, cheaper than way, paying imagine, network television paying stuff. Yeah, a marketing guy that went to college for that that nonsense. Uh, right. You know, a well, I, from wage. what I understand, is most most of the AAA games were spending about the same amount on development as they, or on marketing as they were on development. Oh, I'm sure. So they might, ha- if they had like a 400 million dollar budget for a game, it would be 200 million for for dev work and the and assets and everything, and then 200 million just to market it. Yeah. Like, imagine what two million when you could just pay five streamers yeah. <laughs> a million bucks each. <laughs> and what's, they'll what's the guy take it to the Ninja top. or something that plays Fortnite? Yeah. Billions of dollars. Right. Like just you, how much, how much is his time really going to cost you? Like, really think about it. Right. You could give that guy a hundred <laughs> grand, which is less than you're going to give, which, which, which is yeah. Less than you're going to give an actual guy working for you. You give, give right. Ninja a hundred grand just to play your game for a couple hours. And that's better right. marketing than some guy in a tie is ever going to give you. Right. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. That's a, it's a pretty big shakeup, but I think there's also, I've seen, talks at uh, dev conferences about how now some of these game developers are trying to bring twitch into it almost like come up with interactive experiences where the viewers and and players can yeah i'm trying to play together almost which i never participated so there's but i know they do it (laughs) yeah but that i think that's it's gonna just continue to they're gonna start developing in that direction now so try and come up with games so they're already working obviously they're like apex is a great example of it where they're trying to make it more watchable with all the animations and stuff and I think Overwatch was in the same boat. Of, Are they? I, it's just I, I don't fun to watch. There's like so much it's... going on. I, yeah, okay, that's, hey, that's... I haven't played. I haven't played it either, but I've watched a bunch of it <laughs> just because out of curiosity. Because it's so weird yeah. that this game launched on a day and then instantly like the number one game it's all over Twitch. Fortnite's like, that's ass, bizarre. Fortnite was on top for ages. Yeah, I, right. actually, that's that's it's funny you bring that up. I was always thinking about that. For uh, uh, Apex, Apex, yeah, Apex has terrible animations or at least it did when it originally launched i haven't watched it in a while but that was the first thing i noticed about it is the animations were, were god awful like the guy climbing over a, a wall or something would just like sort of teleport up and over and i just thought that what is how is this acceptable and uh overwatch <laughs> kind of does the same thing it's like you know i've heard people say apex is a terrible spectator game and i think they're right uh but you want to talk about a terrible spectator game holy shit overwatch is the most unwatchable game in the history of video games you, you, uh, see, I think it depends on what you're looking for in spectating, because I find those to be like a great, both of those games to be great visual spectacles. I don't know. I played opposed- I played Overwatch up to top 500, and I cannot sit there and watch the Overwatch League because I can't tell what the hell is going on. <laughs> like what is it, I, maybe what that's that the difference mean? is i don't know what's going on anyway oh, so to me it's all nonsense yeah. i mean i can watch i don't I play either Starcraft. of the games <laughs> i played Starcraft up to like maybe maybe diamond or something and that was a long time ago so diamond probably is even was is like bronze today but like uh sure like i can understand what's going on in Starcraft. i cannot understand at all what's going on in a, in a professional overwatch game i i just feel bad for blizzard for just making making this <laughs> so, putting so much money into the overwatch league and then a guy like Ninja yeah. just pulls the same viewership, you know, every day. <laughs> and just right, like, you right. got to figure they're putting so much into this and it's, it's still, it's not fixing the fact that it's a terrible to watch game or it's very difficult to know what's going on. You have to, you have to, you have to be listening to what the guys are saying on this, on the, the right. commentators. Cause that's, that's the only way you can really know what's going on. And I, I hate that. About yeah. It. With all the re I think, I think that's one of the, the beauties of the, battle royale system is it's very clear yeah, to yeah. see what's happening you're slowly moving to the center of the map to kill everyone it's very it's uh, they have, obvious they have objective tools for that too because like, you know the helicopter view is such a good tool in a battle royale because you can you know you see multiple teams squaring off with each other and they're just 
none of that translates in Overwatch. Yeah. It's it's really just too bad. But yeah, that's that's I no think, doubt. That's I wonder why. if it's because of the fact that it's it's like a back and forth game, so people keep respawning and yeah, that yeah. kind of complicates things. It's hard to tell who's actually winning, whereas in a game battle royale, it's like you're, he's alive, he's saying his, or his team's <laughs> yeah, it's, alive, it's he's easy. winning. It's fine. There's no, there's no coming back. <laughs> I guess there is coming back in Apex now, but yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's it is a uh, the battle royale is so much a so much of a better spectator sport than a. Uh, the, Especially at the event level, because like you said, they've got the helicopter cam and stuff, so they can go scout between things. I always find it a little boring to watch an individual play, like streamers mm -hmm. do the battle royale, because it's half the time they're just, <laughs> bolt, you know, they're ripped, yeah. they're healing up and collecting items and hiding. <laughs> like it's funny, the best streamers always, and it's smart, but they they tend to do more hiding than actually yeah, yeah. fighting. So they're well, waiting yeah, for the opportunities the, yeah, to, 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 to snipe. That's how you get the wins. <laughs> right, right. So I find that to be a little boring, but the championships and stuff are always crazy. There's just so much action going on nonstop because they're basically just finding the action for you. Yeah, hey, I'm still waiting for all that uh, Fallout 76 Royale. <laughs> you know that's coming, oh, right? That's, I'm oh, yeah, it absolutely. Well, I think it depends if they have enough players because who know? I don't know how well the game oh, did God, and how, how big the player base is maintained. Yeah, because they're, they A lot of us, I, I was definitely one of them where I went in hopeful and then I went in hopeful but skeptical. <laughs> was let down pulled out and i can't think of anything they're going to do to pull me back in mm, so like the, the only thing that I, I was a little excited about the idea of of hardcore like pvp mode because i would rather if i'm gonna play a survival game i want to feel scared but mm -hmm. that game doesn't do it for you right now so maybe i'll pop in with survival mode but i still don't know i think it's it almost it had its one chance you know where everyone cared and because it wasn't a great experience right then that a lot of people left and i don't know that they'll come back because there's too many great games coming out i don't know month. i think i think mods can still save it i think guys like you that are like you know settlement mods i think settlement mods are how that game is going to come back and continue to exist because i think i think the settlement it's, it, it blows my mind i was like i said i, I have a i have a skyrim playthrough going right now and i was playing skyrim yeah. and i was thinking to myself god i really wish i could put down a settlement right now and I realized <laughs> that's how good the settlement system is in Fallout 4. Like, it's so well put together. And then, obviously, guys like you take advantage of it. And it's like, it blows me away that they, they shit the bed so hard on Fallout 76 when all they had to do is just make make it Fallout, Fallout Settlement Edition. And it would have been great. It would have been great. <laughs> it would have been great. I I, I honestly think it might be some sort of engine limitation, uh, be, mostly because they built it on the tech for Fallout 4, and I know all the limitations now with the workshop stuff mm -hmm. because I can crash anybody's game if I want to <laughs> with uh, just adding a, adding a few things in there. So there are certain limitations I could see that once you introduce the multiplayer component of all yeah, of a yeah. sudden, all of this stuff has to be persisted all the time for 24 to 30 players. Like That's a, that's yeah, a stretch I for that engine. That. So I, th I think they basically need to... They're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and rethink things before, and then when it comes back town around for Fallout Five, they'll have an engine that's capable. You know, they'll know because when they they've acknowledged in plenty of interviews that they thought Fallout the settlement system was gonna be a dud. They were really? they almost cut it. Uh, apparently, it wasn't until was at some like, point even fading single fading singles the guy that makes like the the camping mods and stuff for for Skyrim, like he's been making those for so long and they were so popular. They must have like. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how much of a finger on the pulse that Bethesda right. has on the mod scene, but it's like I, I could already I, tell. I think my bet is it's part of the problem is, is that their development cycle is so long. When your development cycle is five years long, it's hard to react to the yeah, market. Yeah, it could be. So it could just be a matter of they're just way behind. <laughs> so they saw, you know, like they, a lot of people have said that the, the settlement system in Fallout 4 plays like a cleaner version, a cleaner, simplified version of the uh what's the mod called something settler for uh, new vegas mm -hmm. and uh real-time settler is uh is ba essentially what it plays like yeah, yeah. i haven't played that mod so i can't yeah, i can't I, verify I, first, that but I, I wouldn't it. be shocked if they were using mods as r&d for their next games would, because that seems totally reasonable i mean that when i first, yeah, I would hope when you... I first played uh when i first saw the settlement system i immediately thought of fading signals mod the, the camping mod um, yeah where you like can put down like it blew my mind when i was playing skyrim and it's like oh i can just put a bedroll down that's that's awesome and like right. you know, that's the first thing i thought of when i saw the, this the fallouts so i'm sure they do but yeah i don't know as that's hilarious to think that they would they would have thought it would be a dud 
right by well, well that's i mean that's teacher. what it's showed in the interviews and there's a point i know there's one where todd howard says like it wasn't until this particular demo where they made a vault boy out of the little light modules that you can color mm. in the game like once we saw that we're like okay yeah this is, needs to stay this is really cool <laughs> but there's certain uh there's certain parts about the gameplay that seem very rushed and and pointless like the actual settlers and the fact that you make them food I and mean, that's where i kind of i took advantage of that yeah whole, well there's and, a lot lot to be improved and on and obviously on you've you know mods do that which is why i still i still have some hope for fallout 76 i've never put okay I've, i put i put an hour into one of the beta tests and then i never touched it again. yeah so you know it's <laughs> I, it's one of those I, i'm still hopeful i want it to be good i really do i really want it to be good i mostly just want to explore the world though i'd love to play just solo fallout 76 and yeah, in an FOB yeah i think i'll, I'll definitely be I'll 100 percent be picking up and a subscription to their whatever however they do it. I assume it'll be like you rent a server or something for 15 bucks a month or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what the mod tools look like. What did they gut from it? So like, what's still possible between Fallout 4 and 76? Because so far, for the most part, with at least between Skyrim and and Fallout 4, they didn't they didn't really take anything away. They just give you new stuff to play with. Yeah, I don't I don't think so, it'll, it'll be that bad. I mean, like I said, like if it's if it's a solo experience and it's a private server and all that stuff, there's why would they cut anything out? I can't imagine why. Like it's, it's private servers. Right. Who cares? Like let let people cheat if they want to cheat. Admins can deal with that. Right, sense. right. Well, that's I think that's the fun of the Bethesda games is you essentially get to and mods is the most popular mods seem to be the ones that let you trick yourself into thinking you're not cheating. <laughs> when in when in fact all these custom weapons yeah, are I feel always about super overpowered all my shit and on the, uh, the Kim Lab, but you got to do it because <laughs> if you don't do it, you'll get like oh god. That reminds me of the Crucible mod. I put, I put that the making the Crucible, making the big giant Doom sword on the uh, Atronarch. Atronarch? I did, I'd actually have never. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Atronarch. Yeah, forge. I don't think I've said that aloud either. I don't think I've ever <laughs> said that out loud. The Atronarch Forge. I'm pretty sure someone said it like that in the game. Anyway, I put the sword in the Atronarch Forge, so you had to make it with that, and that was like okay. people could not figure it out. I had the recipe on <laughs> the web page, on the mod page. I had a book right next to, to the, the Atronarch Forge. It's all spelled out. <laughs> People could not right. figure out how to make the damn sword. And I, a part of that could just be other mods messing with the thing because it's kind of a janky. Yeah. I mean, that's the first workbench if you really think about it. Like making things from scratch kind of. I imagine right, that's right. how a lot of that started. But it's... Um, yeah, if, if you don't make things readily available, people don't tend to find them, and they get they tend oh, to. Oh, I, I that, the see that's a section. decision a lot of a lot of players give me flack about because I, for the longest now I've I've broken on it, but for the longest time, the only way you could start my mod was to go to the Museum of Freedom, and a lot of people's complaint was like, well, I don't want to get anywhere near Preston. Yep, yep, uh, I, I would I have like, said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I, I have yeah. it set up so that you can you can you don't actually have to go to Preston's room. You can dodge him and just leave his quest there. But people's complaint was I don't want to have that quest even started in my log. I was like, all right, well that's <laughs> people. Are, I, people are I, that. Specific. I don't know. What to, I like well. There's that's a here's specific. a console command you can use to get around it. But uh, but yeah, people. If it's not there are tons of people who will just report your mod's broken. It doesn't work. There's nothing in the menu. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I was like, well, you you didn't watch the 30 second quick start video. I, mean, <laughs> I, I good I, luck I getting people to, to read you. mod pages. I I put things. I know. I, I, I know. how <laughs> what is it? I have a how to get in like all caps all over my mod pages, and people still ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do. I feel bad about putting everything on the uh, the Kim Lab, and it's like a because it is. You're right. It's cheating, but uh, there's just there's no other there's no better way to. Uh, no well, I, I mean, that there are two. I think there are a couple of better ways, and that's what I've been trying to experiment with. And I don't know what I don't know what the best way is. I am personally, for me, the best way is the immersive way. I want to find it out in the game yeah, world yeah, at yeah. a balanced time. That's that's kind of how I design all my stuff around. Although, I mean, for the most part, now it's just that hollow tape. Most of the other stuff you have to really work for. Which I actually wanted to talk about one of those things in a minute here. But the I think planting it in the world is the best way. But it, the problem is, is it's hard to like. I guess you can you almost have to have two ESPs if you want to do it that way. It's like yeah. here's the like, like the that. main file. Here's the main file for the the average noob who just wants to open up a, open up a mod and not have to work at all and just wants to experiment because I think that's those those people who complain are the ones who they didn't actually want to start a playthrough they want to like play around with your weapon for 20 minutes and then turn it off yeah that's yeah. who I imagine are the people that are complaining then a, an alternate file for the people who want 
the immersion to be you know find it in some balanced way or have to fight a boss or do some puzzles or, or whatever because the players i think a lot of the players like us who will sit down like you said you're in the middle of a skyrim playthrough yeah, yeah. i know you mean serious business when you say that you're, <laughs> you're talking hundreds of hours yep. and i think those of us who do that would like as much as possible to be in there to find because then it gets us a new sense of that exploration of like oh i don't remember this being here and then oh it's from Milan. cool you can't please them all can't please them all. Uh, it looked like you were experimenting, though, with that. Because some of your mods, you planted them on NPCs. Some of them, you've used level lists. Yep. Others are just the crafting. Well, I do. Did, was, uh, it, was that what it was? Experimenting just to see what would what would work well? Uh, yeah. It, okay. The, the, the ideal way for me would be to just place things in the world. Like, sure. have, but the Institute is only so big. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's only so much open desk space in the institute to put the new high-tech guns like eventually yeah. somebody some other modder is going to put something on that shelf or i've i personally have filled up all of the shelves and desks in the institute with all sorts of crazy guns <laughs> like you can't it's such a it's such a power if you use all of my mods it's such an amazing power spike when you get the institute and you can just pick up <laughs> a solar cannon that can call down air strikes anywhere in the world <laughs> just because you you got into the institute it's one of those things where it's like that's that's still the best way but like there's just not enough room in the world for for all that stuff right so i've started yeah. uh with the most recent one the uh, chosen of adam one i did a uh the the scripted level list injection whatever you want to call it and that's that seems to have worked pretty well because that means it shows up in a vanilla list this is this is like mod this is hardcore mod talk that only other modders would, right. would get but it's one of those where it's like if other modders use that same vanilla list, it can uh it'll still work with their mods. What was I can't remember the name of the other uh Children of Adam mod that's floating around out there, but it's the big one. It's the other big one. Um right. but it works with that mod flawlessly because they both use that list and it just it just injects directly into it. So that's the best that's probably the best way. But I don't think I'll ever not use the Chem Lab because it's too it's, it, it's, it takes it, care of that yeah, takes, subset of users who are, are going to yell those, at you. <laughs> those people that can't quite can't quite figure it out, and uh, very few people, very few people, I I think have a problem not scrolling to the bottom of the chem lab list. I put an X at the beginning of every, you know, Fallout has the um, the sub menus within the sub menus within the sub menus or whatever it is. Right, I always right. put an X in front of my name in front of the project name. So that it goes to the bottom of the chem the chem lab list and it's easy to ignore. That's the best I can do, and I think that's Got that it. So plus the scripted injections are the best way to get a mod into the world. Yeah, without, with pleasing the most amount of people, which to sure. me is fine. Like, I think the the nice thing about the the scripted injection too is you get to kind of level gate it then, which yeah, is a yeah. nice way to prevent it from being overpowered if people want to ignore the the chem thing because then you don't have to worry about it just popping up at level five because it rolled randomly. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of ways to so, do it, do but you... I'm step. It's one of those where every one of my mods is so stupidly different. Like I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those where it's like I. It's it's also a. Uh, it's a matter of like you go long enough in between mods that you forget the lessons that you learned in the sure, last one. Sure. Like, you know, I don't I don't make guns every time, so I kind of I I pretty much forget what I did. What did I do last time with the cryo lance or whatever? You know, I don't remember the lessons <laughs> I did there. So. But not, yeah. not much of a self note taker. Yeah, I'm not, well, it's not so much that I'm a self note taker. It's that well, the notes are all there for you in like Fallout 4 Edit. It takes you a second to look it up, but you don't necessarily know why you did it. And I do take notes. On right, right. My mods, but uh, no, I think I think as a coder, I'm so used to almost telling myself a story while I'm coding. Like I've just put so many comments in because I know <laughs> that that exact thing is going to happen. I'm going to come back in six months and need to edit it, and I have no idea what the hell I did. Yeah. So now I find myself even doing that with things like making models and stuff because we we take advantage of all the fallout assets and do their use the static collection system to build new models within the ck mm -hmm. and even those steps i write them all out and it turns out it's useful because then i can give them out as tutorials but i do it for myself first because i know exactly what you're saying there i'm gonna have to relearn everything later otherwise yeah it's such so a I tend it's to just write myself tutorials lots of lots of like phases to it you know you uh, by the time yeah. you're, you're on phase six you've forgotten what how phase one works <laughs> that's, that's at least how it is hey. for me i i gotta right. i gotta rev up whenever i'm starting a new project it feels like i'm revving up zbrush for like the first time in ages and i'm like oh god i gotta remember this interface and if you've ever used zbrush <laughs> that's quite the interface to remember 
I have not. It's too intimidating to me. I know how to do basic 3D modeling. I, I learned 3D Studio mm -hmm. in my high school and college years. Nice, and I never used it for anything. It just kind of was, it was just fun. Yeah. And uh, I tried to, mo I, I modded Quake 3 with it, built a lot of gun and character models for that, but never anything real life use. And then uh, now I come back to it and it's like, oh, it's exactly the same interface yeah. still today. Max is great but like uh, that. ZBrush, I open and it's like, nope, <laughs> this is not for me. This is for an artist. ZBrush will scare the shit out of anyone that's like, I when I first learned modeling, I think my first modeling program ever was um, Rhinoceros. Which isn't really a modeling oh, program. Oh, okay. That's a, what do you call it, CAD? CAD drawing? I'm not sure the exact wording for it. I, yeah. But it's a very technical program, or it was. I don't know if it even still exists anymore. But, yeah, I don't uh, think it still exists. Or if it does, it got folded into yeah, the Yeah, I'm sure ones. Adobe bought it. and Or not Adobe, uh, Autodesk bought it and killed it. They're, right. they're good at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, that was my first modeling program. And like I, I went on to 3ds Max in high school. Oh, no, I, yeah, no, if I think about it, Rhinoceros was junior high or something like that. And 3DS Max it's, was... I, I remember that name and it sounds really old. It yeah, sounds it's like very old, old very, software. very old. And yeah. it's, it was it was old when I got my hands on it. It was, it was just what was on the <laughs> computer at the time. So, you know, of course I'm going to mess sure. around with it. But yeah, and then uh, 3DS Max is like, I don't I don't know. It's, it's it, it, it has a file menu at the top left, you know what I mean? ZBrush doesn't have right. a file menu at the top left. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the first thing people know. Wait, well, how do I save my project? It's like, well, right. you 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 do everything through hotkeys, and if you don't know the hotkeys, you're just sort of SOL. But yeah, oh, ZBrush, is, ZBrush is a very scary program in that regard, and I don't blame you for <laughs> being scared of it. it. Took me a long time. It's pretty power. It's pretty powerful though. I've seen the work people can do in it. Oh it's yeah, pretty well, amazing. it's the it's, it's a standard for like everything now. Like everything is based on it. I think. I think, um, yeah, like, what's what's the name of that? Uh, there's a there's another three D program that can do really nice sculpting, but I don't remember what it is. I think it's, I don't think it's three D code. Three D code is something else. I I got too many stupid programs in my head now. <laughs> but yeah, ZBrush yeah, is like this. I have no program. idea. That's outside of my outside of my realm. I I've I've mostly retired from calling myself an artist of any type and now I'm <laughs> strictly into the programming region. So I was I, I was able to power about... through ZBrush because it's like when you realize just how much ZBrush is used by like all Hollywood movies made with ZBrush. Right. All all special effects, all video game assets, they all start in ZBrush. And once you when you understand that and if you really want to get into that stuff and make that kind of make video game assets that look like they belong in the video game. Uh, ZBrush right. is where you go and you, you just have to power through it. You, you will figure it out. The other thing there is like right. tutorials nowadays are so good. Tutorial yeah. th these like, and not like, I don't know why anyone would, this, this is me railing against college, but why would you ever, go, <laughs> why would you ever go to college to make video games? Cause the information, well, I know why you would, it's to make like social connections, which is very important in this business. Right. But like, the actual knowledge to make assets, at least with art assets, you can learn all that stuff on Gumroad and just buying buying like cheap tutorials. Like you're getting, you pay, I think the most expensive tutorial I've bought is like 70 bucks from Matt okay. Thorpe. I think that's, I could be getting that completely backwards, but it was, it was the most expensive one I've ever bought. And it's like 70 hours or something like that of video Holy crap. high quality video <laughs> and the guy takes literally a blank canvas in in zbrush and has a finished video game low poly asset at the end of it and it's like that kind of exposure and experience is is only 70 dollars. and like how can you argue with that price he probably puts it on sale all the time too so it's probably even cheaper than that and it's just like right. or, or you could go to a video game college i'm, I'm making the quotation marker sign you can't see it but i'm making it um you go to a video you. game college and get an education and uh you, you'd spend thousands of dollars to get that same information so i, I don't know why video game colleges are a thing if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about going to a video game college please do not go to a regular college make connections do it that way don't go to a video game college. yeah I, I think that's the whole well i mean obviously that scandal that's going on right now with all those all those rich people who paid for their kids to get into college i think it's made oh, it yeah, yeah. it just made it crystal clear what mm -hmm. we all i think we all secretly knew was going on <laughs> which is that college is all about just connections like the the and aside from maybe stem cell or stem cell stem fields where you're learning yeah. actual engineering and stuff for Real the most science. part most stuff you're better off actually learning it just by doing it yeah so 
But oh, yeah. there are other gates there too where going to college is helpful. Like the fact that I mean, obviously we we can you know sail the seven seas for this, but things like 3D Studio Max are not cheap. So uh, educational versions are, and hey, I'm not making I'm not selling anything with my mods. So you know, True. you can get it's it's perfectly fine to use educational stuff. I don't I use a professional license for ZBrush just because I think the well one ZBrush's licenses are, are dirt cheap. Adobe li- not Adobe, mm-hmm. the the, the uh, Autodesk license isn't it's a it's a perpetuating thing which is god it, it kills me it's 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 expensive uh Autodesk yeah. screw you guys um <laughs> and uh but yeah the, the ZBrush is so dirt cheap compared to other stuff um yeah well, I, I assume that won't last if they're the industry standard eventually somebody's gonna buy them and yeah the yeah, price. yeah. Uh, speaking of that that's uh that's the other program I use is a substance painter and that just got bought yeah. by Adobe. And I'm so, uh, hey, I, I think you still can. If you ever want to uh-huh. get into to, to video game asset hobby making or whatever, get you a yeah. copy of Substance Painter now. And that license should last you before, before it, gets, it go, gets rolled into Creative Cloud. Yeah, you got to spend 50 bucks a month for it. Yeah. And you have to start paying monthly right. for it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's I, I am, I'm anticipating soon they're gonna because cre- creative cl- like I have creative cloud I use it I use it so yeah, much I service. use so much of that Great software if you use the programs yeah I it's, think if you if, I think if you use two or three of them it's a it's a fine deal considering how often they update them but man I can't I can't imagine they're not gonna split it into multiple services soon where it's just gonna to try and then jack up the price because they keep buying so much software where it's yeah, gonna be yeah, like, yeah. all right now if you want the full version it's gonna cost you eighty dollars a month or something crazy I, I was yeah I was just thinking like. I'm, I would I would love it if I could if I never had to touch Photoshop again I could just do everything in a substance painter which I guess is the goal but that's <laughs> probably years out but it's still one of those where it's like it's nice just sort of having a program be on its own and uh, sure I don't know I don't know if substance painter is going to stay like that for very long yeah I would I would bet not I would bet ultimately it. their goal is to roll roll it all into this into the monthly service model because that's just what's best for them yeah it's it pretty much everybody wants to get into that obviously even but Bethes- even our beloved Bethesda couldn't resist yeah the, yeah the uh, model. even though they're not charging for you know monthly access just the potential to have customer it's it, really funny to know? me that they felt the need to do that because the they have probably the most loyal player base in all of gaming <laughs> yeah they do. we are all Almost we are all ra- like that's why i i assume, i thought creation club was going to be much different than it turned out to be i thought it was going to be something more like they were going to try and bring on companies like obsidian and and mm-hmm. other developers to make cool stuff for them so that, that would there would just neat. be perpetual new dlc for us to purchase and I'm like heck yeah that sounds amazing and then in reality it's like oh these are more micro e weapon mods and stuff so that's unfortunate but that to me i think if they had gone the other way i think they would have had a built-in audience they would have been able to sell that stuff forever of uh just having companies roll in and make new dlc or even hobbyists coming in and and doing that because some of the some of the stuff especially for skyrim some of the stuff that gets released for that from modders like that the uh what's the latest one from the project uh aho is it aho i'm gonna screw that up the uh not enduriel um god the uh and it's that murder mystery one right that well that one's amazing too yeah Yeah. no there was one that just released and i can't think of the name of it and kobus is going to kill me because he's on that team uh (laughs) but uh there's a there was a mod that just released a few days ago unbelievable and the the stuff is like dlc quality and size and these guys just like rip put it together on their in their free time it'll be like four or five guys just you know spend a year bashing their heads against it and put out this crazy content and like those of us were but those players just keep coming back and playing skyrim and if uh, bethesda did something like that but I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't complain. I'm glad those things. I, I I think I can respect Bethesda's hands off approach, but uh, I don't know if it's. I, I would like to see more people getting like like those guys. Like imagine how great great that would be if you you worked on that mod for a few years, and Bethesda just comes in and says, "Hey, we're gonna pay you to let us distribute this. Put a price tag on it and distribute it for you." Like that'd be yeah. that'd be great. That, that's like every modder's dream, I'd imagine. I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I'd like to get paid to get mo- to do modding. I kind of am. I started a Patreon. Um, sure. But uh, like that's but every, it's not, it's never enough to sustain you. Just yeah, with the, yeah, yeah. like oh, the yeah, the still, Patreon stuff, never enough for sustaining. Everybody go. I'm gonna make sure I put a link in there. Everybody go donate to Nero. His stuff is amazing. Uh, you don't have to. Do uh, that. I still don't. I still uh, am building the Patreon. It's not. It's not worth your money yet. Uh, oh you know what it's it, i think i think most people who want to donate like i i never look ag- i never again the people i donate to patreon 
I never look at their page again. I don't care about any of the benefits. All I care mm-hmm. about is I want to like support that off that artist and make sure they keep doing their thing. Yeah, that's so, that's the way I look at it too. That's the way I'd, I'd I wish it worked that way. But like I see, I see other Patreons that of people I like and they do so much stuff. This is that's why I, I didn't want to do a Patreon for a long time, is because there's so much so much you can put back into it. And I feel like right. I don't want to spend my time doing that. I want to spend my time making stuff. You know, I don't want to. Right. I already like I put a lot of effort into my mod pages. I thankfully I like I like putting a lot of effort into my mod pages with like rotating gifs so that you can see what the gifs. Good lord, why do we still use gifs? <laughs> Thanks, thank you, Robin. This is this is directly at you. Please, please do what you have, whatever it is you have to do to make webms a thing on the Nexus. Uh, but I put a lot of effort <laughs> into that stuff. Uh, and you know i enjoy that but at the same time it's still like that's that's the final phase of any mod is sort of the production value or the marketing of it and it's like i hate doing that stuff i can't i can't stand that that's necessary to make it make it look professional i just want to i just want to move on to the next project or, or make something and yeah uh, that's that's sort of that's just how it goes like that's how it's uh that part of it is a necessary step and I was so terrified of Patreon becoming all of that. And I, 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 I think I'm going to be able to get away with it with, with just continuing to put out mods with it and just leaving right. it as an option up there. But yeah, I don't know. I'm never, I'm never going to be like sending out t-shirts to people who, who subscribe to my Patreon. I can't even imagine spending my time doing that. Who would want to, yeah, I don't, wear well, I don't think you need to. So I, I, like I, I have a fairly successful Patreon for our team going and what we do is we give sneak peeks to things. So yeah, that's what we'll I give, ac- do. give access to stuff we're working on. And then I do like a, a month end developer update where I tell them about what we've got, the secret projects we're working on and give them some video footage mm-hmm. of, of people on the team working. And then for t-shirts, we just handle the merch through uh, threadless. So oh, okay. it's all, so it's all hands off. Like, I, yeah, I couldn't imagine if I had to have boxes of how t-shirts many, many in my I, basement, I, I that's just not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how many, how many t-shirts have you sold? But it's like, it's, that's not really, I don't know. There can't, there can't be that many. I can't imagine. Like I said, I don't think anyone would want to wear a t-shirt with my face on it or, you know what I mean? Or my uh, I don't even have a logo. No, I, we, we sell, we sell a reasonable amount of t-shirts, but I think cause we've been trying to brand it with the, the logo, we've got our own logo mm-hmm. and everything. And I think yeah, it's, it's, really it's kind of its own that. little game within there as opposed to uh, like yours is a lot of individual mods. So yeah, yeah. you well, don't yeah, have, that's, you don't that's have like a standardized is... thing emblem that's in each one of them. And you can't, you obviously you can't use anything with fallout cause then you'd get hit by copyright claims, but. Oh gosh. Yeah. That's. Oof. That sounds like another batch of headaches. <laughs> that's hey, that's right. that's another reason I'm a that's that's why I was always been a solo modder. You know, I've never I've done small stuff for other teams, but I've never like joined a team, and because mm-hmm. uh, I just like I I can't stand the idea of like uh yeah, I don't know I I feel like I feel like other people would get in my way. That that sounds terrible, but it's it's not it's not <laughs> so much that it's like I want to do the thing. I know I can do the thing correctly. I'm just going to do the right. thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I find I find it's I I, li- I enjoy both. Uh, I enjoy doing some on my own and some some stuff with the team. There's certain things that I just will never be able to do by myself. Not even just because of skills, but just due to lack of time. Like I'm already putting in every moment of time. So then at some point it's like, all right, well if I want to do more, I have to invite other people to join me in on this. And then if you're talking as far as when when I was mentioning like the the Patreon stuff and the the copyright and all that stuff, I for us the Patreon account, all that money, none of us are living on. It's all just gets rolled back into the yeah, projects yeah. of purchasing assets and web space and everything. So that because I can't even that I would never want to deal with if it was trying to figure out how to distribute finances among a team. No, no, yeah, no yeah, that's that, that's that the sounds... other killer with big teams is drama. I actually I, I got right. a message. I'm not sure how much I should say about this one. I got a message from <laughs> someone on a team and they okay. were asking for permission for assets. And in the, in the message, they mentioned, they mentioned they want to use my assets because a previous member of their team quit the team and was, was, it was not a, it was not a clean break. You know what I mean? Ooh, and it's like, you know, yeah. don't, maybe don't include that in the message you're sending to me. Right. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> we had somebody recently join our forums and like one of, they made this big post and it was fairly funny and there was a bunch of useful information in it. But at the top, it was really aggro and they were oh, compl- yeah. like yelling about people from the last forums they were hanging out on. And I was like, don't oh. do that. And so I just like sent a message. I'm like, I'm editing your first post so that <laughs> you don't instantly get hated by everyone on our forum. <laughs> 
I don't, I don't know if that's yeah, people so. that are new to the internet or just people who have just coasted obliviously through the internet their entire lives. <laughs> I'm never really right. sure. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm an yeah. aged inter- internet veteran. I grew up on the damn thing. So it's one of those. I mean, like, well, there's people in real life who do that too. It's the the TMI. Sometimes there are some things you you hold back a little while until yeah, you yeah. know the people. <laughs> they, they, a lot of uh, people don't have that filter. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Anytime. So why should it be? Why should it be different on the internet than in real life? Yeah. And especially yeah, when you, yeah, you put yeah. together as many millions of people as are on the internet, inevitably you're going to find as ma- uh, all of those people that exist. So yeah, the, yeah. so one of the things I want I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the Archimedes two. Oh sure. So, so that weapon is amazing and I'm glad you put it out because I, we, we have, we redid the, what's it called? The Sea Finder from, uh, New Vegas. Fallout, yeah. And New Vegas, New Vegas. yeah, yeah. We put that into some settlements, which is weird, right? Like have a weapon mod in a, in a settlement mod, mm-hmm. but it was part of this like, uh, industrial revolution thing where you're doing a bunch of research stuff and I've got it buried so deep in the mod and it takes so many steps to actually get it that I bet there's like 10 people who've <laughs> didn't actually even seen it. it. So, Is that what you're saying? What's it? You didn't even oh no, it's it? in our, we put it in the trailer. Like we made a big deal out of it because okay, it was, okay. you know, we, we That's... had like a uh, shoe burglar put together this amazing weapon model for it and it took us forever to get all the effects working and everything. But that was the, that's the, then you put that, you put that out real close after we had released that patch. I, I didn't like, even actually, know you'd Maybe it was it. a few months. Actually, I think I think we released ours in June, and I think you di- you did yours later that year because it was last year you put that out, right? Like yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't. Yeah. I don't do well. It's like settlement mods. It's like I, I feel bad saying saying this to your face. I don't I don't use your settlement mods because I don't play. Oh, the that's game. okay. Uh-huh. You know right, I mean? right. No, I, I get that a lot. You know what? Most of the people on my team don't play the mod. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's but just so nobody I, has time cool to play you're, you're and develop this much stuff. Uh, no, I was just it was I was going to say I'm glad you put that out because that's such a fun mechanic to be able to call, yeah, down, to call down those satellite rays and blow it's, people up. That mod was that mod took a long time to come together, uh, just for a number of reasons. But it was also built in reverse. Like normally, okay, okay. normally my uh, my procedure is you know start up ZBrush, start building a cool gun. Yeah. Get the cool, get the cool gun textured, all that low poly nonsense, whatever mod talk. Get it in sure. game, and then start figuring out the special effects. And in Bethesda games, we don't really have access to the special effects tools that Bethesda right. does. We do everything with NIF scope. And uh, oh, you do all those in NIF scope? I, I do. I that entire effect was made in NIF scope. It was animated in NIF scope. Oh my god! Like you. But that's what I mean. You the are whole a project was for done punishment. In so I did uh-huh. all that NIF scope stuff first, which yeah. means I had I had that that satisfying that amazingly satisfying explosion set up and ready to go before I had any other part of the mod ready. So like wow. I think there might be some videos of, of the thing floating around out there, but it was like this real janky looking gun that just you could you couldn't tell what the hell it was. It was just a, a mess of parts in the hand because I still was experimenting with stuff on it. But it was just right. like I had every time I'd get in game, I'd be like, you put you put the laser. It was the same three vendors that it's the, you know, the, you know, how the Fallout 4 has the wandering vendors. Like I had right. a save game. I've, I've used the same save game for, you know, three years now. And it's just, <laughs> I used the same settlement in the same save game. And there's there's three NPCs that sit on a bridge and uh, they're always there in this save game. And every time I would start up the save, start up the game to test something. I would just blow them to hell, and it's just it's <laughs> the most satisfying thing in the world because that that explosion, the the three lasers sort of uh, converging on each other, and then the build up, yeah. and then the huge boom, and it's like that that whole mod was built in reverse, and I had I played with that every time I started up the game, and it was such a it, that was the the best part about that mod was playing around with that. I don't think I'd ever do a mod in reverse <laughs> like that again, though. Oh man, I can't believe you do all that animation in NIFScope. I'm gonna, we're gonna have to put our heads together uh, oh, tough, after this or some other time. I can show you some of the workflows in 3D Studio. We've reverse engineered a lot of it. Oh, you've actually done so, it in 3D. Oh, that's, uh, would, yeah, it's a lot. It's much easier. <laughs> is it? Well, I don't know. It's pretty. It's once I figured it out, it was it was not that tough. The the the, the amount of moving parts in that that three lasers coming together, there as there really isn't that much movement. It's you know there's a, there's a singular thing moving everything all at once. And then each right. each node of the the three coming together is you know slowly scaling, and it's just it's 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 not as much effort as you might think. I, I it wasn't that bad though. Some of the stuff you can do in NIFScope animation wise 
it is that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to think well, like, it, uh, like, uh, what is it? Like the, the laser effects, like the actual gun when it's, when it's not in, when it's not in call down mode, when it's in regular gun mode, that kind of right. stuff, that stuff can still be pretty tedious, but the actual, the actual yeah. explosion wasn't that bad. It wasn't, it was fun. I enjoyed it, but I'd, I'd love to know if there's more, to, more ways to do it. But then again, I'm why yeah, learn it if I got it working. <laughs> I, well, to save yourself a headache, because uh, a lot of that stuff, you can, like a lot of the effects and everything can just be done with the the modifiers in 3D Studio, so that you can just use you know actual gravity waves and oh, uh, wow. wind and things like that to to handle all of it. So you don't have to just manually be doing that. So it's definitely a lot easier in 3D Studio. I find that with NIF Scope, the first challenge is I usually have to find a NIF that because I've done a lot of editing in NIF Scope, nothing mm -hmm. to the level you're doing. And it's always you got to find something that's pseudo close, and then you're just punching in so many manual numbers that uh, I I get real tired of it real fast. Uh, well, yes, and well, yeah, I guess I don't have to deal with that so much because like the the NIFScope is still a great program. I'm not I'm not gonna put down NIFScope. Oh, it's an amazing program, but it's yeah. not designed for doing hand, a lot of hand editing of. Well, that's what I mean. Though, it's like anything. I don't I don't do that much hand editing. The, those effects were the only thing I've really done a ton of hand editing for. Usually. Usually when I set up a project, I make sure it's exporting from Max in as close of a finished state as possible, you know? So, sure. so I'm not tweaking numbers later. There's a few exceptions to that. Like, like um, what do you call those? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of when I last used it. Like uh, vertex colors and stuff like that still do some weird things in NIF scope, but that's again, oh, yeah, the, I'm getting into weird mod yeah. talk again, or like modern uh, only uh, talk. I think people are used to it from me. I occasionally will go into talking about code and sorry. But yeah, I still do a little yeah. bit of stuff like that. But yeah, for the most part, it's still a. I, I don't I don't mind doing that stuff in this scope. It's 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 honestly like like I said, you know, modding goes in phases. You know, it's, you start out, you know, once I'm in once I'm in the NIF scope phase, I usually am not going back to the texturing phase or anything like that. And so once I'm in the NIF scope phase, I kind of I kind of enjoy it after a while. You know, it's it's a sure. It's like a cool down after right. the hardcore texturing and sitting there waiting for take textures to bake because <laughs> it yeah because it's kind of therapeutic because it's just you just have you know you have to go through x amount of work yeah it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's like to be done yeah. retopology if you've ever done that retopology is the most tedious thing in the world but at the same time it's you know you can you're you explain what that part. is i i don't i don't know what that is offhand oh it's apology okay so when you take a high poly mesh which is something you get in zbrush you know you a person's face you can't put that sure. in fallout you have to right. retopologize it and make it low poly, and okay. then you project the texture onto that low poly. And so retopology is okay. like, well, for you wouldn't do it for a person's face, but for like a gun, you would still do it. Retopology is like, it, like I said, it's therapeutic. It's 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 impossible to not make progress on it as long as you have the program open and you're connecting dots. You're making progress right. on it. It's a it's a great cool down before you get yeah. to the before you get to the hardcore texturing side. So you know you make a high poly. Sure. And then you retopologize, and that retopology is a nice cool down before you get to the textures. Because, like I said, like okay, it's, I feel you on that. Yeah, so for my my equivalent would be nav meshing. I find nav meshing to be that. It's very for a lot of people find it very tedious. I just find it, it's like eh, it's just got to be done. It's easy. Like yeah, you're just yeah, slowly yeah. connecting dots. You're just kind of drawing triangles. It's nice and simple. Yep, that's that's what NIF scope is to me. It's like it's the cool down after the texturing is done and sort of struggling with the rigging it's, a bit it sounds like you must have some better workflows than i do in NIFScope. because to me every time i think of NIFScope, i think of having to manually duplicate nodes and then enter mm -hmm. in all of their all of their uh transformation and rotation data by hand and that drives me insane yeah so. I would, well, see that's the thing is i don't i don't do i know NIFScope has a whole bunch of stuff or i've, I've seen i've seen the the meshes that are used in settlements yeah and i've never really dug into them so i don't know how robust NIF scope is for that so like you know we're it's, it's we're in two very different wings of modding so uh, yeah that's I true don't, I, don't I, I think that. it's i think it's pretty similar the uh because most of the stuff that i have to do in NIF scope is editing the animations for the power grid to make because all of the power grid is actually handled through the animation through the hkx file oh really so so i think it's probably pretty similar the stuff that i'm editing I don't, do you have, is it in NIFSCOPE, are there tools where you're dragging points around with a mouse that I'm not aware of? Because for me, no, it's always no, no. entering actually, numbers. Actually, well, yes, there is. If, if you, 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 can, you can drag UVs around in NIFSCOPE, and I do do that very occasionally because it's not good to have different UVs on your final mesh than it is in Max, but there's a little sure. bit of that. But yeah, okay. I, I see, I get what you mean here. Uh, 
and see if I can't find something and open it up and look <laughs> at it. Because I, I am curious what you're what you're looking at. Anyway, but so yeah. like if you open up, yeah, but if you like open up, say a generator from workshop mode, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's there are there are nodes that are set up to do just the like vibration animation, but then there's also an HKX file set up with a series of animations, and I imagine that's similar to what a weapon has going on in it. Yeah, well, kind of. The an weapon animations are there's like two different levels of yeah no I actually I'd say yes you're probably right there's like two different levels to weapon animations like there's the actual animations that are handled by the plugin, and right. then the actual animations that the gun does like the Gauss rifle is a perfect example the Gauss rifle where has it's got whole, its little little screen that does its thing yeah, yeah it's got a bunch of moving parts on there and all those moving parts all those small individual moving parts are handled by the NIF. And like the right. reload animation, the arms moving around, that's handled by the HKX file. I don't, I don't touch HKX files. I did that on the Archimedes a little bit. I don't sure. ever want to get in that again. I'm not an animator. <laughs> I, I wish I was, but I, I don't so, know. So you, so all of your, because some of yours have really fantastic, like the break action. That's that, just the that double looks, barrel. Is that custom? Oh, that's just the double that's barrel. Just okay, the double yeah. barrel. I just, that's just that's okay. I, yeah, I, I work, I work backwards. From vanilla animation, you're not gonna beat the, the vanilla animation. Well, maybe you are. Some of the uh, a couple, of, a couple of them I've seen some improvements on, but yeah, I think most of them are pretty, pretty damn good. I, I, my, my problem is like I think one of the, the early, some of the early mods, like one of the early shotgun mods that had like a reload, a proper reload animation where they actually load the correct number of shells in it. I remember looking <laughs> right. at that and being like, oh, this looks so janky. I never want to use custom animations ever. And uh, <laughs> I sort of, I sort of based have based all of my opinions on animations on that, which is totally unfair because I'm sure there's some really good animations out there. But yeah, the, the break action laser was like, a, it's just a, I, I lined everything up to the double barrel and the double barrel has very okay. few moving parts. You know, it's got a hinge and then the two shells pop out and that's really all there is to it. So it's, it's not tough to make things match that. But that so one is, also is animation matter. something you're, you're not looking to get into? Cause I, I know the Rizzler just put out an insane, like 15 or 16 hour weapon making tutorial and he covers all the animation and export process in really there. well maybe i'll look at that i don't know i like I, like i said animations is one of those where it's like well it's I, i'm not I'm, I'm i think i think, I think we're dev. i think we're exciting the listeners here the idea that you're doing all this stuff without animation and that there's a potential we could see some nero animation one no, day that's pretty exciting there's, there's no point it'd be another four <laughs> years before i could make something that was halfway decent like i can i mean that's just it like you think of I'm, okay. I'm not a dev. I'm not a video game dev. I do not work in the industry. Right. But if I did work in the industry, I would not be expected to be putting together a ZBrush high poly, right? A low poly, a texture, and then animating it myself. I, no, no one, right. no, no dev house expects that. Not anymore. It's been it's been it's been twenty some years since that's hit. Probably had yeah. to be done. Development like that. teams are too big for for one person to do all of those jobs. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah. I'm never going to touch animations because <laughs> if I do ever get a job in the industry, I'm never going to have to know how to do that, and it sucks. Sure. But at the same time, it kind of I I. I I don't feel too bad because, I, like I said, it would be four years before I was decent at animations. Decent enough at animations. I, I, how long did it take you to get to the quality level you're at right now? Because you said you didn't really do this aside from until you were modding, right? Before, prior to your Fallout 4 stuff, you were both mostly doing kit bashing out of Skyrim. So how long did it take you to get to this quality? Like, How long did it take you to make your first mod that inv involved custom assets? Because a lot of your stuff... Like that, you said the jetpack was mostly just reusing assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think years. was it the maybe the Plasrail was your first? No, maybe the. Plas I, I think, think the, the Plasrail. Yeah, the Plasrail was probably the first one. I did that entirely in Max. I hadn't used ZBrush okay. at that point. That so that's I mean hey there's there's good. I did that not only did I do that only in Max. I did that only in Photoshop using. Ah uh, okay. Okay okay like I did um I I I like I, I mentioned that I did. 3ds max in high school right sure i i didn't didn't go to college for anything to do with it. I, I basically dropped all 3d stuff for for years i do i do i do relatively boring building management stuff now which is very boring i don't enjoy it but it pays the bills <laughs> um, pays the bills right but that's what i went to school for and i, I do all that now and uh the idea is that um I sort of came back to 3ds max later on and when i started getting into skyrim and then eventually fallout 4 i, I came mm -hmm. back to 3ds max so i was familiar with it so i still knew what i was doing when it came to modeling and then uh i sort of as as i was making the, the plaz rail i sort of started thinking you know there's got to be a better way to do this how how the hell how the hell did the pros do this shit? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, that was when I started, you know, actually looking into things. What, what was the, this must have been like three years ago. So it, it doesn't doesn't take that long to get into this stuff. But it's one of those where it's, you know, I, st- I started from, from basically nothing. I didn't, I didn't even know what ZBrush was when I started playing Fallout right. 4. Actually, that's, yeah, no, maybe I did. I knew what Substance Painter was before sure. I knew what ZBrush was. But that's, that's, uh, that's because of, God, what, what's, what's the name of the guy that made the dragons in Skyrim? Uh, he's, uh, the uh, artist that worked at Bethesda. I think he's, he doesn't work there anymore. I, I can't remember his name, but he inspired me. He's the one that I actually was in his Twitch channel because he streams okay. every now and again. I'm hating myself for not remembering his name because he inspired me so much. But uh, yeah, he's It'll he was where I first got it. exposed to like this is what this is how professional developers do this stuff, and it's just yeah. general curiosity from there sort of built up. And like I said, like when I started looking at the ZBrush, it's it scared the hell out of me. Holy crap, going from Max <laughs> to ZBrush, that is a yeah. terrifying proposition. I- I, I, you're making me want to go load it up just so I can see the differences because I didn't even give it a fair shot because I'm like, oh no, this is an artist tool. This isn't for me. I'm no longer. Oh an no, artist. you're yeah, 100% But like right. three, it's, it's, but it sounds like like 3D Max to me makes a lot of sense. Like it's a very, yeah, it's a very. Um, it looks they're kind yeah, of yeah, and also just like it's 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 almost designed for for people like engineers. Like it's it's yeah, almost yeah, it's yeah. barely not a CAD software. I mean, it's it's definitely just, everything's the gap between art and CAD software is what 3ds max max is whereas like maya is probably leanings a little more towards the art side of things i've never used maya, so where, where does where does zbrush fit into ZBrush that ZBrush in is workflow? pure art you would never ever ever wait in my workflow everything starts at zbrush right right but like i guess in so for for example when i want to start a model in 3d max i generally will grab some sort of poly and start extruding sides and dragging mm-hmm. vertexes around vertices around applying edits like that so everything to me is very uh, it's all based on a box, essentially, with a certain amount of sides. How does the workflow start in something like ZBrush? In ZBrush, everything would probably start as just a blob of clay. Like you got to figure that's what that's what ZBrush is. You're just you're, it's clay. It's it's, it's clay. Okay. I mean, you can get it. That, this this is how little I. So I literally I remember opening the software, didn't try to do anything. I was just like wanted to know what it was, uh, and opened it up, and then just was like, "Oh, this is some weird 3D art software. It's probably for texturing." Closed it, never opened it again. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. But from, <laughs> yeah, from coming from Max, it is. It's it's like looking at a. Imagine jumping on like being abducted by aliens and like looking at their their screens for interfacing with something. Like that's that's basically what it is. Like Max has like all these buttons everywhere, and for the most part, you you can kind of learn what all the buttons do. There's right so many buttons hidden between so many menus underneath so many different covers and so many things in zbrush that are just like not intuitive at all and you don't use 90 percent of them you, you, I, I probably sure. use like five percent of zbrush but i you know it's it's one of those so it's more it's, like so instead it's like max is very mathematically driven whereas this is much more artistically driven with your with your brush yeah, strokes yeah. essentially there's no there's no, no okay there's no accuracy. Well, there's accuracy if you want it to be accurate, but it doesn't have to be accurate. Is the whole idea. Like I said, it's it's gotcha. think of just like a big lump of clay. How would you right. how would you work with clay in 3D in a 3D program? So like, how do you get such good like good looking? For example, your cryo lance, like it has those really good hard edges on it. How do you get something like that out of clay? Uh, well, look, that's that's the other thing. That's the other side of ZBrush, and that's just kind of the shitty part about it. Is ZBrush has a specific type of modeling called the Z Modeler which basically lets you use clay tools on like like you do in 3ds max like you were doing your like vertex pushing vertexes around you can basically do that in zbrush too but they do it they call it z modeling and it's that's that's i don't know it's one of those where it's like i i know i know professional devs who won't even touch the z modeler because they don't they're so they're so used to doing things the 3ds max way but yeah Yeah. the the z the the cryo lance was done entirely in zbrush um, but it's, 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 it, it is, it's basically, you know, it's, it's basically like pushing models. Like, okay. If you have a, God, I'm, I'm talking in circles here. I apologize. It's so, <laughs> it's, right. it's so difficult. It's, hard, it's always hard to explain. Yeah. Stuff it's, it is. Especially it's because so it's a visual piece of software. <laughs> but it's, it's, it is, it's like, okay, you take a, you know, a blob of clay is, you know, a million verts, right? Well, right. you're using the same tools to work with a million verts as you are working with like, you know, a hundred verts in a hard surface piece. And that's what, that's what the cryo lance basically started out as. So it looks really intricate, and it is, but it all started out as, you you start out as you know the low poly thing, like you know pushing verts around, few verts. It's very low poly, 
and then you subdivide it a bunch of times and then you can start doing all sorts of crazy stuff with it i think i think i did that i think i did the cryolance before booleans were even a thing like booleans were not a, a big thing in zbrush until like a couple of years ago and so yeah. it's like that's that kind of that's that's kind of a mind mind blower if you think about it because booleans are just like have always been such a huge thing and they weren't so much of a thing in zbrush but, yeah, uh, and boo booleans. I mean, anybody, most people listening probably have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, but my God, is. those are powerful. I've looked at, I've seen videos of people showing like the depth of like they take a gun and then show you what happens when they hide each level of the boolean and how yeah. deep it goes. It's like that's yeah. nuts, but it's so cool. Yeah, but that's 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 the Crylance was done before that was a big thing, but it's still one of those where it's you know it's you you get access to that sort of thing with ZBrush. You yeah. get access to you start out as a low poly, you build the basic shape like you would in 3ds max and then you subdivide it and then you can start doing all the stuff that you would do to clay which means you know you okay. can put little grooves and markings on it that don't actually require uh low poly figuring i, I, I wish i was better at the, the nomenclature <laughs> and stuff. well you well you because then you just bake those into the normals and stuff later yeah on. yeah and then that stuff gets baked into the normals and it's 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 streamlined so and it's all done in one program which is super useful right. that's why that's why zbrush okay. is by far the best pro if, if you ever want to get into any sort of 3d modeling like learn zbrush because it's not going away it's not going away it'll it'll probably stick around for another 20 or 30 years before someone figures out how to beat it or a do or so to me what to me what automatically in my head we go to is with that with that kind of thing is vr that seems to be ideal where especially if we had like and so i know that the controllers now wouldn't work for it we would need like haptic gloves or something mm -hmm. but just the idea of like getting in there and actually doing it with your hands at 3d space have you have you messed around with vr no never i would imagine my arms would get tired you you spend so many hours <laughs> in zbrush just working i mean i do i do i do most of my stuff any any hard surface stuff i still do with a mouse right okay and even even then my my arm gets tired i can't imagine lifting my arms up and moving stuff around with a with a haptic glove or whatever <laughs> oh man i that's that's just so cool exciting though. to me because the the, Very Tom the view yeah. inside of the vr is mind-blowing um like that just i can imagine the how cool it would be because there's a uh, program google put out and i'm sure a bunch of people have these same sorts of things where you can paint in 3d space Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's un unbelievable. I've never experienced anything quite like that. And so I could see the way you're describing ZBrush. I'm like, it seems natural to me. The next evolution for art is probably going to be in VR. Like as a developer tool, it. it seems more useful than as a gaming tool. Just because the there's so many problems with the locomotion where people get sick and stuff. <laughs> but I, I don't know if they're going to be able to solve that enough to make VR long-term viable i mean maybe i'm totally off base there maybe they've got tricks coming but from my experience in vr and trying and showing it to people they're always super impressed but then it kind of falls flat because they're feeling nauseous or mm -hmm. you know we don't have enough space in the average living room but as a developer tool like the idea of that clay thing if that's how people are working for 3d models anyway man that seems natural now i'm, it now I'm super me i'm like definitely like version. there's no way i'm not downloading zbrush now in the next couple of days <laughs> yeah absolutely it's it's definitely it's one of the other the way I would say is ZBrush is I, this this whole thing sounds like a commercial for ZBrush, but it really is like it's, it's, really, it's, it's a great it's program. Brought to it's you like, by ZBrush. Uh, no, absolutely. Hey guys, put me on your your staff. I'll I'll take a job at ZBrush. <laughs> I would love it. Um, but no, no, ZBrush is like it really is just like the, the the best tool you can possibly learn. Even even if you never put any of the stuff you make in a video game, it's just. So what I want to do, what I want to do with ZBrush is I want to give ZBrush to like an eight year old kid. You know what okay. I mean? Someone that's never experienced any of that stuff. Maybe, maybe make it a little more intuitive for a little kid, but getting a kid thinking in the way ZBrush wants you to think sure. and then just having them grow up with that. Like you're, you're looking at like there, there are no Michelangelo's anymore. Right. Think about it. Sure. When was the last time someone made a sculpture like, like the Michelangelo? Or is, wait, am I thinking of that wrong? Leonardo da Vinci made the Michelangelo. Yeah. There's no, there's no, no da Vinci's anymore. Yeah, yeah. You no, I don't kids... think, but like just ma masterpiece artists. Well, I, part of the thing with that is we're we're got we've gotten to the point where we can create everything in photorealism. Like if you're not, there's so many people who can do that now. It's not special. Yeah, well, who can just create I, photorealistic? And it's like, how do you go you, beyond have, photorealistic? Have you have you seen the Michelangelo? Like like, have you seen, <laughs> I, one, of, have I, you seen one of those statues for real? Yes, like, they're. Yeah, they're Mind very, blown. very impressive. <laughs> like, it, well, yeah, I it, guess we don't do any. Well, nobody works with stone, so that's what well, that's what that's, I mean. Though it's like just just that level of of detail. We'll never have that. I, I think that kind of person will come back at some point, and I think it'll. But happen you think they're going to be a three D modeler? I think well, that or they'll they'll take it. They'll start out in three D modeling and 
and want to take it to stonework or something like that. You ah, don't want okay. to take it to actual sculpture. But like those people don't exist anymore because 3D printers exist now. And well, <laughs> I guess 3D printers might get to that point eventually too. But you still have to be able to draw that detail. And that's like, I don't know. I think I'd, I would love to see a kid who has grown up on ZBrush. I would love to see what they're capable of. Because I think, I think I'm pretty good at it. But yeah. I know I can yeah, I think, I think many people would. I think many people would agree you were very good at it. Uh, I I have th I've thought about that with programming too. Of like I want to I want to see how early I can teach my kid to program. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be so just awesome. to see because like, like it took C. me, yeah, it took me forever to like get, before my head just like it clicked, but it took years before it all like and now it's it's like it's no problem. Right? It's like breathing to me. But uh, the for for years and years it would just struggle. I'd look at other people's code and I'm like, why did they do that? I don't understand it. And now it's like, oh, one day, oh, there it goes. So yeah, if you could do that, if you could get through that period. You know, as a you know, by the time you were in high school, if you had gone through that ten years to mastery already, my God, mm -hmm. what, what things yeah. you could do. What is it like ten thousand hours or something to master? Ten thousand, ten thousand hours to master. Yeah, to I don't truly know master years, something. But, but if you start a kid on that real early, like, oh, it's probably I, a lot I, shorter. Yeah, it's probably a lot shorter. I, well, it's not so much that it's a lot shorter. It's that if it's a it's a kid doing it. I mean, think about think about like how many hours a day parents park their kids in front of like minecraft or whatever right <laughs> right <laughs> imagine if or, they were parking them in front of like a creative program like zebra well i mean we'll just think about how many years you probably w w either of us probably wasted in front of a nintendo oh yeah like, yeah the, if i could go back the amount I, of I hours i have sunk into the final <laughs> fantasy series like jesus <laughs> no all those all those wow hours holy shit Right, right. Well, oh, that's what, got, that's what got that's what got me to quit when I did slash played one day, and I was like, nope, oh, "No, we're done." No, that's that's not a command I ever put in. I, I, I don't <laughs> want to know. Well, now Steam does it to you on all of your games. You get to see. I'm sure if you uh, if you poke your head into Steam, I mean, if you're using the FRSE or SCSI launcher, then you probably don't see it. But oh god, I've already looking put at hours into looking Sekiro. at the Fallout that's, Four page no, on Steam true. is pretty scary. <laughs> Let's see what my Fallout time is. But yeah, if I, if one no, of the things. I, I, I always I, I always say that most of that time is I left the game tabbed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it makes no, you this feel is, better that way. Yeah, I definitely have, my my Fallout hours are not nearly accurate. But yeah, I was just gonna say I've been playing Sekiro for the last few days since it released. I already have forty hours in it. That doesn't seem right. I think I left it on it a few nights, so <laughs> I didn't put that much time into it. But yeah, right. I think that's the problem with Steam time. So I don't feel too I don't feel too guilty about Steam time being huge. Yeah, the 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 slash played command, man. That it was it was a good uh, wake up call though. Once you <laughs> once you see some of those hours, it's like, all right, well that's that's like a degree, um, a college degree there, could have gotten at times. So, uh, but yeah, the uh the I'm I'm glad to be done with the the MMO addictions. I like having these creative hobbies where at the end of the day, not only do I have something that i can be proud of in the sense like okay i actually have something i produced at the end of this but i can mm -hmm. also then share it with other people oh it's so satisfying it. it's so much more satisfying it's, yeah absolutely spending that and much then, time and, then, and just having something tangible well it's, it's digital but it's still tangible right right you can still go in and nuke those three traders from space <laughs> yes <laughs> i can still do that anytime i want although i, I usually <laughs> turn off i usually play in like a clean environment so that mod's not always turned on but oh yeah yeah say, yeah same that's idea. one of the I, I I don't think a lot of people recognize how few mods most mod authors actually ever see. Yes, because we we, we have to keep our load nuts. order clean. Otherwise, we have no idea. Because like if you think about it, players, whenever you all have mods breaking on you, you have no idea what mod it is. We can't have that happen when we're when we're trying to develop. Oh, yeah. We got to make sure we know the problem is ours to fix. The bug report like five months after a mod's been released. Of, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I have a, a two hundred forty nine mods enabled. And uh, your mod crashes my game. Really? <laughs> right. Really? It's been five months since this mod released, and it, this one's causing your problems. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, but... it, I, I can't even, like, okay. I can't understand how people have that many mods installed or have that many mods running. Yeah, like, it's, it's pretty it's nuts. I'm I'm slowly me. so I'm in the process of doing a let's play of Fallout 4 where I let the audience tell me what mods to install. Mm -hmm. And I started out with like 40 I wanted to play with and we're after 8 weeks we're at 150 already. It goes, it goes <laughs> You're going to have to start there making are... ESL soon. Right, right. Well, fortunately I've had a couple people volunteer. They're like, "Hey, if you need merge patches or anything, I'll handle them for you." I was like, "Oh, thank God." Cuz I don't <laughs> want to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, that's it's it doesn't take long to get up to those high numbers when you just let when you just start taking all the suggestions people throw out there. So when you've got people like Gopher and MXR and uh, uh, Juicehead and stuff putting out videos telling you about 
you know, five, six new mods a week and you just grab them all. It's yeah, pretty easy yeah, to hit, hit those 200 numbers. Me. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's heresy to me because I can't even imagine like I, I, I'm playing Skyrim and I know what every single mod does. Like sure. I've opened every single mod in X edit and I've looked at every record that it touches and I clean them all up myself. And I, I look at mods that I clean up mods myself. I, I trim mods that maybe you shouldn't be editing that record. You know what? You're just not going to, you're not going to touch that record. And I just clean them <laughs> out myself and I edit all my mods I have. So for every mod I have, I usually have a patch for myself. Sure. And like, even, even with all that, I'm still only at like 70 mods. And it's like, well, I would think I, that that's probably self-inhibiting there. Where you just know whenever you're going to install mods, like, all right, do, am I willing to put in the hours to comb through 3,000 records? Mm. Yeah, like, yeah. Probably makes you snip some that you might have tried otherwise. Yeah, that's that is that's definitely true. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. I don't I don't use. Uh, I, I most most of my modding comes through Requiem, which uh, yeah, shout out to Requiem. That's I literally don't play regular Skyrim anymore. I haven't played regular Skyrim since it released. I play oh, really? only the Requiem overhaul, and it's a uh, it's a great it's a great time. I enjoy it a lot, but uh, I, yeah, that's 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 I, I where most of the modding comes from. I, I think I'm gonna next start into Skyrim again. When so, did you see that post that Dark made about they're they're gonna tackle mod packs this year? Finally, yeah, I, I did read about that. They're actually gonna have like what did they call it curated? I don't know if they used the word curated, but I, that's what I assume that it was. I mean, right. I, I, all I'm hope, what I'm hoping for is it's as simple as I, like, I would be able to upload a mod list with the all of the patches and the actual plugin order, and then someone else would be able to download that, and it would work exactly like it does for me. That's what I think they want to get to, and I think that mm. is wonderful. I know that there's there are a lot of mod authors who are against that because it does the that. the problem with the problem with the mod packs, and I see their argument. I and I don't. I see both sides, but I'm still I'm a customer service focused person, so I always lean toward the customer side of things. And in this case, mod the players are the customers. Even if we're not getting paid, that's still the the role they play yeah, in this that's transaction. How I treat them. Their 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 users are everything. Right. And so that so that service is them. But the problem is is if, if you download a mod pack, then the credit that the players are going to give is gonna to go to the person who curated the mod pack, not each of the individual artists and encoders who ah, put all their effort I don't in. Give a shit so about that's that. their <laughs> right i think that there there's a there's some people who feel on both sides of it but there's a lot of people who are just like i want to get credit and i want someone to go to my page read the explanation that i put together and my argument is always that against that is that that will limit our audience to a very minute number of people because there are only it takes a certain personality to be willing to go through that much trouble to play a game the vast majority of players are exactly the type of people that you described at the beginning of needing that chem lab entry to mm -hmm. make the weapon. They want that stuff simple and they want it now because that's how games are designed now. Everything is designed to be very easy and accessible and not everybody has, you know, the time to go through all of their records and X edit and make sure that their mods are clean. Like most people just want to hit install and that's it. And so the mod packs will let that happen on a bigger scale, I think. I think it's going to just yeah, open I, up. I think it's a good idea too. I don't It'll know. It'll just open up mod playing to a ton, of, ton more people probably. Yeah, I think um, God, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna make enemies talking shit. Right. But I, you know, I don't, I don't care if I make enemies to some of the people on the Nexus forums because there, some of the mod authors are are very, some mod authors are very, very protective of their stuff. And I just want to, I, I can't understand giving a shit that much. You know what I mean? It's like, who cares if if Joe Schmo, like wants to uh wants to make something creative out of derivative of your stuff is it really that big of a deal that you hunt that person down and make sure they give they write your name all over everything and it's like <laughs> who gives a shit just be glad the guy is being creative i would i would encourage anybody i mean i i, I guess i'm part of the problem I, I do require permissions on most of my stuff like you can't right you can't uh, just take my stuff and re-release it as your own i but yeah. i've i've never said no I've never sure. never done it. All you got to do is message me, and that I have a little thing in my inbox that says the mod you want to use, the assets, that kind of stuff. I've right. never said no to that stuff. So it's it's just you know as long as you're willing to do that, I don't care. So right. with mod packs, I don't I can't understand why anyone would have a problem with that. Uh, but I know a lot of people probably do. I know a lot of people get are really weird. Right. About what I, what I what I anticipate happening is they'll do some sort of opt in system. And I think most of us will just opt. Well, it'll probably be default opt in, and then you'd have to explicitly opt out. And then, 
uh, that that's probably how they'll solve that. But who knows? I think they, yeah. he said in the, his uh, article that he was going to put it out and engage with mod authors and find out what they want to see. I personally, I, I love the idea of mod packs. So one of the things that where and why I understand why some people can be have a problem with it, like I don't automatically say yes to everybody who comes to me and asks for stuff because I'm concerned about compatibility. So if mm. somebody releases like an altered version of Sim Settlements, then it's going to introduce a bunch of support problems for me. Oh, God, so that's a, that's a headache. we no, have, cause we offer you. like full support for the mod. So we've got, you know, a whole forum. We've got tons of people committed to just like answering questions. And so having mods out there that I know will break the core experience for players. I'm just, I can't I have to say no to those people. I have to shut those yeah, down. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't envy you. That sounds like a, that sounds like a chore. <laughs> I don't, but that's, that's great that you do it though. But yeah, I can understand that. I totally understand not wanting to uh, grant everyone perfect permission or free, free reign. But right, yeah, and if, but if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the the systemization of it, I probably wouldn't have a problem. Like if somebody wants to borrow, like bum an art asset off me, great, go for it. Um, or for example, I've already said that if any if the Fallout Four New Vegas team wants to use the model we came up with for the Sea Finder, I would happily give that out. Same with the we did the uh, what's it called the Solar Tower thing. It, although mm-hmm. our version's not probably good enough to be for that because it needed to fit on a little five twelve by five twelve space, whereas. <laughs> The one in New Vegas is pretty it's monstrous. Enormous, so. Yeah, it's yeah, they're gonna need a much building. higher poly model than we built. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like that type of stuff, I no problem giving that out for people to make use of. But yeah, I don't. I I think it's just a matter of people have gotten used to like you. We get so we get so little as mod authors. There's mm-hmm. no you know there's no real financial incentive to do this, and so I think that they get protective in the sense that it's like the only like this is my creation, and the only control I have over it is what's on this mod page, and you and you seeing that, and so like then you'd be taking that away from me. So I think that's their their argument, and I think everybody's entitled to it. So I think that's where the 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 solution there is probably just opt in. But I'm happy to hear that you're you're cool with it because I think oh, yeah. I, I am as well. I think it's I think it's a great I think it's a great idea. I think it worked well for for uh uh, for minecraft they've had that for forever and it's it seems like the only way you're going to take people who are tepidly trying mods so i get a lot of first time users of mods Mm -hmm. who never used a mod at all and they first try sim settlements because you know they you know it's obviously the association with sim city and it's there have been a lot of people who have streamed it it's one of the most endorsed mods on the nexus of course they're going to see it so yeah, the, so they're the gonna. Spicy. So a lot of them have tried it for the first time, and then that's kind of a gateway drug. Once you try one mod, then it's <laughs> like, oh, what else can I do? So I've experienced a lot of the first timers, and they they have so many questions about load order and stuff to the point that we now have like a whole educational series about modding on our forums to help people get started. And it's so much information you have to absorb yeah, to yeah. to start playing around with mods seriously that it's like that that is too much for most people. So, I don't doubt it. Like the uh, what is it? What's it called for Skyrim? The Step Project or something like that? Is that still a thing? Uh, I don't know. I, sure. I remember looking at that. That's like the, one of the, the the big mod tutorials for Skyrim. And I remember looking at that and being like, I don't even understand what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> how, is this, how is this supposed to be useful for other people? But that's great if you're doing you know proper mod intro, proper proper intros to modding. It's well, it's fun to see. It's fun to encourage people to do it because it's all, especially for people who can't afford to be buying new games all the time. Like modding is an amazing way to just get unlimited value out of a game so yeah, like those yeah. people it's fantastic to help with but just the just take being able to play in that sandbox feel and play in that universe that bethesda's created that we all love and be able to just keep coming up with new ways to play it and even design you almost get to be a game designer when you mod which is like not even as a are, not even right? talking about modding like on our side like obviously yeah we get to be a game developer but as a player just installing, you know, 250 mods, you change the game so dramatically yep. and you get to choose all the different ways you do it. You almost get to design your own game. It's really cool. And I want I want yeah, people yeah, to experience it's, that. It's, it's definitely it's I I wish more people uh were into it. It's it, it blows me away like um I don't I think this is related. The uh Xbox mods, right? It yeah. blows me away how many downloads those get. Like Let's let me let me double check real fast. I'm at 16k I, I, we, on my latest mod on Nexus. I, I think we're about split on. Well, I'm probably not anymore. I think I think PC is be, I think PC in general has just become way more popular in the last couple of years since uh, hold really on. since I'm Fortnite. It seems like there's like wrong. a bloat in a number of people yeah. who are, who have uh, switched over to PC. Is like you see all these Twitch streamers with these amazing graphics, and you're on console thinking like, why am I? What what is wrong with me? Why am I playing on this crappy system? But okay, uh, so here I released uh, I released the Xbox Chosen of Adam mod a week later okay. sure. on Nexus uh, a week later on Xbox from the Nexus and okay. it's at 
nearly it's at 11k downloads uh, nexus is 16k downloads and xbox is 11k yeah that's mind-blowing to me like that yeah there's that a lot xbox, of xbox players a lot that is mind-blowing to me that there's nearly it's not it's not quite half but it's a yeah. little less than half of all the downloads for this mod came from the xbox like that's i would not have ever thought that modding was as big as it is on xbox and i oh, didn't yeah, realize this till a few awesome. months ago it's pretty are you crazy planning player. on are you planning on releasing all your stuff eventually there if you can uh okay. i will going forward i probably will but there's some old you, stuff you i probably won't ever put on there would I'm you going, going if, always... if anybody listening to this wanted to see your stuff on there would you be willing to let somebody else port it no i would i wouldn't okay. let somebody else port my stuff because i wouldn't trust them to get it right <laughs> okay <Fair. laughs> joe schmo that messages me on the nexus yeah. Uh, I don't know anything how, about How you. about a a published mod author that has a dozen mods under their belt? Just, just this is just spitballing. You can totally say no. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. I'm just curious. I, I would have because like your stuff, to... your your when I when I say your stuff is the best, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like you would, do well, really to, amazing to work. Exactly. Respond to your question. I would okay. have to look at their history of mods, and I'd have to open their mods and X at it, and I'd have gotcha. to look at them and it'd say. Okay, you know what you're doing. You can do this. <laughs> like that's okay. that's how that's how much of a stickler about it I would be. But uh, right. I, it's it's a version it's version control, right? Right, like, right. I don't want to. You, I don't you care? Deal. Well, you care about your stuff, and you don't want to see it just getting thrown around randomly. Yeah. So. Well, I know it does get thrown around, especially if like it's the, got your name on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, I think. Well, the only one that's not up there, I think, is the break action laser, and I keep telling myself I'm going to go back and do that one. But I'd have to, I'm pretty sure I'd have to rebake those textures, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, the, that's that's the, it's uh, like starting the up CK the CK can convert the CK can convert the textures when you package them. Well, it's not that it's the te- it's the file size. The file size is the problem because the on the the break action lasers file size would be way too big. Like you can't you can't. Oh put 4K right right textures. right right yeah four take oh yeah I forgot you, you put out four Ks yeah that would be too much. <laughs> a, yeah. They they have what two gigabytes of two gigabytes yeah. it's that's well any, anybody listening more. to me has only one gig left because sim settlements really? is over a gig on there now it's ridiculous really? well the, wow that's the file compression is so much assets. worse on xbox yeah yeah it's just one of those i can't believe they still do that I, it's who, who cares who's limiting that i wonder we, you know we can't figure that out because it's we thought the the people i've talked about this we all assumed it was a microsoft limitation because if mm-hmm. you go on any new game you load up your xbox on it has the storage space like the extra storage space for additional files for whatever is yeah, always see, capped whatever. at some amount it'll say like x out of x gigs so we're like okay maybe that's just microsoft allows them to have so many but then skyrim got a bump up to five gigs recently well not really? recently it's probably been over a year now so yeah i don't know where that comes from maybe it's each company gets a total to distribute that but that seems really you know completely yeah, it's, arbitrary it's so and not arbitrary useful. but it so sucks who knows uh, yeah i know i know from. you can you can put your own hard drive in an xbox can't you like a, yeah like, yeah you can absolutely. have an external hard drive you can have an external an i have an ex- i have an external one on mine but i can't use it for anything except i can install games on there but i can't expand my own mod space oh, which is so crazy i don't yeah. i feel i feel bad for uh for Xbox users, but at the same time, you know, you know, bless them for, for doing it at all. It's right. Gotta be right. Easier, it's gotta be a better experience than the PC is. Otherwise so many people wouldn't do it. Yeah. I, well, I think that's, I, I give so many props to Bethesda for putting that mod screen into the game. God, that has probably opened up mods to so many more people and let so yeah, many more yeah. people try out our stuff, which is really cool. It's Even just, on PC, just there are a lot of players who pop the same into it. Cheat mods at the top of the list every freaking day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I wish they would. I wish there was when when the Bethesda.net became a thing. I was so hopeful. Bethesda.net, Bethnet, and Creation Club. I thought they were going to be kind of one and the same thing. They're not. They're two different mm-hmm. things. But I thought right. they were going to be sort of the same thing, and it was going to be curated. Right. It's going to be. They're going to. They're going to hire somebody at Bethesda, and he that person is just going to. Well, they do, mods. they do they have to create their this. features yeah but they only do it like once a month they only so. do it once a month and it's i mean if, if but that's what i thought it was going to be i thought it's going to be yeah somebody somebody's sort of work at bethesda sort of works with modders and sort of curates really good mods and puts them on there and i guess maybe the really really good mods become creation club content i don't i don't know how the creation club content works i i never that, that would be really cool if they did that I, like that, a weekly that's... hot files thing but it was curated oh that would be yeah. awesome that's that's what i wanted i wanted okay this sounds terrible i kind of wanted them to replace youtubers does that make sense 
I'm sorry, like, you, you I, cut out there. What did you say? I kind of want them to replace like YouTubers. You know how YouTubers sort of. Oh right, right. Like you, got, you I mean, said you go for etc. Like, yeah. If we, if we think about it as downloads and sales, I mean, it's it's. I don't mean to to get into the monetary side of things, but it's like YouTubers are so important to that. Like you will you will notice a bump in downloads if a YouTuber does a video on your mod. And I was yeah, kind of hoping Bethesda would sort of take over there, or at least or at least get into that fight. You know what I mean? Like they would they would right. be out there curating mods saying like hey check out this mod that that so and so made and you know it just it just it, it sort of grows the community and rewards quality mod authors so quality mods for being made that's i don't know that's right what i was that's what i thought it was going to be it's not exactly that they do do the mod features which is cool yeah but, i mean every mod they've ever featured of mine has been you know months long since release so <laughs> but uh you know bless them for for trying I, uh, right. I don't know. I mean, it probably I don't, I don't hate those that, features but... probably expose the mod to a lot more casual audience than we're getting from yeah, yeah. even Again, YouTubers. Like, said, like, like we, there's we probably get... the people who go to the Bethesda launcher uh, or go into the game and see the the featured screen and the mod screen. That's going to be a much bigger audience than the people who even follow all these YouTubers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to where they take that in future. What's the next game they're doing? What's the, the Starfield? Space one? Starfield, yeah, Starfield. It. Yeah, it'll be I'm, I'm yeah, it'll be interesting if they, they do, do that. that right, or if they do that differently. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just praying to God they don't fall out seventy six it again. <laughs> Please, uh, we don't want multiplayer. We don't want multiplayer. See, yeah, I think that's the thing. I think everyone was on the fence when, like, when I know when seventy six came and they said multiplayer. I, I, the way the way they said it, I hated it, but it was like mm -hmm. every character will be a player. Like, oh no! But if it had been. Like you can team up with three of your buddies and play through Fallout Four. I'd be like, yes, that's oh, amazing, yes. awesome. <laughs> that's that's what we wanted. Right. Like, if they did that, that'd be great. I they have to know that after Skyrim together brought in twenty eight thousand dollars a month oh, yeah. for a brief period there. Like that oh, had to be like, oh, oh, there's a desire for this and people would be willing to pay for it. Holy crap! Yeah. Like, well, you were saying earlier, you you think their development cycle is really slow, so there's a chance we still could see some Fallout seventy six in Starfield, which is a little worrying to me. Yeah, but, well, they have been, again, if you watch the interview, and I'm, I'm a sucker for, if I see Todd Howard's name on an interview, I go immediately <laughs> watch it, and uh, gotta, he is love on record. <laughs> He's on record saying that it's going to be I a I love you, Todd. Game. Please don't so, hate me. <laughs> so it's uh, it's supposed to be a single-player game. I it's It'll be interesting to see what stuff is popular in the Bethesda community that makes it into their next title. So, for example, do they, since during Fallout 4 development, they weren't sure about settlements, do, was it early enough in the cycle for them to, after it released, for them to figure out that people love settlements, that they should put that in basically every game? So that we will then see, like, Star Colonies, where you get to build your own little, you know, your own yeah, little planet yeah. or whatever. It'll be interesting I, to see. I I, it, obviously, be, I want that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I think we all want that. Like, like uh, the settlement system is just, it's like such a home run that nobody saw coming. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. You said they even they didn't see it coming, but yeah, I I don't know. It's I, one of those where, I think I think the problem with Fallout seventy six was just that they weren't they weren't experienced enough with multiplayer stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's but they and they've acknowledged as much. They wanted to try it out, try something new. Uh, I had this conversation with uh, Chris Takahashi the other day about the fact that as a as a game player and as a modder, it's nice to change palettes once in a while and do something completely different just to keep the keep the creative juices fresh. And you got to figure that these development houses have that same issue. Like you don't want to be stuck making the exact same game over and over well, again. But, it would but Fallout 76 you creatively. was made by the core team, was it? The core team. Uh, we don't know. On. I mean, they uh, say they they haven't really acknowledged it. Like they have they bought out all these studios in the last few years. So I who thought, knows yeah. who worked on what? But I could definitely see it being like the the they want like if that core team has been making you know the same two games for the last fifteen years between Elder Scrolls and and Fallout with just you know some improvements each round that they might have just wanted to try something totally different like hey let's see what well, happens. That's, when that's we make what I think it game. was though. I think it was just the opposite. I think the same two teams, the same team has been working on. I think I think they they ended Fallout Four development and probably immediately went to. This is me guessing. I'm not. I don't know. Right, right. We have, they, we have they, no idea. They, we have no insider information here. Yeah, this is just shooting the shit. Uh, I think they <laughs> went from Fallout Four directly into Starfield, and I thought I I always got the impression that Fallout seventy six was outsourced. Well, not, so, not you know Bethesda owns a bunch of stu smaller studios that they picked right. up with ID, and uh, I think 
I think I think that the Fallout seventy six is was made by one of those studios, and I mean they that probably knew what they were doing with multiplayer, but they were right. saddled down with the creation engine, which <laughs> right. Was, which I mean, again, I'm, not, first I'm, I'm player, hating yeah. on the engine, but I use it every day, and so it's right. you know, I can't complain about it. But it's just one yeah. of those where it's it's not it was never meant for multiplayer. It wasn't meant to be. Some things just aren't meant to be. And I think the right. creation engine and multiplayer were not. One well, of yeah, those the things. whole the whole thing. One of the in the uh, I believe it was in the no clip documentary on Fallout seventy six. They they basically they internally Bethesda refers to the player as Atlas because the whole world rests on their shoulders and the only yeah. that's referring to the fact that the only cells loaded are those right around the player and that's how they can do this amazing stuff is for most of the time most of the records are dormant and out of memory and like that you can't have that in a multiplayer game and st- like the whole world needs to be pretty much persistent so that was one of the things i wanted to look at with fallout 76 modding is yeah. i have a what do you call it the recall device the um the 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 tracer link backwards or the the weaver time lapse whatever you call that yeah, thing. it's yeah. a thing you, you press a button and it warps you backwards in time right the script for that is really really strange i don't think i okay. i don't think i released the source for that but i'm i when they announced fallout 76 my first thought was i want to see if i can't get that to work in a multiplayer environment so the, in that regard, I'm still looking. I still have hope for Fallout 76. I've now, does, your, up does that thing actually? Does it just rewind the player's movement, or does it actually rewind time? It, re- it rewinds the player's movement. It's it's okay. it's just a. It's just because if you figured player. out a way to rewind oh, all time in the game oh, engine, no, you're I'm, a I'm damn not wizard. That powerful. <laughs> if I was that powerful, I was. I would not be a. Uh, I would not be just a, a, a very poor scripter. That, I forget what that was, but that yeah, it's. It's just a uh, it. it it just records it's it, the way it works is pretty simple it's like every few seconds it makes a ping right and it stores the he- player's health their xyz position and then the health of all their limbs i think and sure. then just when you press Plays the button the it just goes back to the furthest state and that's all it is and it's there's right. a little bit of doing there but the, the way it moves you around is based on the player's position and it uses sure. a bunch of global variables which i'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing like i'm not a good script <laughs> depends on who you, depends I'm, on who you ask <laughs> it's it's a, it's a curiosity for me it's not a job um i never i never i think i took some java but that's about it and i never i've long since forgotten all that stuff i'm not a coder in any way shape or form sure um, but that's that's i always i always want to look at fallout 76 scripting because i want to i want to know if i can make that work in fallout 76 sure. yeah that'll so be still really interesting hope. to see I would, yeah, I, I think still... a lot, I think the, I think the first few months after modding comes out for seventy six, I think a whole bunch of us are gonna like disappear for a while out of curiosity, yeah, trying to figure uh, it out. Right, and then depending Imagine on, the and cool then if it ends up being fun, that. some of us will stay there. Otherwise, I think most people will come back because I, I can't imagine it being anywhere close to the same uh, the same feeling. I don't know how you would ever get to that in a multiplayer game. Like, there's something about, like you said early in our conversation about the the going in and doing that single player thing and becoming you know the little god of that world is a totally different experience than making those social memories with your buddies yeah playing yeah. a game it's a totally different thing and i don't know that they'll ever fulfill the same the same role i don't yeah i don't think fallout 76 will ever fulfill either of those roles i don't think it'll ever be a good social experience because it's too janky and i don't think it'll <laughs> ever be a good story experience because there's not enough story <laughs> but that could change i don't know i'm not, yeah. not trying to hate on it like i said i'm still optimistic about it yeah, and there's there are there are a fair number of players who love that game, but it, to me it looks more like a it's like a sandbox toy, and I, personally I need to have that story too. Even though I've played this like I've played the story of Skyrim a thousand times, I still want it there. I still <laughs> oh, want to yeah, know yeah. that there's well, a actually, civil war going on, and when I walk into the Jarl's holds, there's gonna be stupid mindless conversation going. I still want all that to happen. Every I time. turn all that shit off myself. Really? So I've, I've I've I could count on one hand how many times I've killed Alduin. <laughs> oh yeah i don't ever go do the main story but oh, yeah. i just like it there i like the fact yeah that it i like to know it's there. The, oh yeah here's one another one i don't when i play skyrim i don't even use shouts like i've i've i'm never the dragonborn you know like oh uh, okay i don't even i don't the, the, the well, Dragonborn I do, I do love that they the built world. the game. They built the game so that you can skip it. Like if you just never, it's well, no, up to you. If you, want to do that. <laughs> you, you need a you need an alternate start to do that. <laughs> to if get you the, don't have all, if you don't have yeah, alternate you, start, you're basically railroaded into being the Dragonborn, no matter what you do. Well, if you, I mean, you can't when, even get when, into White Run. Right. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. No, because when you you come out of that after you get done at Helgen. You then mm-hmm. are following what's his name, and then you have the option to go to River Run, which takes you into the first dungeon, and that first dungeon is where you become the Dragonborn. 
So like if you, you technically are, and I think people refer to you it as anyway, but I don't think you have to get shouts to play the game. You probably end up getting them if you want to explore you need, you everywhere. Need a few shouts. Yeah. You need shouts and to explore a few things, which is right. Right. But I don't think you're like do. forced to do the main quest ever. Unless I mean, I obviously, guess you're right. It's you know, it's one of those. It's been so long since I played vanilla Skyrim. I'm trying to, <laughs> you don't even remember what it's like anymore. I, I don't even remember. Yeah. Like, it's alternate yeah. start is is Skyrim to me. Like, yeah, I the, I remember starting up. Remember starting up a uh, special edition, which I don't play special edition. I start I I, I what was it? Yeah, I I I use special edition to test the Crucible because I, okay. I did a mod for it. But uh, I remember starting up special edition for the first time, and just being like, whoa the cart ride i've i i haven't experienced this in so long even though i've played this game so much and the cart ride was so so strange to me even though it's like it's always been there it's just modding has has made me skip it for so long (laughs) i experience it more now in memes than anything else of all the you know it's almost like getting rickrolled it's you get skyrim opening Oh yeah, yeah, because it's, it's so buggy, isn't it? Like as soon as you add any amount of mods, it starts freaking. Well, out, no, just the then... sense that like people will post a, it'll be some video trailer, and you think it's going to be something, and then your character gets knocked out, and you wake up, and you're in the cart, and it goes skyrim. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I think it's not, I think I'm it's a play on the fact the that it's a play on the fact that everything has Skyrim now. So it's like okay, well, I've got it on every system. So then the next oh, thing yeah, is yeah, to yeah, put it within you. other games. So you're you're uh, you wake up in a, uh, in yeah, a game, know, you die in, you wake up, and you're the character on the cart. That'll yeah, the, uh, that's that's right. It's on like Switch now or whatever, right? And that the whole right. Did they ever get mods on Switch? I don't yeah, think the so, people right? have, yeah people figured out how to get mods on Switch. Oh, okay. oh, no, they're no, not supported not that, like but... officially. You have to okay, like hack your, asking, you have to yeah. do some funky stuff to your Switch. But apparently, it's possible because yeah, remember yeah, when, heard... when they somebody posted that up on Nexus, and I guess the sub pages on Nexus that are even for for systems can be created by users. So like any like they've got it so dynamic that somebody some random person in the community uploaded a mod they just re-uploaded their existing mod and said for switch and then there was a link in it on how to get mods working on your switch and so now there's a switch category on nexus for <laughs> that's, skyrim that's fantastic <laughs> uh and i think since then a lot of a lot of people have uh, done the same and put them up there and i it almost seemed i'm sure the first person who did it was just like i wonder if i can do this and now it's it's like oh, i guess if i'm gonna play it on switch why not have a few mods because yeah, the, yeah, the idea of story. playing on switch you know being able to just take it with you wherever is really enticing to be able to have i can't imagine playing skyrim anywhere but my house <laughs> <laughs> imagine playing skyrim on a bus like what who the hell would do that get out of here there are people doing it they must be I, I, the novelty of it is i think the novelty of it is worth it to just oh have yeah it on the switch but I it was the I'd same thing for with it. the novelty factor is what got me to to try all this stuff in vr it was just like i gotta see what it's like and i don't ever actually make it's, it like that's not my play factor. session it's, it's too weird it's <laughs> But it was fun to do for once, and I think the same thing happens for Switch. You're just like, oh, I want to. What's it like to play Skyrim on the toilet? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's give that a go. Uh, but yeah, that uh, the the Skyrim opening is uh, is super memeified now. So it's pretty. That's where I experience it mostly, not actually in the game. Although I don't, I never have gotten into the quick start mods. You you swear by them though. Oh yeah, I would. I yeah, like I said, it's, I can't even imagine playing skyrim or any alternate st- I, I would only play with an alternate start mod it's just it's just not it's not possible i hate the story you know oh, that's the other thing too. It's, like a, it's it's not so much that i hate the story it's that it's the story is boring and it's too sure. it's like fallout 4 is like the perfect example of a bad story of like you don't you don't i don't want to get railroad i'm in my my beautiful open world or wasteland whatever you want to call it not beautiful i'm in my my open world immersive frication I don't want to be pulled around and told what to do. You know, you know the game that that pisses me off that everyone loves so much is Metro. You ever play Metro? I love Metro. Love it. I, I absolutely. absolutely loathe that game. That game oh is so Oh my god! Awful. See, I see. I am a big fan. I realize recently, I'm I actually am a big lover of linear games, and I always have been. And it oh, just took me a long is, time to figure that, that it that out. Game, <laughs> that game brings puts linear in a new definition because <laughs> you you are literally being dragged around on a leash by an NPC for like yeah. 90% of the first metro game. They get, they do better in the, some of the later ones. But would I, you, I, kind, I, would you hates... kindly <laughs> it's, Yeah, uh, oh yeah. No, that, they, that, that's I... a great that's a great example though. That uh BioShock is a great example of mess of playing with that or at least at the very least acknowledging it. Right. Metro doesn't do that at all. Met, you're you're just Artem you're on a leash. You're a dog being led around by an NPC. Yeah. Uh, the NPC doesn't actually do anything. He just sort of sits there and fires blanks the whole time, and you're expected to kill everything. 
and people <laughs> that, that drives me nuts that people love metro even though i still play the games and i enjoy them but it's one well, of those i mean i think it's like, like all, i think that's a to me those are a great t- tutorial like all of those stories are a great way to experience a game the first time and then if you love the mm-hmm. game you go mod it and that's why i, I think bethesda games are done perfectly so even yeah, though this for for the average player like an open world like that is too much decision it's just too much um you know yeah, like if it's a game you're not invested in and they drop it in they drop you in and don't give you anything to do it's not it, it gets it gets old pretty fast whereas if you're if you're being tour- pulled along in a story it's it's kind of like watching a movie where you get to make a few decisions during it but it doesn't build that fan base i don't think like why do you think bethesda's fan base is so forgiving you know well, yeah, like because they have the because of the open so world part. But I think the if you're a new player and you were just dropped in to something like Skyrim and there was nothing and you were just like dropped in the middle of the woods, I don't know that it would have quite the same draw as it. They would have to either either artificially like spam you with explanations of how to do things. So like I think like I said, I mean, it though, feels like, to me like it's a good tutorial. It teaches you the game, and it's it's enough to pull you along because it's definitely I you know nobody nobody claims that bethesda games are, are great for their stories although they sometimes have their moments like the i think the dark brotherhood story in uh skyrim is fantastic it's a lot of fun to play through it was it was just it was just good um maybe you disagree on that but the uh, i think there I are enough people who would better but you never played it so right i can't i have nothing to compare it to so maybe like compared to the oblivion one it's terrible i th- i thought it was a lot <laughs> of fun in uh skyrim and I, without those things to pull me in, I don't know that I would have got as addicted to the open world part. Like the having those characters to ground things and for, to make it kind of real, that's what pulls me oh, back uh, yeah, in th- from I, the exploring. I get what you're saying, but yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying um, the. Uh, well, that, yeah, we were talking about we were talking about the linear side, the linear games like Metro. The and linear Bioshock game, this, and well, stuff. the story side of it, how important that is. But it's like I think I think the reason Bethesda is so well loved, and we all love Bethesda is because they they don't take it too seriously and they don't uh they let they let it they let you do your own thing whereas like a game like i don't like i said i don't understand why why metro is as well beloved as it is because it you're on a leash the whole time and when when the game's over there's really no reason to ever touch it again and somehow that it bugs me that a game like that can be so successful when a game (laughs) like like fallout 4 or 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 skyrim i I mean they're they're plenty successful but lord knows they got to work at it like it's not a it's not a short development cycle to make these games i don't think it's a short uh, development cycle to do something like metro either i think they they have a uh, pretty i guarantee you it's a lot shorter it's gotta be like well they do a lot they put a lot more depth into other things so like that while they're you know they don't have as many advanced physics systems or open quest systems they have like way better graphics for example and they do a lot more individual animations for sequences. So, like, there's, they, I think they just shift where their development is. But they're also a tiny studio by comparison. Are so, they? Yeah, I, I actually don't know anything about the Metro developers. Yeah, I know they're, I know they're Ukrainian, I think, or Russian, something like that. Uh, yeah, there's somewhere over in the part of the world that isn't here. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but they're Eastern uh, Europe, something like Eastern that. Eastern Europe or, or or Russia. Yeah, but they. Uh, they're a very small studio, and so I wouldn't expect them to do something as big as, like as Skyrim either. I, I maybe, and maybe it's a matter of you just need a mix. Like sometimes you need that uh, that quick experience. Like I think I I've liked those more as I've gotten older because I don't have enough time to put into the open world. So, hmm. you know, you roll up an know, open yeah. world game, and you know it's gonna you're gonna put in a couple hundred hours in it. It's like well, then that could take at the rate I play games, that's gonna take me three months to be, to complete. <laughs> Uh, I have no problem with that. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem uh, putting that many hours into a game or that, or spreading it out that long because it's like, I'm, well, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have as much time to work on games anymore. Or as much time to, I say, oh, God, I, I use the word work involuntarily there. It's not working. <laughs> it's playing video games. Hmm. Got to get mm. that through my head. Yeah. yeah. But, a, little, uh, a little slip there. Yeah, I don't mind that sort of thing, but I understand why other people do like that quick fix. It, well, and it's also if the the nice thing about the linear is you're getting all of the story kind of thrown at you all at once. There's not a lot of gap between it. I don't know about you, but the the first time I played through Skyrim, it probably I probably forgot what was going on in the main story by the time I completed it because <laughs> I was just like dragged around doing side quests, like completely forget. Like, oh wait, what what was going on with that guy? Who but that's that? That, that's what I was getting at earlier. So side quests that make people really like, really like that. That's why Skyrim has lasted. So Skyrim and Fallout Four, or just the fallout games in general three too of course yeah has lasted so long it's because it's like it's that I, I i wish 
I feel like Bethesda deserves more credit for that because so no no other studios do that. Actually, we'll we'll see what Rage is like. Rage Two is supposed to be kind of an open world quest them up right am i wrong about that i have no idea i have not followed that i've watched their because they've gone so silly with their ads that i'm like all right it's just going to be a goofy shooter and it's open world so i'll I'll probably give it a try because i like the i like avalanche i like their stuff it's really cool but um it tends to be that i those for whatever reason bethesda's are the only ones where i get hooked and i i to me i think it's because of the they've got uh a a story I care about and it feels very open. I, I don't, I still haven't been able to put my finger on it about why I like Bethesda games more than other companies. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, w- I couldn't, I couldn't tell you either, but God knows it sir has drawn us both in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. With the amount of hours we're putting into building content for them. So it's, uh, but yeah, we'll see well, the 70, but I think so we, we were just saying that, you know, maybe the, the stories in Bethesda, Maybe they're not necessary, but I think they are, and that 76 proved it because they gutted the story. They left all the systems, oh, yeah, right. and the game lost its soul. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no NPCs. Well, there's robots or something like that, but right. Yeah, but you don't, right. Yeah, you don't they're... interact with them. You have no choice. So, like, it's essentially they're, they're basically distributors of quest markers. Um, you know, you don't ever actually get to decide whether or not you're going to get that quest marker. As soon as you're within the vicinity of them, they hand you your quest. Yeah, you're right. When you think about it like that. It really is. It's it's the the main quests really do draw people in. Well, and even if and even if you ignore them, it's almost like you know it's there, and that makes it feel like it's a it's a world. And it has a it has a, a purpose to it. I don't know if it's a if it's one of those like little trick. It's like a psychological trick almost, where it's even if you never play it, it just the fact that it's there is important. I don't know if that may, yeah, might be yeah. the thing. Hmm. That's that yeah. is that is so important. Yeah, it's just one of those where it's like um yeah i don't know i agree with you on that one it's it, the main quest is necessary but uh but hopefully we can I, I, hopefully I we'll get better one. i would like to get i would like to see better ones that would be it would be nice um but uh who well, knows, i, I want to see that. like i don't know it's one of those weird things where it's like i want to i'm not really criticizing fallout 4 here because i know why fallout 4's first hour is like super super linear uh-huh. but it's not even that it's linear that it's it's really well it's it's directed you know you get a right. power armor. You get a suit of power armor, and you get fight a death claw in the first thirty minutes of the game. You know, right? That's a that's that's pretty obvious why they did that. They wanted people to immediately have a good time with it, right? And like, uh, it's like yeah, that's, super curated experience for new people to be like, this is why Fallout is badass. Like, yeah, it's just it just sucks. It dictated the rest of the game. <laughs> the uh, yeah, you, yeah, you get saddled with the the the, the, the goofy main character. It all and it also well, I, I, and you you have to figure that they were probably looking at game trends at the time. Like when they started development of Fallout Four is probably right around the time Mass Effect came out, and was such a uh, a big cinematic story driven RPG that that looked like that was where the the uh, market was going, and it kind of did it kind of did go that way because that's most other RPGs follow that cinematic format and don't go the open world route. Yeah, so, that's true. I'm, I don't know, like, well, I'm, I'm thinking of other, what are other RPGs right now, like, that are sort of in that same, I know Anthem bombed pretty bad, Anthem was Well, like, like Witcher, Witcher kind of does, Witcher 3 did kind of the same thing, it's, it's a I've bunch of series. i the Witcher games, I know that's heresy, I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah, I, Witcher I, 3, a lot of people consider one of the greatest RPGs ever released. I, I so. hear that all the time, and I believe it, but I, I, my, my problem is I played the first Witcher, and I uh-huh. hated it. Me too. Same here. It was terrible. Oh, okay. I oh. thought Witcher 2 was terrible as well, but I had enough oh, really? friends who were hounding me about Witcher 3, and I'm like, all right, I'll give it a go. And I'm like, okay, yep, this is amazing. This is such a good yeah, game. Yeah, I, I, I think I should try Witcher 3 at some point, but... Uh, it's probably yeah, been overhyped to you now, that's, so that's if you've resisted this long... <laughs> that's yeah, the that, only I mean, one that, other one I can think of that's that's really successful, because like, a lot of other RPGs, like... Um, okay, you played Destiny, right? You said you played Destiny. Yeah, yeah, I played that, a lot of Destiny. Is Destiny yeah. and Anthem, aren't those kind of like the same thing? They're like yeah, that's why I had no shooters. interest in Anthem. It was like, oh, this is just a loot and shoot. I don't I don't want anything to do yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. So, no, but but before that, Bioware had done Mass Effect and, and Dragon Age, and those those kind of follow the the format of what Fallout 4 did, which was you have a... They weren't, they weren't linear. They had an open world, but for the most part, there was a main quest that was f- for the, pretty linear, and you get mm-hmm. these cinematic conversations and stuff, and that's kind of what Fallout 4 did. So they were just following the industry trend there. And I actually I actually enjoy that stuff, and it's fun to build in it now because I've started doing quest mods. It's fun to build in that, have that cinematic feel for your sequences. Like you take all this time to write, to write up these fun conversations and stuff. It's nice to have them look good. 
And yeah, I bet. So I, I would think that that they were probably driven by that too, as creators of like, Hey, we, you know, the stories were do right. We want them to look kind of cool. And, and for players who are casual though, that sequence, that first 30 minutes of fallout four probably does hook them in of like, like that's a pretty cool experience if you've never played Fallout. For for those of us who are experienced, we're like, oh, Death Claws are supposed to be the scary enemy you find at the <laughs> end, and Power Armor is supposed to be the thing you spend you know a hundred hours before you actually earn. So, it's uh, yeah, I, I definitely don't blame them for for doing it that way. It's it's a, uh, it was it was obviously obviously it worked because like. Fallout 4 is a pretty big success, right? I mean, right. It was their biggest. Had, it still, was their. I believe it was their biggest game ever at the time. I don't know if Skyrim really has since Skyrim. surpassed. It. I think Skyrim's probably since surpassed it because it's been released on every platform. Yeah, um, yeah. But but I'm pretty sure when I think that they announced at some point, and I'd have to go look this up, and I'm not going to. Anybody else can call me out <laughs> in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm fairly certain Fallout 4 was their best selling game. So it, I, uh, I don't I don't doubt it. It definitely it definitely deserves it. It definitely deserves it for all that good. I just I'm just hoping that the uh, Fallout seventy six doesn't doesn't. I think it was. I think seventy six was such a way. Not not just a. Uh, uh, it was like a pol- a not political. What's the word I'm looking for? And not commercial critical disaster. Like they got reamed out by every every single publication. Yeah, and then... that, that blew me away. Like I don't I don't I don't wa- follow the games game, games journalism is such a such a silly term to th- if you think about it. <laughs> right. But uh, I don't follow it too much, but it, it, it really blew me away how much people hated Fallout 76. Like, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was, I mean, I didn't play it, but I didn't think it looked that bad. But uh, I think it's one of those where once the meme gets started, it's kind of hard to stop and they just sort of jump on the train. But at the right. same time, like game journalists, they're kind of, like again, quota- huge quotation marks around the, that game journalist thing. Uh, like they're, they're so beholden to big companies like Bethesda it sort of threw, right. threw me off so, that people hate it so much. Like really you're, you're biting the hand that feeds you guys. You maybe, maybe don't jump on it that much. Right. Well, and the fact, so that means that those like the average 50 rating, that was a tempered rating. So that means it was actually because it's such a big company and they know that, you know, it's probably going to cost them in the long term on uh, who gets access to uh, sneak peeks and things like that. I think it's, uh, it was I, well. It was also probably an argument to be made that the game was buggy enough at release that, mm-hmm. but that That's but true. they could have made an argument to because they'd be like, listen, I, you know, we're really sorry to do this, <laughs> but <laughs> this is in bad shape, and everybody knew it because you've got the you like the YouTube crowd gets ahead of the games journalists. The YouTubers yeah, are out there kind of dictating the conversation way before any of these articles come out because the articles, at least on the good sites, tend to be like, all right, we need we need a little time to digest this game. So that we can give you a fair and honest review, and since Bethesda doesn't do review copies of their games, they were basically behind. Like they were a couple weeks before, they were a couple weeks behind the rest of the cycle. So yeah, it kind of blows me away that game journalists are even still a thing. You know, <laughs> haven't they been? Hasn't YouTube have the YouTube community kind of replaced them completely? I mean, I, for, I for I, most people, I think yes. I think that's it's part. It's like one of those made. dying industries. It's kind of like there's still a handful of newspapers left. <laughs> so. Well, that's but most newspapers have like decent websites attached to them that people care about you know sure like uh new york times i think most people get their news from they, i'm pretty sure they still put out a paper newspaper right am i wrong about right that? yeah uh, like but my wife still gets, the gets a newspaper which i won't name because i'm my location's still anonymous on the internet but uh yeah we we get like a newspaper delivered to the house and uh, but i find it silly i'm just like i i knew about that yesterday because <laughs> it's it took them a while to print that and write it all up so that's yeah uh, I, I don't know it's the uh, it, same thing with the journal like nobody's gonna so wait to things. purchase a game if they uh, wait for these journalists to put out a proper review when they can just go on youtube and find out if their favorite person who likes to yell likes it or not <laughs> <laughs> well, i just like how you describe it like that <laughs> well that's how all of them are all of the everybody on youtube now who reviews games they're very angry like that's the that's their pit their hook i can't think of very many who aren't grumpy <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good selling point, I guess. That's that's what they work off. I don't. Know, I feel. I don't want to be. I don't. I don't want to make enemies of them. You know what I mean? I, I gotta gotta watch my words here. Uh, I feel bad for them, kind of, because it seems like kind of a shitty day job. You know, like you got the, the game journalists or the YouTubers. The, the YouTubers, because you okay. gotta you gotta you gotta grind that grind that axe. You grind that stuff. Oh right, right. Words. Yeah, they gotta chase they're, those. They're clicks. out there. They're on the grind. They got right. to. They got to keep those viewer numbers up. 
Yeah. And it's I like, think jur- I think journalists IRL have that problem too and aren't a fan of it of the fact that they've almost they're competing with the internet for attention and so then they've got to like go kind of clickbaity with the yeah, with the way yeah. they're writing. So but that's that's leading us into a conversation on fake news which I don't want to go. I don't want to go down that no, road. No, no, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not a politics podcast. Yeah, it's not a political podcast. All right, so let's take it let's take it way back. Um, there's one other mod of yours I really wanted to talk about and it's because it's my favorite one of yours is the cross crit Gorver Hall. Oh yeah, that thing is. That's, that's the that's the one I wish was more popular than the the jetpack one. Well, actually, it, it might be at this point. I don't know. I, I'm I trying to help you get there, man. My whole my whole playthrough right now is all about know. gore. Like I'm doing, uh, uh, melee. I've got live dismemberment on. I've got your mod. Oh, fun. I'm just there's blood and limbs flying everywhere. Um, because that to me is one of the best parts of Fallout is the over the top violence. I think it's so yes. ridiculous that it's fun. Uh, it's kind of like you know, they, one playing they, Kill Bill of a game. It's it's great. I would hope they uh, if, if if Bethesda ever wants to steal something from me, please steal the the, the gore overhaul. It's it's how such a, did you do some of those effects? Because some of them blew my like I didn't I, I remember seeing a video on it a long time ago. I didn't download it because I wasn't playing the game at the time. And then someone mm-hmm. recommended it to me recently. I grabbed it and I saw one of the effects and it was like like head exploded. Yeah, it's disturbing after a while you 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 watch those things you, you sort of, i don't know it's i think i on the i'm repeating myself from the an interview i did in the nexus but they it's one of those things where it's like i it's it's i say i keep a clean load order whenever i'm testing mods i never turn off the, the gore the crit <laughs> mod. i never turn it off because when it happens you just look at it and you go jesus christ i did that right but and not like not like i me the author did it i mean like me as the player reduced that that thing that once looked like a human to just like gore and bones and it's it's such a it's such a weird mod like i can kind of understand why they didn't they didn't do that in the base game because it's kind of disturbing after a while right but uh well yeah, can it's, you it's can a, you tell me on a technical level how you did that because it able on a technical level okay so like how how are because are, are is that faked a little or those actually does that actually become their skeleton do they turn into the skeleton because the animations all line up nicely like I thought when I first read about it I'm like oh that must just be doing model swapping and it's gonna look a little janky but it's hiding it under the flames but instead nope it looks like it's actually like it it looks like it actually happens it it uses some trickery so like the way I don't know have you have you messed around with shaders at all in uh, yeah I'm experimenting with the them CK. a lot lately yeah. Uh, okay so basically what you can do is you can tell you can tell it to play a a specific shader mm -hmm. only on the skin okay so like you um, the first thing i think of is a skyrim analogy is like in skyrim if you cast uh a mage armor or whatever the hell it's called uh you can change that shader so your whole body turns white and it makes a little effect right right you can flip a shader so that it only affects your skin so you sure. cast the spell, your armor stays the same, your skin turns white, and then the spell is cast. Okay. That same system exists in Fallout 4, though I don't know how much it's used. Okay. Um, but it's all it's it's you know they're the same game at the at the core level. Right. So the way it works is when the person dies, they've they've been crit. It's confirmed they've been crit and they're being killed. Yeah. Uh, they put on they're forced into an outfit that covers their whole body. Okay. And then that outfit is set up in a way so that the materials think the clothing is skin and the bones are regular, regular not skin models. So okay. the shader hits the skin, which is the clothes. Yeah. The clothes burn away slowly because that's just what the shader does. It, it sort of puts holes in things. Right. It, but it only affects the skin meshes or the skin materials. Got and it. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's how it works. It's 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 explaining it i feel like i if i could draw a picture for you and make more sense, <laughs> right no i think i think i, I get what you're i get what you're saying that's it just looks so uh convincing and yeah yeah does do they keep well, the same the armor on every seen, time or is that swapped at some point to down to a set of them i don't because i haven't yeah, it is. i that's, haven't seen that's it the enough part to you're know. not seeing okay that's the part you're not seeing it you don't see it because the, all of the effects are so bright you right. don't see it but you know every doesn't matter if you're killing a, a gunner or a raider or whatever they're all getting switched into the, uh, I think it's like a flannel shirt and in blue jeans. Okay. And then that the flannel shirt and blue jeans that would burn away. That, that again, right, but they shader. have their correct. They all have their correct armor on still. Is that yeah, why? They also it's, have their so armor that's on. why I think that's why it's so convincing. Is that it's like yeah, that's it definitely helps. 
Oh man, it's it's such a beautiful effect. Every one of them too, like the even like the death claw getting charred and stuff. It just all looks so fantastic. How long did it take yeah, you to put that together? Uh, oh, you, I have no idea how long it takes me to put together any of these mods. Are you kidding me? I don't pay. I don't. <laughs> That's I don't probably keep for track. the best. That's probably there's good. No, there's no Steam, uh, Steam <laughs> right, right. hour counter. I have no idea how many hours I put into these things. I just do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. But, uh, was, probably, was that a particularly challenging one? Or was, uh, that, or was that fairly easy? I think from, from your perspective, really... obviously that's going to be different. Because, like some yeah, that, for for if you were new, it was, it would take it's longer. been a while since I made it, so I'm, I'm trying right. to think. Yeah, um, I feel like this getting the script optimized is what what made it difficult. Because again, like scripting in, in these games, you got to be you got to be so careful because there's some really ugly mods out there that do a lot of dirty things with scripts. And I got to <laughs> we know this because Skyrim is so crash prone. If you right. if you Fall of War is much more forgiving, much more forgiving. Yeah, probably to its, forgiving, probably to its detriment, wanna... but I mean, well, you played with the script system, so you know oh, how yeah, slow I... the script system can be. So right, you, you I I get lucky because that. my because my stuff doesn't matter. Like it doesn't have to be fast. It's like obviously a combat yeah, yeah, script, yeah. but my stuff if it gets backed up, it's like well, the, it was the it was supposed to take three days for that to happen anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I get a yeah, pass. The, <laughs> the instant the instant thing on the script with the crit mod was um it had to be super fast it had to yeah. be super fast otherwise you could see it happening right if there was any sort of you could you could literally see you know the gunner would change would go from a, a green uh fatigues to the the flannel shirt and jeans and you'd see it before it happened and you can't have that so right right it's just that little bit it, takes you out of it part. but yeah. the actual actually getting it working and getting the effect moving in game was not that difficult it was just optimizing the script Ah, that okay. uh, took a long time well but i tell you then, what anytime you want to do something like that again and you need help with scripts you send me a message <laughs> i'm happy to help yeah you. I, I i definitely i i mentioned train was earlier he's he's definitely my go-to guy when i when i run into something script related that i have no idea because he's really good at that kind of stuff i'm he, he still not entirely good. sure if he's not a if he's not a, a bethesda employee I don't, <laughs> I don't know. He, he knows things that i i really do wonder how he knows them uh-huh <laughs> Yeah, I, I, there's a few people that I've uh, I wouldn't have like I said I wouldn't have been shocked if you told me you were after I saw the quality of some of your latest stuff. But then I guess if I look at your earliest stuff, I guess I I should have been like I guess no Bethesda employee would be doing mashup work. <laughs> like that would Yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't be doing that. Well, so. they wouldn't be yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't start from Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I I wonder if Bethesda, I wonder if Bethesda employees are allowed to release mods or not. Cuz I would think that you would have that it would be it would be a good PR thing to just have even if they didn't like, cause they wouldn't have to claim it was that employee. They could claim it was the company like, Hey, you know, we're throwing out mods once in a while as free content. Like it would be something somebody could do as a hobby, you know, in their evenings and put out and it would be massive value to them. Like it would people, we would be so hyped about it all the time. Like, but that was released another badass mod. <laughs> well, they used to, they did. not I think they used to, right. Didn't they do that for a living or something? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, they, I'm not uh, sure. they don't now. That's they, all I know. Uh, they don't they don't know well they have the creation club they they play right, right. now they well now they sell the stuff yeah i what i think just the if you look at how high quality like again going back to your stuff like the fact that there's people like you who are willing to do this high quality stuff for free i would think there's got to there's probably some number of bethesda employees who were like worked on the game well, were like you know what i didn't get to put everything in there i wanted and this would be their opportunity to do that i i would see that's the thing i, I think it's just the opposite i think most of the dlc is stuff that they wanted. I think that it wasn't the whole uh, thing. You think thing. they have already got it out of their system. They, they, they're done. Yeah, I, th- I think they, well, one, yes, I definitely think if I was doing this stuff for a living, I definitely wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't come home every day from the <laughs> office and fire up ZBrush if I had been working in ZBrush for eight hours at work. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it that way. But I, I think the, uh, I think they get their fix. Like from what I understood, the robot DLC 01 robot uh-huh. which is i know the technical name i can't automatron remember the, automaton yeah. yeah automatron that's it uh i'm pretty sure that started out as like an internal mod project or something didn't it oh maybe it and was a it, maybe it, it was a game jam or something. some of them you can see yeah. the term game jam in their file names yeah it's like, that's oh. the word yeah that's the uh they they I, I get the feeling that they do have people at bethesda that enjoy doing that kind of thing and that's yeah. sort of where some of the, they they make it into dlc and that's where it comes from and i wouldn't doubt some of them do stuff anonymously yeah. i'd imagine like from a from a pr perspective you don't want to be managing your employees doing their own pr 
right you don't want your you don't want employees that are supposed to be artists doing doing uh true like I, so that's why i'm wondering stuff. if they have maybe a policy against it because that seems, yeah, that seems would, like it might be sensible it yeah and then the good stuff they turn into dlc which makes sense because obviously they know what they're doing they know their engine very well right like, no modder could have made automatron that, oh that yeah i know automatron idea. is nuts like i i have said that several times now they don't get enough credit for that especially yeah, for how cheap that dlc, DLC is. is it's so yeah. deep there's so much going it drives on in me there nuts when people don't have it i got i got i got people mad at me for the archimedes <laughs> because it requires automatron and it's like why don't you have automatron it's literally the best dlc ever I, it's I one have of the trouble. Best DLCs for any game ever. Yeah, right. It adds so much. It does add so much. I mean, it's got quest content. It's got a new settlement. It's got that robot system is so deep, especially yeah, after oh. you download a couple of mods for it. Holy crap. Yeah. But, M150, man. He loves that mod. Or he loves that <laughs> DLC. Uh, M150 is a, a hero. I love the all Bless him. He is, he is a sacred being. <laughs> his, 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 he has, does everything from fish people mods to... Yeah. to mech mods it's it's amazing with, and it's what all open source and free for people to use i love it i it's a shame that m150 makes a big point of saying he doesn't speak any english or i would love to talk to him <laughs> and say oh yeah, yeah. thank I, you I, for I, all I, your work I, I, no I, you know I, I bet he does speak english he just doesn't want to deal with he doesn't want to deal with the people he, he doesn't want to deal with mod <laughs> uses <laughs> i wouldn't blame him for it he's oh, got a man. good excuse he's uh, japanese <laughs> yeah he could just pretend i mean i guess but technically we all could but uh, I, I actually, I enjoy it. I get a, I get a thrill out of it. I'm, see, I'm, and that the reason I, I think I maybe thought there might be a Bethesda employee doing the night, moonlighting this is because I do it. I like, I code all day long, and I come home and I want to mm-hmm. keep coding. I'm a freaking addict. So that's, uh, but yeah, maybe I, not. I can definitely see that. Like, no artist that you know, yeah, you know, any ZBrush is fun. Like, it's, it's freaking fun. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind getting paid for it. But I'd probably, if I was getting paid for it, I probably wouldn't be doing the things that I'd want to be doing. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably like, I mean, that's the other right, side. Right, right. So you wouldn't know, be getting to work on Fallout 5. You'd be getting to work on Barbie's Dream House, the game. Oh, God. Yeah. See, that's, <laughs> that's why I don't want to get into this industry. Cause that's I don't why I was turned off from it. Projects. When I, when yeah. I was, uh, so I, I was, I went to college the year that Full Sail opened, which was like the first gaming college in yep, yep. Uh, Florida. And the, I had a conversation with, um, some some of their pr- prospective students and some of the professors like going to visit the college and they warned me that a lot of their people were getting well they didn't warn me they were telling me about the jobs that a lot of their students were going to get were, were being promised already like internships and stuff mm-hmm. and it was just at these games pumping or these houses pumping out like movie adaptation games and uh cereal box games, games and days. mobile games and i was just like this stuff all sounds terrible i don't want to do any of that so then i was like all right i guess i'll i'll find another career <laughs> like that definitely terrifies me I, me I remember thinking that when i uh when i first started looking into it i still see uh i still see that all the time I, I get the i get the job postings email from art station every day and i see it's just you, you go down the list and it's like it is those those places still exist and they i can't imagine how soul-sucking that is well and but, a lot of it now is all contract work like the the whole thing with um like uber and lyft and uh uh, what's that task rabbit like these like little get paid per gig job gig jobs uh mm-hmm. with the gig economy stuff that's hitting up all industries the uh game industry is f- just tons of people doing contract work where they get paid a minimal amount to build x number of assets and they're mm-hmm. they're never actually credited as being as part of the team they're just like an outsider and it's yeah i do wonder how that works kind of worries me but like i said i'm not not in the industry kind of I'd, I'd like to try it someday just sure. just to try it but I, then I'd, I'd have to yeah I would. I'm, I have. Not, been, I've been wanting to see what it would be like to work with a whole bunch of people who are dedicated. So, like, I, I work with a bunch of people on the Sim Settlement stuff, but everybody's got day jobs, so they can't put in you know a ton of hours. I would love to see what it'd be like. Like, what would it be like to have everybody who this is their entire focus, and you know we're all putting in together, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy hours a week on this. Like, what would that be like? Like, that seems exciting to me. Um, whereas opposed to, you know, having yeah, to that's, also that's do my dream, night right? job slows it down a lot. And then other people aren't as committed or don't have the time or aren't as skilled because they're in the volunteer space. And it's like, what would it be like to work with 150 professionals busting their asses at it? Like that sounds exciting. That does sound exciting. What was the, one of the, some recent mod project got there, the team that made it got 
made a studio out of themselves. I'm f- trying to remember who that was. Was that the Indro guys and and Dariel guys? Uh, I, I don't think that was I them. know that they did a like they have their own launcher now. I don't know if they're a game no, company. Was, and then that, the was, the guy who did the mis- the murder mystery thing. Um, the for yeah, yeah, what is yeah. it? Uh, God, I can't think of the name of it. He Sorry, made his own buddy. game out of it. Yeah, same, he's turning same his exact... own game out of it. Same name. And and that's that's the dream right there is uh doing that, but. I'd have to be on a team for that kind of thing. And, uh, <laughs> well, I think he's doing it real small. From what I remember reading really? about it, he's only working with a couple of other people to do their own company. Like they're they're relying on those third party assets, like the contracted assets, to pull it off. It was. Oh, a, I got you. That's how uh, PUBG came to be. The um, yeah, player PUBG's unknown a, was a, was an Arma two modder, and he basically hired a company <laughs> out of South Korea and <laughs> built the game. Yep, and started the whole trend. Right. Started a market. I was an early adopter on that. I, I I claim this is this this is, means nothing, but I claim it anyway. I used to play the original Arma Two. Oh, Battle awesome! Royale, yeah, I, I never played was into it, it when when Brendan Green was actually like an admin on the servers, and it was like I remember I've got I don't play any of the games now because I got tired of it then. But that was that was when it was at its best. Yeah, is when there's like an admin flying around making sure people aren't aren't screwing around or cheating and they actually had <laughs> zombies in it you know like the, the 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 what is it the blue circle or whatever they call it right was like it would spawn zombies on you it wouldn't just uh oh that's awesome <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't just hurt you it spawned zombies on you and you were you were completely effed if oh, they, uh, that's great if you were outside the blue zone i remember that being a huge thing yeah that but yeah be- yeah no i the uh, the whole um asset thing the whole yeah. unreal assets i remember that being a thing yeah and uh it, make, it makes it makes sense that that would that's where it would go though if you figure that we're gonna end, eventually hit like a max realism that's acceptable before it gets into the uncanny valley where then it's like all right well how many times do you need to remake a realistic life like life like fern like why can't we just all use the same one and maybe I mean that's change true, the coloration I mean, on the for artistic style a little bit but the actual model can probably be used between ten different games. I think they do do that already. But right, uh, right. I think, ever, I think it like, seems inevitable. You never get that for like power armor or whatever, right? You right, know? right. You wouldn't get that for characters or weapons, but it's like, but I can Actually, see why for environmental art it would be. That's exactly what you'd want to do. So, which is yeah, ex- yeah. it's a little exciting as a create a small time creator of that does open up the possibility that as more of those libraries come to exist, they will keep getting cheaper, and then the idea of starting you know building an indie game becomes less intimidating. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. If you if you're going full 3D on it, I still I can't even imagine starting out in 3d and they're doing that sort of thing like th- that's why all the indie games are like pixel art and stuff right <laughs> right right say yeah i d- i just don't i don't like playing those anymore <laughs> i'm so addicted to the 3d first person thing like that i load See, up one of those a, games and i'm like addiction. yeah yeah being addicted to bethesda games is rough because nobody nobody makes nobody makes open world explore maps Right, Quite like, like Bethesda does. There, I mean, there's a bunch, bunch of companies that are in that space as well. Like, uh, like Far Cry is basically that, it's just an open world explore game. Um, and they're fun, mm-hmm. but they're not the same. They're not Bethesda games. And I, I'm still trying to put my finger on it. I'm gonna keep having these conversations until we figure it out. We're gonna get it into words, and then, uh, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna make my own, and that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, well five years of development and however many hundreds of people that are involved. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, well, this is, this will be the last thing I do before I retire for, for a lot. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I would love man. to, uh, I, I, I've always thought like, it, it blows me away. Like I, I remember looking at Todd Howard's career, right? Like yeah. he started out when he was like 20 or something. And he made, he was basically in his, in his early twenties, I think he made Daggerfall or he worked on Daggerfall. Right. And then he directed Morrowind and it's like in his twenties and it's like mind blowing to think that that game was made. Uh, that game has so many like, m- like memories to so many people. Yeah. And it was, it was made by Todd Howard in his, in his mid twenties. And that's like mind blowing to me that that's those, those, these games can have that effect. It has that effect on me. I, I played the played Morrowind when I was a little kid and I, I loved that thing. Yeah. I, I, Actually, I need to. Uh, I, I'm, I, still, I keep telling myself I'm going to replay it, and I, now I don't have an excuse because you just got it free. free on, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's free on. By the way, anyone listening to this, if it's not March 31st yet, uh, you can get more one for free on. Bethesda oh, did they launch. do it for the full week? They had yesterday. They had said it was today only. Did they extend that? Oh, was it? 
was it today only? I don't know what it was. I thought I th- thought I saw March thirty. So well, it had said it was somewhere. one day only, and then their servers basically collapsed under the weight, and then so I don't know if they extended it maybe. <laughs> well, to hopefully, make up okay, for that. hopefully they did. Yeah, but yeah, that's I don't have an excuse anymore. I got to go back and play more. <laughs> I I don't know if, if I could. Up. I don't know if I could now. I tried to play Oblivion again a couple years ago. It's ooh, it's bad. I it's, can see. I can't see my. I'll. I'll, I'll I'm. A, I agree with you there. I can't see myself going back to oblivion because oblivion <laughs> has the putty faces you know what i'm talking about oh it's yeah it's faces. got the putty faces Potato and faces. it's got the worst archery system in any game i've ever played um oh god yeah but the, the, the oblivion as good as it is and it is yeah. still good it's like it's it's the go-between between morrowind and what skyrim is and it's yeah. like it's it's that middle ground that doesn't quite hit the hit the notes quite correctly Right. Whereas a Morrowind hits the hits the right notes, hits the notes it means to hit correctly. Yeah. And then Skyrim hits everything out of the park. Right. And it's like, it all came together. Great. Yeah. But so I don't I don't blame you at all for not wanting to touch Oblivion. <laughs> I don't. I, I I'm, wouldn't. I'm, go wait, my, I'm holding out hope that Sky Oblivion happens. Like it's <laughs> it's so hard for those oh. projects to happen, but man, I'm rooting for them. Uh, and every time I'm, one of those, right one, anytime one of those mega mods comes out, I go donate them a whole lot of money because I'm just like so proud of it. <laughs> I'm like you did it. Like, yeah, but you, now, uh, I, I'm I'm in the same boat. But it's like I feel, I, I really do want those things to to finish. But I ne- I don't don't remember the last time I saw one finished. Well, to me, the last than... the last major mod projects to get released and then not necessarily finished were Beyond Skyrim. That one made it, but it's and it's not complete. But they did. I think they did it smart, which is you got to release it in chunks. Cause it keeps your team motivated and it helps you on new recruitment. And then yeah, uh, project Brazil made it, they made it to release, which was pretty impressive. Like that was seven or eight which years. Project Brazil. It became new California now as it released, but they had, they had been working I, wait, on is that it. the one that combines the two fallout three and new. No, Vegas? that's a uh, tale of two wastelands. That one got completed, but they, they weren't rebuilding the entire game from scratch. They used, oh, okay, they okay, used okay. like a program to extract the assets from one game to the other. Um, but no, you. Project Brazil was like labor. a D, like a DLC sized make our own thing. That was the remakes. I mean, I don't think any of them has happened yet. I think they've all been planned, but never happened. I'm just talking. I I, yeah, can, I lump in for. those mega mods too. Those DLC like now for Fall for it's Cascadia, Miami. Um, mm-hmm. Those mods tend to almost never get completed. Those mega projects. I, God, I want them to be completed though. God, yeah, I want them so to be completed. I. It would be right. so cool if they did. I think what happens is you get you get the the guy that sort of plans it all out and it's, right. you know, don't, I'm not saying it's easy to plan things out. It's not, it's yeah. still its own effort. But then I think what happens is at least, okay, maybe this is the way it would work for me. I would, I would, I would build the world. I would see how the world works. I'd add assets, all that stuff. And then I'd get to the quest system and I'd just be like, Oh God, what have <laughs> I committed to? <laughs> and I would just lose all motivation. I can do all that other stuff. I can understand yeah. doing all that stuff. But like, when you really look at how complex the quest and and like dialogue system is for these Bethesda games, yeah, like mind blowing. I would imagine. I, that's, I will that's say, what I kills. I've gotten into it recently. It is the most fun I've had modding ever. Um, really taking because like it's it's once you get it, it's like oh, this is actually really easy. I overcomplicated this for myself, and then it's just that taking those voice files from real people, especially when you use really good voice actors. Like taking them mm-hmm. and putting them in, it just it makes it all real. It's like, oh my god, I'm making like a real story that people are gonna get to see. It's like these characters are alive. It feels phenomenal. Um, so I highly recommend That's it to anybody. That's something I've never experienced, but I can see how that would be satisfying. It's like it, blowing people up on the bridge every, every right. Time exactly. Like the yeah. Those po- those point. Every Seen once in a while, happen. as a creator, you create something, and like this is how I know when I when I did something good is when I amaze myself and I want to keep redoing it or rewatching it. And I'm like, okay, that's it. That's good enough to show to people. Um, and like until I get something to that point, I tend to like try and keep it under wraps. But uh, yeah, that satisfaction is. I feel like not enough people get that satisfaction out of their hobbies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so it's so satisfying having that seeing that fruition. Right. Of all that hard work. Like I feel like there's too many. You don't you don't get that you don't get that same feeling from from killing stuff in dark souls like it's, it's, it's <laughs> right it oh man you're hitting you're you're nailing stuff we were uh, chris and i were just talking about of the like what how is it people put in so many hours to get good at games i don't know I, I... yeah well no no i understand it but that's just it well okay i don't know there's there's some psychological stuff i could get into but that's like that's me just regurgitating joe rogan and uh well then it'll that'll rogan, that'll turn into uh rogan. that'll turn into hour four of our podcast so <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's it's like a um, 
or that that satisfaction from hobbies it's like not enough people get that and that's that's really what modding is is that that tangible that that's one of the reasons why i hated one of my one of my first jobs i ever did was a uh i worked i worked not at my i worked at microsoft but not for microsoft i was okay. kind of like a I mean, it, it didn't really matter but the point is every work everything i did and everything i worked on before it ever got touched or used by another person mm -hmm. it would be thrown out because oh. they would want it done a different way that and sucks. it was like it was the most soul-crushing thing in the world because nobody ever looked at my hard work and it drove me nuts it's kind of still like that now at the place i'm at but not entirely uh but modding completely fills that for me like, yeah. i love i love that people go through my stuff and and get some sort of satisfaction out of it and then i get feedback on it and i get bug reports bug reports the first week of bug reports i love them they're, they're great yeah. after that after that they they're useless because it's not yeah 90 percent. it's people who have bad load orders um yeah bad load orders so it's nothing yeah. you really do about that but that 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 feedback of that first week it, i don't care if it's if it's good or bad if it's people complaining about oh this isn't lore friendly <laughs> you know all that stuff yeah I, I don't care i love it i love that kind of that yeah. that feedback from putting in a bunch of hard work and getting something back from it. I, I feel I, you exactly that first week. I, that's probably the only time I read the comments on Nexus is that first week. And then after that, it becomes overwhelming or I get, <laughs> I, I get exposed to too many of the entitled a-holes who decide to tell me how terrible I am. And I can't deal with that. Like, Oh, I love those people. Those uh, I, I people once, I mean, if, if I, if it happens in the midst of that first week, I'm fine with it. Cause like, well, there's all these other people who are going to scream you down because like I've gotten, but when it happens <laughs> like that, you know, a mod has gets necroed a uh, mod comment pool gets neck road mm -hmm. for someone to tell me I suck. It's like, Oh, that's painful. I, hate that. <laughs> I can't do it. It's like just an emotional, like punch in the gut. Not a fan of it. I, I just think of the person behind the keyboard and it gives me a good chuckle. So I don't mind those people at all. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta figure it's, it's, it's probably, it's probably just some dude that's on tilt. Maybe he's frustrated with, with something. Maybe, maybe he died a few too many times to a dark souls boss. Right. And uh, just wants to take it out on something. Something shitty happened as I've heard. He came home from a shitty day at work and he just wants to type something. I keep saying he. Maybe it could be a she. Maybe. It's probably maybe. a he, though. Let's be honest. It's probably a he. <laughs> uh, but for, for gender in, uh, gender inclusivity, <laughs> it, it could be It, it could, could be, be included somebody. in the shitty stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, everyone has bad days. But it's just like I don't I don't let those people get to me. And I, I love that they expose themselves on the Internet because... Yeah. You know, it's internet. You 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 always have that. Right, there, right. There's always going to be assholes out there, and so it's all you can do is laugh at them. And so I don't mind uh, shitty comments at all. I and and I can rationalize that, but it doesn't change the fact that I get that ping, and then I think on it for a few hours, and it's like, oh, maybe he's right. Maybe I, I definitely maybe got I, that when I maybe I started. screwed up on that. Maybe I should have done that differently. Um, I think uh, it depends on where the comments are. Like I wouldn't ever read if I if I was a YouTuber, I would never read YouTube comments. See, at YouTube, I never get that stuff. I, it's very, or it's really? very, very rare. It's Nexus is where it all comes from. Yeah, Nexus is where oh, I see, I, I see the most just... toxic behavior, which is unfortunate. But um, fortunately, yeah, I have, well, I've got a know. couple of people who uh, have volunteered to help moderate my stuff, so they tend to you delete must get that a lot of before comments, I have to then. see it. I guess it. I don't I pay attention to your threads that much. Or your, well, uh, I think your, Sim Settlements has threads. like thirteen thousand posts on it or something like that. Like it's Oh my god. It's absurd. I don't I can't <laughs> keep up with it anymore. I did for a couple of months and then I was like, okay, this is outrageous. Like this is Yeah, you're you're sort of like working off of the same mod over and over again, right? So like, Right, right. Everything well, everything we release is an expansion to the core experience. So then yeah, people tend yeah, to go post on the core mod. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. Yeah. I was just thinking like I don't really get that because 'cause I'm I guess the reason I don't get that is because I'm always every discussion is is its own project right right but yeah i can see how that would be very frustrating for you <laughs> <laughs> that's that it's, sucks yeah that's uh it's I, that, like yeah, i said yeah. i've got i've got a solution now and it's i follow the same pattern you do which is that first week i dive in there it's so much fun to to get all mm -hmm. that feedback whenever i release a new project and and really digest it and then after that now we have I, we've had it for over a year now but now we've got a website dedicated to it and the people on there are all really nice because obviously they yeah they took the time to make an account on a separate site they're gonna yeah. they don't want to alienate themselves from it so that's that's the best part it, you, you just got to get someone that's that's all it takes to make people decent on the internet is just ask them to burn a few calories you know <laughs> just ask them to burn a few calories and if if they think what they're gonna say i mean i think i honestly i think captures is that the right word cap, cap yeah yeah for the, like the where they've got to answer that question or pick the cars 
I think that filters out so many assholes on the internet. Probably like it has to, right? Yeah. You gotta you gotta think if you're if you're an asshole and you typed out some asshole thing to say, you've gotta you have you gotta get through that captcha before you press enter and, and that asshole thing you just said gets on the internet. You know what I mean? And I think that <laughs> I think captcha inadvertently helps deal with that across the entirety of the internet. I still hate them though, because they're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm getting real good at figuring out which ones are cars, though. So. Oh yeah, I was I always get those ones wrong. They never. Are you are you supposed to are you supposed to click the the wheel if it's just like a if it's just a wheel inside? Yeah, the that square, counts as a car. Can... If it's just a chunk <laughs> of a car, that counts. Car. That counts. Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, those are funny. Pretty funny. The cat. I always get I get bit on the ones that are the the swirly letters and numbers and stuff. I apparently can't read properly. I'm a bot when it comes to those. <laughs> Oh man, those uh those ones aren't so bad. Well, you don't even see those very often anymore. I don't know. No, I think I, they're too. I, I think those to... are too easy to game by bots, so they don't bother with. Oh, them is anymore. that what it is? Yeah, yeah. they have to keep. I, they have I to keep changing them to like captcha. beat the software that's out there. So. I want to just give Captcha like fifty bucks and say never bother me again. I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, and then, I'd and then you'd slow. I don't slow... know Captcha.com is a thing. <laughs> you'd slowly devolve into an internet troll. <laughs> like no one yeah, can stop that, me. Yeah, that would be the problem. Is it make it too easy to to post shit post on? various forums right i gotta resist man i used to be such a troll when i was younger yeah like i used to uh i i it's just so much fun to get a rise out of people i understand why people do it i totally do well but, i think it's, uh, it's one it of those so lures anymore. of the and, and when the internet first came out when we were kids it was like the it was such a novelty it didn't feel real so then like being a troll or reading that like reading like reading 4chan in high school was hilarious like now it's like dark and creepy but uh, you know, back then when it was like, none of this matters, it's all just phony. It's just kind of funny, fake stuff. Then it was, uh, well, that's what makes it fun. It's because all the, all the young people come on, all, all, all like high school kids do think it's real. Cause that's just how they've always, they've always known it as real. Right. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's me trolling, trolling high school kids too much. <laughs> right. You're putting too much, putting it too sure much is them. fun. Though. It does have to, ch- well, it does have to change the, your mental space around the stuff when you grow up with it, where it's not a, no- it's not automatically a novelty. It's kind of just part of life. Whereas, you know, for us, when, as soon as it's introduced, it's a novelty. It's, uh, it's, it's new and it's totally different than anything we've had in our lives. So it's not real. And then, but if it's just been, if you've had it since the day you were born, uh, it's part of real life the whole time. Like they know, yeah, like the, that's, the that's kids scary all, think about it. they all know that there's a person behind the keyword on everybody that they're, they're being dicks to. Whereas like, I think you could make the argument that, you know, you might've, you might've not made that connection uh, when we were young and, and it first came out because it was totally new. Like uh, maybe not, maybe I'm giving us more credit cause I don't want to be, I don't want to feel guilty for the crappy stuff I posted in high school. But <laughs> <laughs> I think people are, are willfully, well, what's the word for that willfully incognizant or something like that they 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 don't want to think of people as people they don't want to think of it that way but yeah. uh i don't know i i i <laughs> I've, I've i've said some things on the internet thank god they were anonymous you know well that's one of the other reasons i am against the idea of everyone having to have a like a phone number tied to their stuff i think that anonymity, yeah, that the ability for anonymity is important because people need to have the chance to reinvent themselves. Like people can go through phases in life where they believe things <laughs> they don't believe anymore. And if you just like tie all of that crap for their entire lives to their, to them in perpetuity, then no one gets a chance to, to try yeah, again. Job interviews are going to be interesting with all the high school kids. Oh these man. Days. I, like, well, I think that's why having... Snapchat came up, became a thing. It was like, uh, they started recognizing like, Oh, maybe we need this stuff to not be permanent. Like, let me just, let me just make a shit post that disappears in 24 hours. Like, or that's uh, like that. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm glad I didn't have to try and search for it. I'm glad my stuff wasn't out on the internet at that point. Hey, I, I already made that mistake with some of my mods. I, uh, <laughs> I wish I, I got a few mods out there that I wish I hadn't made. Um, and uh, I have paid for them. I think I'm assuming I've paid for them, but uh, yeah, I made that mistake. I will not, I will not make that mistake again. Yeah. But uh, your, well, your stuff, your a, stuff looks very lesson. well. I mean, if you're talking about like any type of uh, uh, like mods that are especially exceptionally dirty or anything, I think your your mods are actually <laughs> some of the the most uh, what would the term be? Um, they're like they're very like your mods are super flattering to female warrior types. Like it's uh, they all they you know you <laughs> I don't, don't do, that one. You don't most of your mods to don't look fair, they don't look super slutty. Like they actually look like they're just like badass armor um for male and female sure I, I i mean that's 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 
that's the angle I would spin it at, or that's a good angle to spin it at. But that's still a, that's still spinning it. Let's <laughs> let's let's be real. They're 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 they were were they don't as far as I'm concerned they don't exist anymore. Uh-huh. Uh, they were just concepts drawn by uh, the kite and uh, made into mods. Yeah, and, yeah. That's that's all they were. They were. It's, it's not so much my ideas so much as <laughs> I mean really okay. Really, what it came down to is I enjoyed working with a concept artist. That was the best part about making those mods. Right. And I, the kite is a pretty pretty well known artist in in circles. Yeah. And to me, it was like, holy shit, this is great. It's a it's a concept artist. Right. That wants to work with me. That that has like that's like willing to draw stuff for me and and yeah, I'll draw I'll be drawing stuff for her, and that's that like that was the whole appeal of the whole thing. Right. And it was it was great. And it just it just sucks that uh, sort of the, the sort of of the times, the sort of the political climate of the times is such that you you can't really get away with that stuff anymore. You can't uh, you can't put out mm, explicitly sexual stuff like that. And I, I it think it just sucks that kind of. I, I think you can. You just have to be willing to deal with the fallout of it. Of that, like eventually you're going to get accused of. Well, something. that's just it. When <laughs> like, I was doing it, I wasn't thinking of it like that. Right, if right. I had thought, if I had been thinking of it like that. Right. I probably would not have done those outfits. Well, well, I probably still would have done them, but I wouldn't have released them. Or put them under a different name. Put them under a different name. Yeah. That's right. Right. Way to do it. But I mean, I'm looking at your stuff now, and like the uh, the children of Adam, like the chosen of Adam stuff, just looks like it looks like a just like a badass yeah, armor mod. It's not there's nothing, no sluty stuff going on badass. or anything. But I think your last I'm, I'm few, well, yeah. like pretty much most of your stuff that's still up on Nexus under your name is pretty. Uh, um well it's all everything up there is is pretty safe at this point it's not nothing that's nothing explicit at this point everything right everything is uh fully clothed so to say well i was gonna say it's more more than fully clothed it's it's very uh it's i i would say there's still some sluttier stuff in triple a games than what you've got going on here oh yeah well that's that's what i mean it's like i never i never felt bad making some of that older sort of sluttier stuff i never i never felt bad making it because it's like if i mean what was it Actually, all any any sort of fighting game, right? Like yeah. Oh, yeah, all the fighting like, games. It's, it's well, that's the thing the is text. there's like, there's an audience for them. There are a lot of people who actually enjoy that stuff. It's used everywhere in movies and magazines, so it's not like yeah, yeah. you should feel guilty about it. But there's just a, there's a contingent of people uh, uh, out there who want to make everyone's lives miserable um, for for breaking <laughs> their new religion and like. You know what? That's I like. That's the only way I can think of it because there's so many people that's, who are I, attacking it, like, for, for people's past, and it's like let people grow beyond it. So, like, I hope you don't ever get tagged for your old stuff if that's not what you're trying to identify yourself as now, because your your stuff. I, I, don't, I think I'm pretty. It's it's been long enough at this point that it, it it comes up every now and again, but for the most part, it's I've stopped getting messages about it on the Nexus, which means the general public has sort of maybe not forgotten about it, but they've gone elsewhere and they leave me alone about it. They've realized that I've moved on. Well, and but, I, uh, I, I, I say because I, I think most people, most people I know, most players talk about your stuff with reverence, and and even your your modern stuff, not your old stuff. Like we just talk about, you know, how amazing the weapons and armor mods you put out are. Like it just they look so. Well, damn that was the good. other thing too. Is like uh, I didn't I didn't just hide, I didn't I just get rid of the, uh, I mean they're 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 not deleted, they're hidden on the nexus. But I didn't I didn't just hide some of the uh the sluttier stuff. I hid like the the ballistic mask and a a bunch of other ones that were just honestly just so poorly made like, <laughs> I, I don't even i it's it's a uh, i just didn't want to go back and and deal with them like some of the some of my my oldest stuff like the cybernetics mod and the outfits mod um the original outfits mod mm-hmm. it's not really a specific outfit but uh the mashup it's my original mashups before i really started getting into it right but uh those are still up there because i went back and updated them whereas that, that ballistic mask mod which People, people really don't like that I hid that for some reason, but it was such a shitty mod. It was so poorly put together, <laughs> yeah. And it was the model was so terrible, and it was it was just awful. And I don't know why, I don't know why people like were so attached to that mod when there's so many better mods out there for that kind of thing. Yeah, I but, don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's some some people just but, don't want to remove stuff from their load order, or uh, who knows? It's it made their yeah, made I, their particular it, it character lo- look cool. It doesn't so. bother me, but it's like. I don't regret making any of those mods oh, that's good. because that's, you know, it's that growth from there that got me to where I can make, you know, the chosen of Adam outfit. That's like absolutely one of my, my favorite outfits that I've ever made. I think, I think the IEX is probably still my favorite as far as like, uh, 
unique outfits go because yeah. i mean iex suit is it's loosely based off of unused concept art from the original game uh-huh. original fallout 4 concept art but i mean it's literally just like a collar that's the only sing- distinguishing feature that really uh matches up with the the concept art but it's like i'm really proud of that outfit because it's uh your, most of your stuff that you have available now, it makes it makes me think like this is what would happen if the Fallout universe got to survive for another hundred years, where it was inventing new tech yeah, on yeah. top of theirs. Is kind of what your stuff reminds me of because it's like it's it seems like you said you don't like to do it as dirty as Bethesda does, but I think even beyond the dirtiness of it, it also seems like the next level of technology beyond what they were doing from the uh, 50s well, sci-fi. I just, I just think of it as filling in the gaps, you know? Like, yeah. It's not. I mean, I guess technically 76, I don't want to bring it back to 76, but technically 76 does fill that gap. Right. But let's just pretend 76 doesn't exist. So there's that huge 200 year gap Yeah. that really nothing, not, not much, there's not much lore there. Sure. And that's, that's what I like to try and fill in. Okay. Because there's lots of lore before the war Uh huh. with the vault tech and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's dubious whether or not Vault Tech caused the war, or China did, or something like that. It's it's all it's all very it's 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 all very gray, which is I'm sure intentional as far as the writers go at Bethesda. Yeah, uh, which is great. Yeah, I think and I think gray is perfect sort, for RPGs. Yeah, it's absolutely it's a it's a great that they've left it so gray, and then they've got the stuff after the after the vault started open. Well, after Fallout One, I guess would be no Fallout One takes. I don't really remember. I don't. I don't. I didn't play very much. It's been a long time since I touched one and two, um, but that whole like two hundred year gap, as far as I'm concerned, that's what I'm filling in. I want my mods to be stuff that sort of came along in that period, like the the recon outfit that I did for the Brotherhood. It's like old. It's like force fighter gear. Like you don't. You wouldn't realize it, but the the helmet for that mod mm-hmm. is based on a a forest fighters helmet it's, uh-huh, it's, yeah yeah you can i think you can I, I don't know if i have the model designation for it but it, it was it was like it's not an exact replica but it's pretty close you could definitely see the resemblance if you found the original image of it sure but like that sort of thing i can see the brotherhood of steel putting that together and making a uniform out of it because yeah. that's something there'd be a lot of and they'd, they'd be something to be able to standardize. But I love that Fallout's lore is sort of gray like that and that modders can just fill stuff in. And Skyrim, and I, I say, I shouldn't say Skyrim, Elder Scrolls right. is kind of in that same boat. But it's tough. I, I've, I've wanted to do an armor for Elder Scrolls for so long, but I don't know what I would do. Like, the best I could come up with is like some sort of like Eastern themed thing with Akavir. Right. But it's it's tough to come up with something like that because elder scrolls fills its own gaps at least as far as like you know the armor progression you know there's always every every game has a leather set of armor every game has a glass set of armor every game has an ebony set of armor and it's like those kinds of things it's hard to fill that in whereas fallout really lets modders go wild with it that's that's the best part about fallout yeah well, I think but that's that's definitely where I want to go next. Is I want I want to do I, I still am brainstorming all the time what I want to do with Skyrim. So that so you're looking to add more to Skyrim. Do you have more projects in the work for Fallout 4 then? Yeah, I do. I do. Actually, I, well, <laughs> I've been I've been playing Sekiro recent, recently, and I really want to do like a, some sort of wasteland samurai. You know ah, what I mean? Ah, cool. Uh, I'm thinking of like samurai armor looks like it doesn't it has a specific look to it it yeah. has a specific shape to it but not necessarily right a set style sure and I'm, I'm thinking like i imagine like rebar rebar armor you know what i mean like ah, that's yeah, style. Yeah. i couldn't tell you what the like uh arm guards made out of rebar would look great and you could shape them in a way that it kind of resembles that sort of eastern style of armor right that's right. why i want that's that's really where i want to go i'm still sort of brainstorming that one okay i might if i come up with something solid on it I might uh, I might drop what I'm doing now and just switch over to that full time. Oh wow! But it's one of those where that's that's sort of the process. It's like I'm always thinking of new stuff to do. Yeah. And that's definitely one of them. And then as soon as one of them just really pulls you in, you just attack it. Yeah, that's that's how that's how it goes. That's why the Archimedes took so long. It's, <laughs> well, you worked I, like and said, you did like, it all in Nifscope. That's a. I, I, well, that and I sort of like it was it was a long slow process. Yeah. Actually, the. Uh, the Archimedes actually started with the sword mod, the blades mod, because that was the blades mod is where I really started playing around with the animations and NIFS scope and really doing all sorts of weird stuff with it. So yeah. it's like, you got to figure that the Archimedes came together 
over a very long period of time, but very small increments. Okay. Sort of never, never all at once, except for the model and texture. Sure. So you were just shoot. Yeah, you said you were shooting with the, uh, you were using the cannon, the ion cannon with a janky placeholder weapon for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how that that's how that came together. But that's that's what I mean when it's like, like what I mean when I say like nothing. It's so hard to put a time reference on these sure. things because it's like everything is filled with lessons learned from previous projects and that sort of thing. Yeah. Now I'm you- sure I'm sure some settlements is the same way, right? Oh yeah, it's definitely like each each iteration is is better than the last. We learn new things, try new things, and uh, yeah, it definitely it definitely shows in there. Like the oldest, some of the stuff that's in the mod still needs to just be retired because it's been there's been like replacement <laughs> things added that are just miles better. But I just haven't bothered. I you know I I rarely remove things once I put them in the mod for various reasons. Yeah, it's tough like, to do that. Yeah, well, it's tough to do that, especially because it's like I mean, who cares about size limits anymore? You know. Yeah, I I, mean, I I always want to get rid of them just to get rid of clutter. Like I want to get rid of construction records for stuff that's not relevant anymore. Or, um, you know, I you can't like I can't delete forms obviously, but just like hiding them from the player feels like something oh, okay. I'd want to do. What you mean. Yeah, but especially with workshop stuff because it's all it's in their face and it's cluttering up their menu. Is that you know I'd like yeah, to yeah, remove yeah. it? But the same I, goes I even for the that. chem workbench. Like you said, you put the X on the front so it buries it at the bottom <laughs> to get out of the way. Well, I'm sure I've got a lot of stuff in that menu that could just doesn't need to be there, and it's just wasting space for people. And it's one more thing they got to click past. So that's the type of stuff that yeah, uh, the, the the workbench is such a it's such a. I mean, I originally did that with my first mod, or the cybernetics mod. Is I had my own workbench, and I realized this should, this is just not going to work if everyone's making their own workbench. Right, it's going to clutter up the settlements menu and i don't want to clutter that up because that's so it's such an important menu yeah that's uh, that's a, why i decided I, I, on i went with one workbench for everything for some settlements and it spawns little sub workbenches on it so that way i could do mm-hmm. i could do more things and have them more immersive but i i looked at like some of the uh, mods out there i think horizon's one of them where it's got like a dozen different workbenches and i was like that's i don't want to have to manage that i don't like i don't want to have to manage yeah. that as a developer to remember which one's got which oh, god <laughs> so yeah, I, I I've never I haven't jumped in the horizon. If I if I if I ever start up another another Fallout playthrough, uh, I will probably play it with that just because that that and obviously some settlements because I like I said I've, I've still never never really played with some settlements even though I I recognize it as like this this linchpin of the of the modding community that it is. But it's like I've never actually I haven't played Fallout Four since then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a- those are the two. Those are your mod and Horizon are the two mods that I want to. Uh, yeah, Horizon really I still haven't around. had a chance to play with yet, and it's it's on my now list. But I, I started doing the Let's Play for uh, YouTube so that I would actually take the time and play the game I'm developing for because I was like, I realized it had been like <laughs> well over a year since I'd actually played the game yeah, for fun. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to start losing touch and making bad decisions because I don't play the game, so I needed to get back into it. Because it's it sometimes can it, like like you said when you're talking about the Skyrim thing of remembering what that opening sequence is. Well, you have to remember majority of players do go through that every time, and so if you if you lose touch of the experience they're having with the experience that they're having, it can be harder to figure out how to integrate your own things and how to you know how to balance them or choose how they're how they should play in with things. Because I'm trying to always look at things from so many of us user perspective right from user yeah. perspective of the fact that the way we all tend to play these games is we build this giant mod order and we sit down with the intention of i'm gonna jack 300 hours into this character and like so then thinking about it from that perspective it changes a lot of my decisions on how i'm gonna do things and uh i just didn't want to forget that what that feels like so now i'm now that i'm doing this let's play i like horizons on my list of one <laughs> of the ones i'm gonna because i'm not gonna just do one i'm just gonna make this a regular thing i do it you know put in a couple hours every week and Horizon's on my list too of next next character, or maybe not next character, but one of the next couple of characters is going to be Horizon focused because uh, nobody puts in the amount of time developing gameplay yeah, mods he puts quite out like him. So much. Oh my god, there's so uh, much depth Zarthral? to that. I don't know how to say his name. I know it starts with a Z. Z- Zawinol? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he even has said it out loud. <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> that's one of the things about none of us ever talk to each other. It seems like we all type to each other. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has he been on the podcast? He has not. I'll, I will definitely invite him. One of the uh, uh, I have I, would... to, I have to figure out how his uh, if if he's English speaking or not because I it seems to me that all the people who do the most hardcore work all seem to be 
uh, foreign. <laughs> like it's a uh, like I've I've talked to them a lot on Nexus, but I I just have tr- if their person has not enough experience with English, it can be hard. Even if they mm-hmm. can speak English, keeping a conversation going for three hours or two hours is pretty di- is pretty difficult. If the person, yeah, I can I can see that being an issue. So, uh, oh yeah, no, there's no question that that guy's hard working as hell. Even just a text interview, I I would read it with him because he uh he must know all sorts of ins and outs of like. The, the balance of these games like i can't even oh yeah the, the other the other guy that i think about is a uh, ogre boss because he's the guy that runs i'm not sure if he runs it or if he's he's like the head developer of uh requiem for skyrim oh yeah and uh that guy is so active on their reddit uh-huh. like you ask any sort of mechanical question and he'll answer it and he just knows every system in and out and i think that's so cool yeah and uh i, ca- I can't imagine being able to do that because it's like these games are so complex. <laughs> they are. They really are. And it's no, it's no one. And that's why we forgive them for all the bugs. It's like, especially those of us who are modding. It's like, well, no wonder that fell apart. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think, I don't think most people forgive them for the bug. Well, most people forgive them for the bugs because they think they're funny, but I think develop mod, mod makers like us forgive them for the bugs because there's just no way you can get it right the first time with these games. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's so much going on behind the scenes. Yeah. People will never appreciate all the hard work that Bethesda puts into these That's things. That's why Automatron doesn't get enough credit if they saw yeah, the back end really system to it. Same with Nuka World. I think people ragged on Nuka World as it being like not mm-hmm. deep enough. Holy crap. There's so much in that mod. Like the There's a lot going on. There's so much interact there's it's like it's not quite New Vegas levels of interaction, but it's it's like that that same same deal though. There's well, and they've even integrated with the with all of those big DLCs. They integrate stuff into the Commonwealth with the random event system. So after you finish the yeah. DLC, they're set up to continue adding content. It's like whoa, like they did not have to do that, and they they went ahead and did it. So um, I give them mad props. Yeah, that's for that. why I think that's why I really do think those DLCs are uh, sort of you know love projects from developers. Like yeah, they'd have to be because they're so well done. Yeah, they're so well done. Well, and I, I, they're better than the base game. I always, I always question when. So I, I tend to not put any DLC requirements on any of my mods, and so far I think I've only had to do it to one mod that was actually a community pack mod that I manage uh, that has a requirement for one. But I tend to not do it because I know there's a lot of people who don't have them. But I would think that at this point, if you're still playing these games, like if you're still playing Skyrim or still playing Fallout Four, why haven't you picked up the DLC? Like the. I mean, they're out there. They're out there. So people were complaining about the Archimedes. Right, they right. It just seems it seems on. odd that it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna play this game for two and a half years, that at some point, like when it went on sale, wouldn't you have grabbed them? Yeah, or like, if you just bought it recently, why didn't you buy all the DLC? Right. <laughs> just buy everything. What are you doing? Right. Like it's. I mean, at one point, I picked up Fallout Four plus all the DLC. I bought another copy for my second computer so I could develop on both of them. And it was like thirty bucks, like for everything. Yeah, it's it's nothing. So it was just it's just odd to me that at this point people still haven't picked all of them up, and that there would be people complaining. I mean, maybe it's a principle thing. Maybe there are people out there who are just I like, I refuse to spend like sixty dollars is is what I spent How on the game. They? I will never spend another penny on it. Um, and I kind of felt that way at, when they switched to DLC. Do you, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think based on the t- times you've been mentioning, you're old enough to have lived through the glory times when we used to get expansion packs instead of DLC. Oh yeah, yeah. Where it was like well, that's, they're the same thing. They're, it just changed the name. Right, but they were big. The they were DLC bigger. They were they were bigger then. It was like an expansion would be like Far Harbor, uh, and then DLC are like the uh, workshop kits. And so like the, you. Would, okay, well, you, this is this is weird to me because you you didn't play Oblivion, but. Um, Shivering Isles was the big expansion for the Shivering Isles was and it was they I'm pretty sure they called that an expansion. Okay. Even though that was Oblivion and that's the advent of Horse Armor DLC. Right, right. They still called they still called Shivering Isles an expansion. Okay. And to me like I've never understood the difference in the nomenclature because it's like they're the same I it, to me it's just I I think it has must have something to do with consoles. Is the only thing I could think. Maybe. I mean it was, all, that well, was, it was I think time. it was once the internet became ubiquitous like once everyone had access to it because before yeah, like it was I, expansions before that when it was you had to go you had to be on the store shelf and you had to know that you you required to have the original game to have it that would be my yeah, ex- yeah. expectation like because dlc is downloadable content so before everybody yeah you're right that is because like I back then i wouldn't like i had a dial-up connection so downloading an expansion would not have been realistic to ever do um but downloading horse armor would have been possible back then so uh <laughs> But yeah, the, to me, the yeah, DLC, never, I, the switch to DLC, me, but... what that represented to me was microtransactions, essentially. Now they're free to sell smaller, crappier chunks of game. 
instead of having to put something like they had to at least get up to half the value of the original game. It was always that expansion packs cost $30 versus the 60 for the original game. So they had to put in enough in those to make it worth that much value. And so they, they tended to be, I always felt expansion packs back in the day were way deeper than the average DLC is today. And like, but okay. But that's just it though. Like I'm still, I'm still comparing everything. Well, I, I think of, I think I came around at the end of expansions. Like yeah, we're talking about age or whatever. Right, right. Like, uh, I came around like when I think of an expansion, I think of Shivering Isles, Oblivion. Okay. And then when I think of DLC, I think of you know Far Harbor. Far Harbor and Shivering Isles are pretty comparable. Oh, okay. So if you're talking goes. only Bethesda games, yeah, they I think they do great. I'm not talking about Bethesda. I'm talking about the gaming industry as a yeah, whole. Okay, maybe we're talking about. So like yeah. most games, when they say they've got DLC, you get you know maybe. A, couple hours of content for 10 bucks and it's like i remember when it was it was always for 30 dollars you get another 100 hours of content so uh, i think bethesda still does it mostly right and like they they put in they put out two or three really good chunks of content and then they have a couple of little tiny ones um that's just how warped my sense of reality is like i've I've been raised on bethesda games (laughs) no they've been good to me so i've never had a problem with the idea of dlc oh yeah except for horse armor except Except for for one thing but i never bought the horse armor. (laughs) you didn't get suckered into that i wonder how many people actually did did suckered into that i wonder how many people actually did buy that to where it it drew up such an outrage that's one of those things i remember them talking i remember someone saying that it still gets bought as a meme every now and again which i can understand oh you imagine like that would be a great. That Xbox. would be a great funny gift to give people on uh, <laughs> a little a little gift card with right, the horse armor. With the horse armor here, real horse armor redemption sure they, code. They, it's, <laughs> it's probably it's probably on a digital storefront somewhere, somewhere <laughs> buried in Xbox Live or something. Yeah, oh man. it's probably still out there. Yeah, I think Oblivion was on Xbox. Yeah, no, def- yeah, 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 it definitely was. That's where I had picked it up because I always Morrowind was on Xbox. For for whatever reason, to this day, I still like owning a console. I don't know why, and I always play game. I always play. I didn't do it for 76, but um, up till then, I had played every Bethesda game for the first time on Xbox, and then I go play it on PC. Really? Don't know why I still wow, do that. that's brave. I, I think it's a matter of, it's my one, it's the only way I will get myself away from the computer, is if I have to go sit in the living room. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes I, I, if I, especially now that I'm into the creation engine, uh, it's a it's a miracle to me that I'm able to do this. If it was, I think if it wasn't for the let's play, or the fact that I'm ma- trying to make entertaining content, I don't think I would even have committed to the idea of trying to play the damn game because I sit down at my computer and my itch is open X edit or open creation kit, not open a game. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that, but I don't know. I've never. It's been a long time since I owned a console. I I have, I have thought about getting a console just so I could test Xbox mods. Right. Because I feel, I feel kind of bad putting those out there without any testing at all. Because <laughs> the comments are all useless on Bethnet too. Because you yeah. can't really. I mean, those people aren't reporting bugs. So far, the so, I have not. Aside work. from like just the fact that the system can't handle as much, so that's something we have to be wary of when we're designing the scripts for the Sims element stuff. The only other issue usually people have on Xbox is the textures. If you fail to compre- let the CK recompress them for Xbox, they don't work. Other than that, I can't think yeah, of any yeah. issues you'd have to deal with separate. It runs pretty. I mean like all consoles are essentially just pcs with different uh yeah at this point yeah they've just got a different skin yeah, actually since xbox xbox 360 or something like that, they're basically just little mini pcs right yeah i don't know i don't i don't uh i thought the, the only thing that i could see me getting a console for is uh what do you call that game i want i want to i want a playstation 4 for bloodborne because yeah yeah really ps4 like has got games. a lot of amazing exclusives on it i i love and hate love and hate playstation because they do have great games but they don't let them go anywhere else <laughs> right well they're finally breaking on their online with thanks to Fortnite, they're finally cracking on the cross play so um maybe that's a yeah they still have, they still don't do ps4 mods which i think is weird but yeah that's right i don't know I, 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 my my theory on that is that sony has some sort of sort of proprietary like sound format or or texture format that in order to convert to them, them to, either. you would need this plugin. They won't let the general users have. That's my assumption. It was some disagreement like that, and then Bethesda's like, "All right, well, if we can't do textures, like that's going to be most of the mods. So, like, let's not bother." Some guys in a suit somewhere had a meeting and yeah. said no, and that's the end of it for all mod users everywhere. Right. But who knows? We'll, we'll see what it goes on the because they. I mean, they kind of won the console war there between their exclusives and um, the. I well, remember Xbox so made like this any... big snafu of they announced that their games were all going to be DRM checked, 
when it was first announced, when the Xbox One was announced, it was going to be an on, uh-huh. always online console, and that like destroyed can, them yeah. right right up before they even released. And then Sony followed their. I remember this really well because I was still following console a lot. And Sony did their press conference the next day, and were like, "No DRM." Like you could tell they changed their they changed their thing to take advantage of the fact that Xbox got reamed out for for their announcement. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. How, I can see that being a thing, but it's like, um, yeah. I don't know. The other thing they did is like everything that's on Xbox is on PC too. So this, it's it's tough to like justify an Xbox these days. Yeah. Well, I think Microsoft's finally realizing they need to just capitalize on that. It's like, wait a second, we have the biggest, like outside of mobile, there are no more users than are on Windows. Especially now that they've standardized everything and they've discontinued all their old platforms. Like most of the world is on Windows 10. So yeah, like that's a big ingrained audience. Like, if you just look at the minimum specs for Windows 10, if that becomes your console specs, then, hey, all the games that can work on Windows 10. So, I don't know. That's That, to me, seems like that's their that's where they need to be pushing. It's just embrace the PC market. And stop with the console nonsense. Because that's cost them a lot of money to develop, and then they've got to market it all. You don't have to market Windows. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Like, the, um, the whole Windows thing is like a... It's, it's, I don't know. It's it's a. I, I I yeah. I don't I don't hate I don't hate Microsoft like most people do. I guess I would, this is the way I would say it. They've they've been pretty good. It's like it's just we we, we got onto this whole tangent because uh, we were talking about PlayStation exclusives. Yeah. Actually, that's a that's another one we could talk about is the uh, the whole Steam thing, the whole Steam versus. Oh yeah, I keep, so thing. yeah, I've gotten into into it about this with some people. Um, so my I I tried to argue for the the anti monopoly factor of like Steam needed needs some competition and then everybody correctly pointed out to me that the Epic has been shady and like the problem with their their method is it's it's hurting players in the short term, um, but I just like I'm like this that's going to be temporary like they're they're only going to be able to afford to buy so many exclusives and then that will go away, um, and once they have a deep enough pool of users they won't need to play that game anymore so I have those, in the short term that doesn't matter what to me I look at it as they are for they are going to force Steam to change some policies and give developers more money, because there's a reason that all of these big publishers now have their own launchers. Like there's a reason that Bethesda didn't want to release 76 on Steam initially. It was like they the the cut that they were being offered were it was like all right, it's just cheaper for us to have our own launcher. Like this makes more sense. Um, but I but I would ar- I'd like to see something come of that. Of what? Of of Steam actually like. Oh, of you actually nicer, doing something? At the yeah, same yeah, time, yeah. At the same at the same time, I mean, as a user, I don't think we're gonna see cheaper prices from any of them. <laughs> right. It's not gonna come. That's, nice. It's not gonna come to us. Like we're not gonna save any money. No, but I, I think it's like us, it, you. The the way it would work out is long term. If developers' prices are less, then you will see uh, more games in the middle tier that can be higher quality. So. The the AAA games are gonna really like if they get a bonus like if they get a if they get ten percent savings on the cut that's just gonna go in their pockets they're not gonna like give that to us in any way but if no of course not. if a small development house suddenly is able to make ten percent more on their on their sales they can put that many more hours into the games so like I think it's at the top end it doesn't make it doesn't make a difference but I think in the indie and middle scene I think it does matter a lot that the cut yeah I, I'm hoping for that as well I'm hoping that we uh. We see we see more of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm hoping we see more indie games. I don't know. I, I, I say that, but I, I can't remember the last time I played an indie. Game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to. Think, uh, I'd I'd like to see that as well. But at the same time, I I, I don't care. I'm a user. I just I'll, I'll give them my I'll give whoever 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 wants my my sixty dollars can have it as long as it's convenient. And so far, Steam is the one that's most convenient. Right. Although that 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 thing with the Epic launcher like scanning steam to see what you have yeah that's terrifying right uh, that's that's, some, that's the only reason yeah well the, that is one reason i probably will never use an epic launcher but other than that i totally want steam to have more competition yeah well i mean i like i didn't even, I, don't, I don't mind the bethesda at thing. that point it was like i've already got it installed and i'm not i've been i've been like snooped on by i've been voluntarily getting snooped on by youtube and gmail because like you basically give them free access to all of your everything you click on so like i'm already used to that so what do I care? Okay, Epic, yeah. Epic took my info too. Whatever, everybody's already got it out there, um, and like maybe that's a dumb way to look at things. And and you know, it's, at some <laughs> point you've got to stop and put your foot down and be like, all right, enough companies. Like we need some privacy. But 
uh, I, I've, I've like resigned to the fact that there's everybody's already got my info out there, especially with these open authorization programs that are available. So like this is why Facebook keeps getting in trouble is because they've got all these programs that people can sign up to get access to data from users. And it's like they, they haven't been doing a good enough job of vetting the people who have access to it. And so who knows how many people have our information already. So like if somebody knows what games I have, I, that's not a big deal to me. But I've been told that the Epic Store stuff is worse than that, is that there's uh, really? there's more going on to that. I haven't followed it up because it was like, well, I already had yeah. Epic Store. I've had Epic Store installed since Fortnite came out to try Fortnite. So I'm screwed. Like, there's nothing to do about it. Uh, but I want to play <laughs> Outer Worlds really badly. So I'll buy it wherever it is. Is kind of how I'm well, kind of how I'm looking at it from a I'm, player I'm, perspective. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too worried about that. I don't know. It's one of those where it's like I think. I think uh, the first thing you said. I think. I think they'll run out of money eventually. I mean, what the the real, the real thing we're all looking, waiting to see is will that Fortnite audience stick around? You know. Right. Which. Because that's what they're. That's what they're riding on. That's. Yeah. You know, they they're certainly making a lot of money with Fortnite, but it's going to come down to, will those Fortnite players stick around in five, ten years when they're, all grown up. Because they're, they're, they really are the Fortnite players really are young, yeah. Um, and if they stick around, then I think that's when Steam will actually start to feel the hurt. But I don't think I don't think Steam feels the hurt from anyone but them, unfortunately. Yeah. I would like I said I would love, I would love there to be more competition for Steam, but yeah, it's it's just it's just gonna come down to that Fortnite audience, which seems so odd to be like beholden <laughs> to this one game, right? Well, like it's, and, and it's, their I, I, and their reign, I think, is is uh, tenuous because it it drives heavily on the Twitch, and those people can clearly be bought out. So then it's like, yeah, yeah, Apex sort of sort of took them down a notch, and it's sort of mind blowing how fast that happened. Yeah, well, and then is that gonna just be a flash in a pan? Is that gonna go away as well? Like, is that just the that's just the game of the week, and people will get sick of it, or? Is that actually going to threaten to dethrone or even just open up the floodgates of, all right, now every game knows they need to basically buy off all of those Twitch users to make sure they play it. And then is that going to become a thing where then certain of the, you know, the high end ones secretly take a payment. So for example, like imagine Ninja then gets a, suddenly gets a secret salary from Epic permanently. <laughs> and then he claims instead that I will never take a salary from a game. I will only play my favorite game. And in the meantime, he's secretly being paid a ton of money. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that could start to occur. I want to, I want to take the positive spin on that. <laughs> I'm gonna say, not the conspiracy theorist. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to take the conspiracy theorist. Cause you know, you covered it pretty well. There. I, <laughs> I, if I was going to agree, if I was going to, if I was going to go along with that, I would, I would agree with you, but I'm going to take the positive spin on this one. Okay. I want to see, I want to see YouTubers and and Twitch streamers paid so much that they're developing their own games. Ah, they're okay. dictating what they want to see in games. I think that'd be a cool twist. That's my positive outlook. I've actually, I've actually heard that that was done going. for um, Apex, as they brought on a few Twitch streamers to help them develop some of the last leg, like some of the balance and uh, some of the streamability factor of like you know what's going to be entertainment that. that's for obviously been a good users. thing for them. Well, I mean, I've, any amount of any like it, all, that whole game's success rides on them paying people to play it, which obviously works. But again, I have no problem. I don't. I don't care that YouTubers or whatever are are pay, are well paid, right? Because they're not they're not dudes in suits just you know riding the numbers. When you ride the numbers, you end up with things like uh, you know Hollywood movies. Hollywood <laughs> movies are so so shit now. Jesus Christ. Uh, marvel movies and superhero cape shit whatever you want to call it um they're so garbage they're so formulaic oh that's it those like, are the only I movies see, i still I watch anymore because i just don't have enough time I, for I, movies I, I watch them too i'm yeah. talking shit about it but i'm still gonna i'm still watching no them. i get you I'm i get you you can terrible. you can still it's i mean it's the same thing with like if you look at we could say the same thing about bethesda games they're very formulaic and follow the same pattern but we still keep uh sucking them down with micro uh you know incremental improvement on them i think the same thing happens to the movies is they, well, they get a formula that works I, see, and they just keep milking think, that I cow i don't think there's very much in, incremental improvement with the movies i think there is with the video games that's i think that's this fair. is really good about i think i think if you put skyrim in fallout 4's engine it would be noticeably better mm -hmm. you know what i mean like there's they're they're changing it up enough if you or if you probably if you backported features from fallout 4 which right. actually you kind of we kind of have at this point. Um, oh yeah, I agree. They hundred percent add, could, and they they're, they're notable improvements to the to the systems. So, 
but eventually, but that, eventually, yeah, it will get like, to a cap, though. I would think. I think eventually you get to a point where it's where it's uh, excessively immersive, and then it's like, like, all right, I, I, like I feel like Red Dead Redemption oh, Two did that, where it was like, all right, you guys, you guys took it too far. I don't want to do all this little micro. So like, I don't want to clean my gun. I don't want to have to take a bath. Like this is, this is too much. <laughs> That's a, uh, I no, I love that shit. I love that. <laughs> That's you. That's you're you're talking to the wrong guy if you don't like that. I play the soccer games too, the uh, Call of Chernobyl and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love the how crazy the mods are for those games. Well, I think, I'll... but that's kind of a that's such a it's such a weird game. It's it's a weird game to get into because it's so. Uh, the 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 community is almost entirely Russian. Okay, you know what I mean. Sure. Like this, imagine if Fallout mods were all in Japanese and you were trying to get into them. You know, like if, if every modder was M150, right? Like you'd see all this amazing stuff, but you couldn't you couldn't decipher it because you don't speak Japanese. And you, <laughs> you can't enjoy it. That's kind of what Stalker is. Okay, all the best stuff is only in Russian, and it's it's kind of like that kind of immersion where literally cleaning your gun or whatever. Like I I love that kind of thing. Yeah, it gets tedious after a while, but. I love that that exists. So there was a, there was a game that did that. It was a it was an indie game. Was, I think it was called Receiver. Okay. Did you ever hear about that? I have one? not. No. It's basically it's 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 a really basic FPS game where you're uh, you're you're just it's just you're managing a gun in your hands, you know, and you can't just fire the gun. You have to if you empty the if you empty the magazine, you have to pull the magazine out yourself. Oh. There's a there's a, a key for that. Okay. You have to grab a new magazine off your belt, put a new magazine in. You have to pull the slide. You have to reset the hammer. Oh man! And then, and then, and only then, you can fire the gun again. And it's that sounds like trying to play quap. Like no thanks. Yeah, that's that's basically <laughs> what it is. But it's that kind of thing. That's that's what I'm into. I love that kind of thing. Oh so, yeah. So yeah, so that that type of stuff to me is super novel. Like it's fun. It's I I could do it one time to be like, oh wow, that's cool that they animated all that and they put all that in, and they're like, all right, I'm bored of it already. I mean, I I feel like that way with survival niche, games you know? already. Like I'm I'm like I don't want to I don't want to have to push the eat button. I especially don't want to have to open my inventory and choose food. Like those uh that me- yeah. I, I don't mind the mechanic of having to watch extra meters. Like I love RTSs. I like managing a bunch of things. I just don't want to have to do the little motions. Like I, I like that stuff to well, be I, I just mean as automated more as than possible. anything that it's like it's it's like a niche. Like th- that niche exists and that's what I, we were we were talking earlier about the like streamer like I want to see streamers developing their own games. Yeah. Streamers exist because they fill a niche, right? Sure. You know, Ninja Ninja appeals to I, I like you know twelve year olds or whatever. I don't I don't know if that's true. I've not, honestly never watched Ninja's stream, but I imagine he appeals to twelve year olds because he's got silly hair and he talks real loud and he probably says funny things that twelve year olds enjoy. And he plays Fortnite, which they all play. So yeah. it's it's that it's filling that niche. And I I want to see games development in the hands of those people. Okay, because there's a lot of niche streamers out there. I mean, you you go to Twitch and like you scroll down on the the you scroll down on the, the, the all games menu uh-huh. and you know, there's a thousand people out there watching, you know, somebody play some random game that you maybe never heard of. Right. And that streamer is doing, you know, making a living off of that because they're filling a niche. I want to see game developers going after those same niches. Sure. And, you know, we were just talking about the super immersive, you know, gun cleaning niche and that niche exists. Sure. And I'd love to see more things. I that's, that's what, that's the positive spin I'm thinking. Okay. I want to see more games marketed through streamers that way because I want I want streamers dictating. Right. I want the right. people who actually play the games dictating how games are made, and I think I think that's what that's the positive thing that we can we can see happening with the way I, sort of games marketing and all these storefronts is going. Yeah. Well, I would say that it's it's happening already, just not directly. I would say that there's no way that the game, the at least the AAA level titles, but not even just AAA, even indie developers aren't paying attention to those numbers and being like, okay, well, this is free market research. I can see this person has a giant audience or this game has a giant audience on Twitch and it's like you know came out of nowhere like the, like what are the mechanics about that that people are loving to watch and just embracing those i would th- i would think that that's the same like twitch is is having that happen already and that it's influencing the types of games that are getting made no oh, that's for sure so that's What's the, uh, I, I would think that's the, the same thing the with twi- the Twitch integration too. Right, the Twitch oh man i've been wanting to play with twitch integration so bad i i, I think i actually am positive and somebody told me that someone has already done this, but I haven't seen it posted anywhere, so I don't know what it's called. But you should be able to integrate Twitch with uh, Fallout 4 through F4SE. 
so that people could like make things <laughs> yeah, happen in your game. Yeah, like people could trigger enemies to spawn on you or um you know, just make things happen in your game. It should be totally feasible. And I don't know why that's... Oh, that would be so much fun. Right. That seems so cool. That seems like that should be... There should be a whole genre of games around that where people could tip to make things happen to you in the game. Get a get a patent on that or something. <laughs> that's, that's, that. uh, that's, a, that's a brilliant idea, actually. What? Well, Having a... Because, again, that's, I think that's one of the problems but that's the games have is nobody streams Bethesda games. You ever noticed that? Like, yeah, I think part of it is I think it's first boring. Week, maybe? I think it's boring to yeah, watch. Yeah, it is. It's boring. It's not fun to, to watch people make decisions about dialogue trees. So the... And everyone has their own experience. Like, right. I don't want to see... Like, this is just me personally. I don't want to see some schlub play Skyrim. I don't want to see their right. Dragonborn doing some bullshit. I want to be my Dragonborn doing some... Well, not the Dragonborn. Right. You know what I mean. Well, and that maybe um, that's why they wanted 76. They want a streamable game. They want something... Because that has... I think that's that's probably a pretty good reason that they, they went into it. It just sucks the game. <laughs> the game didn't turn out so well. <laughs> but... Uh, I, I, uh, I I think they definitely... God, that's so cool. That's that's such a great idea. Have it integrate with the settlement system. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's, could, that's brilliant. You could trigger, trigger raids on the settlement... Uh, <laughs> for x amount of dollars or maybe donate donate materials like oh i'm short on circuitry anybody got 99 <laughs> 99 cents uh, for me to buy me 100 wood or you know whatever uh, that's getting a little that's getting a little penny pinching but <laughs> i uh, i see what you mean right, i'm just i'm just thinking of random things but there's so much anything that can be triggered in a game can be done through the twitch api so yeah, I don't. I don't know how the. I've never looked at the Twitch API, but I, well, I don't know enough coding or programming or. Well, whatever the way the way be. I had dis- I discussed this with uh, briefly with uh, C Dante about how you might go about it, and he said that uh, the uh, F4SE can read from text files, and I said, could I set it up to automatically read yeah. from a directory, just like auto read every time a file appeared? And he's like, yeah. Well, then it's like, okay, great. Then I can just make the Twitch API create a text file with the script I need it to run that drops into that directory, and then F4SE will just be auto reading it. So it's like that's easy. That's that would take no time at all to set up. Um, that would be so. Yeah, that would be. That would be. I don't know. I've never actually done anything with F four C. Can you believe that? I I've never done anything with. I it. don't blame you never for thought. not doing anything, and I think everybody on Xbox <laughs> is thankful you don't. That's like I don't do it because oh, I want to make sure true. I'm supporting this Xbox crowd because there are a lot of people, like we said, who play on Xbox, and they would just be kind of left. And I'm I'm afraid that once I tasted that power, I wouldn't want to give it up. So then. <laughs> Sorry, That's Xboxers. True. I'm you, I'm forever you, an F4C scripter now. That would be bad news. When you go through the uh, the CK's documentation, the, the creationkit.com or whatever whatever that website is, you see all the F the, all the uh, SKSE stuff yeah. that, that can be done. And you're like, oh, none of that's available to me. Right? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh that that would be. I can, I can see getting used to that. It's the same reason I haven't gone back to mod Skyrim. Like people have asked me, like, are you gonna ever go mod Skyrim again? Um, and it's like, I don't think I could. I think I would, I'm so used to having all these certain tools available. And then it would be, cause the way I, the way I tend to mod, cause I do a lot of systems is I come up with an idea on paper and then I can instantly put together like all of the necessary pieces of the CK that would have to be put into place to make use of that. Well, that tool set would fall apart with Skyrim because they're, they have a lot of things that just aren't available. So, or, and like even just functions, just a lot of the, the papyrus functions aren't available in, in Skyrim. So yeah, yeah. This, they added a lot with Fallout 4. So going back to that sounds tough. So then I, I imagine the same thing would happen if I, if I opened Pandora's box with, with the script extender. <laughs> so It would be fun though. I'm sure it would That's, be. Uh, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's some, there's some to, insane uh, mods really that have come out with the script that, extender though. for some of the older games. Like, I mean, New Vegas has like a full uh uh car physics engine somebody integrated like they took some third party physics engine integrated it through F4SE to tie into the game so that now it has really well done vehicles in it it's like that's that's pretty amazing that that's the type of sort of that's the type of thing you can do with the script extender so that's yeah uh, new, people that mod new vegas are nuts <laughs> Can I say that? That's, that's I'm not I no, I think they would all. I think even those. I, I think the modders like, themselves would agree with you that they're nuts because they've been. Put- yeah, they, I think they all agree. <laughs> people, that, people really love that Fallout. I get so many people telling me to to make stuff for seventy for not seventy six. Make stuff for New Vegas. It's 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 mind blowing to me. Like, I think I played New Vegas. I I probably played it the least of all Fallout games. Oh really? All, all Fallout, all others. Yeah, I really never put very much time into it. I couldn't tell you why though. Hmm. I had that same that same problem the first when it first came out. I remember uh, being a little disappointed with it for some reason. But then after, and then when I played it through the second time a couple years later, I was like, I don't know what the hell I was talking about. This game's amazing. 
it's a uh, it's a very <laughs> it's a very very good game. I see why people like it, and I think that's why everyone's hyped about Outer Worlds and why that was kind of the that seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back for the epic thing. Before I know people were pissed about it before then from other games, but that one really seemed to rile people up. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, I know people really like that uh, that New Vegas thing. It's just it's just one of those where it's like um, I don't think um, I don't know. I, I really wish I, I think I just had other things going on. You know what it might have been? Getting going way back here in the conversation is it might have been I wasn't in, I was into WoW at the time. Ah okay, that could be I think possible. that might have been it, and I was probably going real hard at WoW yeah. when Fallout seventy six came out, and I just never New went Vegas. back to it. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I keep I keep saying seventy six. Yeah. I got it on my mind. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Thank right. you for the correction. Um, yeah, it must have been something like that. But yeah, people. Those are those are the most rabid fans there are. I I uh, I'm I'm glad they're there. You know. Yeah. You know that's that's that niche thing that I'm talking about. I'm glad that niche exists. Right. Well, I mean, we we and kind of are. We kind of all are a niche. That. Anybody who plays Bethesda games way after they come out is is a niche. It's a big niche. Like there's a lot of people. That, I think it's too many. It's too many people to to call it a niche. I of people. If you look at the number the of game. people, like, look at your most popular mod and, and think about how many people have downloaded it. That's that's pretty much. That's going to be around the average size of the audience that continues to play the game today. So it, probably a hundred thousand people are playing. Like that's pretty small when you consider how many gamers there are now. It's not like. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. There are just. Probably, I, I mean, I, I have no idea what the number of gamers are there, but I know it's a massive, it's a yeah. massive market because the video games, video games are worth more than the film industry now. It's a pretty mainstream thing to be, to be. Yeah, gaming. that was, that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, that's uh, yeah, it's it. Well, the whole, yeah, it, you you think about it like the way games make money. Mm-hmm. I can see that being sort of why they're so, so big, whereas. Yeah, I guess you yeah, can't movies, charge you can't know, charge for a I microtransaction was... in the middle of a film. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess you could, but it's just one of those where it's uh, the semantics of that. It's uh, the uh, not the the how you would how you would figure that, but it hasn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah, I uh, know they'll have they'll just start having pop ups on the side of the, the big. Screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Got to monetize it. Right, right. Or it'll be once everyone can wear VR goggles in the theater, like when that becomes a thing, then it can be you can pay to stop the ads from coming up in the middle of your version. <laughs> uh, this VR experience brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> oh man! Well, this has been awesome talking with you. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's I, loads of fun. I think I could continue for hours more, but uh, the uh, the midnight approaches very soon here, so. I want to. Oh, yeah. uh, oh well, you, you're giving away your location there. I'm pretty sure you said Florida too. Earlier, so. <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're coming up close on that. But I also, it's funny. I joked about us going into hour four. We are actually are in the middle of hour four now. So this is my officially longest podcast yet. So. Oh yeah, there you go. It's, it's it was loads of fun. I, I apologize if I rambled a bit. I, I you, tend to do that. You, you know, no one can ramble as much as me. My viewers all know that. So don't worry about it. I think that's a, it's almost it's almost a meme to me that how many people uh, who do Twitch streaming and Fallout or not Fallout uh, YouTube videos let's plays everybody thinks of themselves as a rambler. It seems to be a common thing. I don't think that many people are. Yeah. Or or it's maybe it's I just enjoy listening to people ramble sometimes. Like most of the podcasts I listen okay, to are people that's... just kind of going off about whatever and no no structure. Yeah yeah. <laughs> It's, it's part of the it's well it's part of why it works it's like the whole the whole podcast i was i i, I mentioned earlier i listened to joe rogan he's you know he's actually the only regular podcast i really listen to anymore but it's like he's he, if you really think about it joe rogan's like the dumbest dude in the world. <laughs> but god god you love to listen to him though right he's got he has amazing guests on it's hard not like i think a lot of people listen to him just from the if you weren't before it's like well he who gets to sit down with elon musk like nobody does that yeah, it's yeah bizarre exactly. he's a he has he has all the best guests. That's that's really the reason to listen to him. But he's it's that that whole that whole like atmosphere is such a hilarious thing to me because it's like when I mean, you really yeah like I'm, I don't mean I'm I'm not trying to talk shit about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's awesome. I love Joe Rogan. Always have. Uh, except for when he did the Man Show, he was really dumb there. But <laughs> everything else, <laughs> everything else he's done was out of the park. I watched Fear Factor for years, man. Um, but yeah, it's just like the that that whole formula is so is so perfected by him and his his guests. Well, yeah, just him, and uh, he makes anyone sound interesting. Yeah, 
and you do pretty good at that because I hopefully you're making me sound interesting. Oh, hope, yeah. I don't think I, I, I think I think you did that <laughs> yourself. And people, I, like I said, people are going to be uh, are just excited to hear about how someone like your mind works and how you approach these projects because we're really blown away by them. And it seems like you're an industry professional and you're saying, nope, just just working a day job and this is this is my night thing. Like that's I think people. It's I think it's also in, it's motivating and inspiring for people to hear who are thinking I about so. getting into it of blank, like, Hey, all of us who do this, people. like none of us are industry pros. We just, we just wanted to try it. And then it got addictive. And then we started doing bigger and bigger things. And now you have what you have from us. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I really do hope this doesn't like my mods. That's, that's always the one thing I'm, I'm always, uh, I'm always happy to hear about when I get feedback from people. If, if you're sending me feedback and you're telling me, I'm usually pretty happy to help with the uh, problems people have with their own modding, but like it's, it makes me so happy that other people are actually modding. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that's. Well, I, as you've uh, done earlier, so at, when you inspired. earlier did that ad for ZBrush, I think you, it's, you, you <laughs> yeah. inspired a lot of people to go download that. So hopefully some more people will. They, they have a trial version, by the <laughs> way, a trial version that I think has all the features. Has all the features. Should, uh, it's full, full you, feature trial. If you want to, if you full people, if people want to get into that, that's, that's a fully featured trial. That is absolutely, it, it's like a month long trial. I uh, hear I am plugging it again. It's like a month long <laughs> trial, but a month is really all you need to, to really get a feel for it. If you really, in, really start enjoy messing with it. Cause it's, it's definitely, it's a toy. It's a toy. Yeah. Don't think of it as like a professional program. Think of it as a toy and that's what it does. It's loads of fun. Have you ever, ZBrush. have you ever written tutorials? I've never written a tutorial because I'm afraid that people will ask me questions. About <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, I was just thinking that if if you, as a passionate person about ZBrush, did a tutorial for it, just maybe something, here's some basics, and then here's how you export your files to then use with the Rizzlers system for making a weapon, you, you, could, you could inspire a whole generation of uh, Nero copycats to try and make cool weapons. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like everything... What, what do, I would feel guilty doing that because... Like I mentioned Matt Thorpe earlier, uh -huh. the guy that uh, he's his tutorial that I learned a lot of ZBrush on, like those tutorials are out there. And I, hell, I've, I've direct people towards Gumroad all the time. Sure. I'm, I, I, I didn't go on my last project, but Gumroad isn't is like it started out as like a actually, I don't know how it started, out, but it's, <laughs> it's just such a great system. I don't know that much. But I'm, I'm, I'm not a historian. Jesus. Um, go to the Wayback Machine. It's such a. Yeah, it's it's a, it's such a great system for getting that stuff out there, and you know, people that get inspired to mod, you know, go on Gumroad and just just I don't even think you can escape it. If you type in modding tutorial or, or 3D tutorial, you'll you'll eventually end up back on on Gumroad, and you'll find some cheap tutorial that really is worth it. And most of them have good previews, and you can see what you're going to learn. And you know, if you're it's it's a cheap hobby to get into. Are are you there just, things you know, on there that are specific to like Fallout Four and Skyrim, etc.? Because that's the I don't think so. Right. That's that's what I think a lot of people it's... want that. And that's what I'm what I'm finding the longer I'm in this is people want even though, for example, there are hundreds of tutorials for Skyrim and almost everything in them applies to Fallout Four, but people don't know that. So they just search for yeah, how do I put a weapon in too. Fallout Four and then you know they don't think to go further back they just want that those those guides to get them in because that's the motivation too is getting that first thing in that's what gets you that hunger to try again to then go try and learn more so that's why i was so excited yeah, when yeah. i saw the rizzlers tutorials but you're i mean i don't think he does anything with zbrush in that so i'm thinking if we can if we can get some neuro explanation of turning <laughs> turning clay into a weapon the, like it could be it could be uh, huge my biggest, my biggest fear there would be like i wouldn't know I mean, again, like I don't understand ZBrush at all. <laughs> I, I maybe understand five percent of ZBrush. Sure. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm some master. Right. I would love to. Uh, but then again, I don't think. I think most people are like that the same way. God, ZBrush is like such a mind bender. The more I'm thinking about it, <laughs> <laughs> the more I think about how crazy ZBrush is as a program, the, the less I understand it. You know, it's like the more the more you know, the more you understand how much you don't, you know. don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what ZBrush is, and I don't mean to say that as like an intimidating thing. If you're if you're listening to this, and you want to get if, if your takeaway from this podcast is I want to get into modding, don't be afraid of ZBrush. It is complex, but just keep playing with it's it. It's worth the time and effort. Yeah. Just keep playing with it. It's a toy. And there's enough tutorials you know, you out there. You can get your way through it. I, I guess what I'm saying is if we wanted to bridge that gap from people taking their Gumtree tutorials and then making it into a Fallout item, 
do you think you could help in that department and get given that little bit of that little <sighs> boost just at the end like all right i'm going to assume you have your model yeah, done in zbrush here's what you do next i i could i don't know i could i could do that but like i'm no good with video editing and what, whatever you know you it's that's I don't know. I don't know if that's your deal. You seem to be that kind of guy because I, I just I love teaching podcasts. people. I, I absolutely love making videos and, and tutorials. <laughs> yeah, I, and stuff. I, I could I could probably do it if I could you know write down a script and uh, sort of bullet points and sort of talk my way through yeah. it and just do it just like uh, just like the tutorials I follow. Yeah, I could probably do it, but again, I it's too much effort. I'd rather spend it spend that effort on making more cool stuff. Right. You know, <laughs> I guess that's selfish of me. It, it's so it's self. Probably, you're yeah, so like, selfish. <laughs> It's so, so selfish, selfish making all those mods I, for us. <laughs> technically, I could, I could, I would, I, I'm technically, yeah. Again, I, I don't, I don't charge for my mods. My mods are all free. Right. You just have to type a zero in on Gumroad, and on I started doing it on Patreon now, where I just give out the link anyway. I just ask that you go through Patreon. Right. But um, I, if I technically, if I did tutorial, I could charge for that. Which I don't know. If, I don't know if that's been a thing. If paid modding tutorials, is that a thing? Could I? I don't know I if you can do that. It's so it's so sketchy what we can and can't do. Like that's one of the other things with yeah, like going weird. back to the Patreon conversation is it's a shame that we aren't allowed to give Patreon rewards in the form of custom mods. Like that would be such an obvious yeah. thing to be like, hey Well, we we are, but it's a Nexus thing that doesn't let us. The Nexus is the only reason we're not allowed to do that. If we didn't have the Nexus, we could do that. But no, it's against it's against podcast, Bethesda's it's against Bethesda's TOS to sell mods, and that's considered selling a mod. If you were to make an exclusive mod that was only available to people who signed Bethesda up for your Patreon, Bethesda only owns the ESP. What's that? Bethesda only owns the ESP. Bethesda doesn't own the texture, the mesh. Oh, the assets, I got you. I got you. So you're saying you release the ESP for free, and then they have to purchase the BA2 from you? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a million ways around it. it, and I'm not saying I'm doing that sort of thing. But right, right. I've read I've read through the TOS. The thing that really stops us from doing that is is the Nexus doesn't want us doing that. And before I, I don't want I don't want to leave it on. Sure, this. sure. I like I like that the Nexus doesn't allow that. Okay. That sounds that sounds counterintuitive, but it's I like that the Nexus is putting its foot down. I should say Robin. Robin's the one that runs the Nexus. I like that he's willing to say to he's willing to to prevent people from turning this into custom made micro i mean we all remember the skyrim modding right on, on steam right yeah that was such a disaster for for so many reasons right. and i think robin is is brave for being the guy that won't let that happen right to nexus and patreon for the longest time patreon wasn't even allowed and your patreon links weren't allowed but uh that's since been changed but i still think it's probably overall a good thing because you'll you'll end up. I mean, we're all nice guys here, right? You and I are nice guys. See Dante's nice guy. All those guys that have their own patrons are are nice folks. But we're the ex we're there's there's going to be assholes out there mm -hmm. that will take advantage of that, and they will nickel and dime mod users, and they will make money for off of it, and they'll ruin the community. They'll split the community in half. And I mean, they already kind of, they already kind of do that. Like there's, um, there's, you know, there's paid modding forums out there. They exist. Right. They're, they're very, very, very niche, but they do exist, but they don't, they, they have little to no influence and I want them to stay that mm -hmm. way. I, the Nexus is such a good thing for modding in general. Right. Like you were saying, if a lot, because I, I think one of the things we've seen that Fallout 4 has shown and, and even Skyrim showed is that it seems that with each new game, you get a new a group of people who show up as the like the main influencing modders. It's not like the same ones carry between games. And so if the modding was very, if for example, at uh, the next game, Nexus laid off and it became, you could make paid mods for um, Starfield, then that would just be, that would take over as the norm. And then like the next, the next yeah, big group of modders that. would all just be expecting cash for everything. Yeah, I dev that's it's, I think it's so important that the Nexus continues to not allow that yeah. sort of thing. But uh yeah, that's that's where I stand on on that as far as paid mods go. I'm I would like if modders got paid more for their work, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's it's such a, like just enjoy it. Enjoy that everything's free right now. Like even even if you, you really want to get paid for doing this kind of stuff, yeah. like you'll as soon as money becomes the norm, right. it will it will ruin the scene. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm really, I, I, 
that's just that's just me saying thanks to the Nexus and everyone that works there for for tolerating my bullshit <laughs> with with Gumroad and Patreon and all that stuff for so long. But I, I do appreciate what they do. Yeah. I, I would think that uh, yeah I would think it's probably a risky proposition to get too much money involved. I the only the only pro I have for it is when people are doing like what we're doing, which is trying to use the money to make better mods. So being able to purchase yeah, well, services that's okay. I, and services and assets and things that we couldn't do on our own or that would uh, just would take too long or be prohibitive in some way is that we can shortcut that with money and getting getting those through donations is a huge help so that we're not putting up all this money out of our pockets like when we're already yeah. we're already well, committing one, all one of our positive time thing so. on that but positive thing on that is a um, what is it the development tools are still are relatively cheap these days like yeah it used to be you had to you had to drop you know four or five grand on a license for 3ds max you don't have to pay that so much anymore sure. you can get the the monthly license and it's not nearly as as hard of a hit right. but uh yeah, yeah, we're we're heading in the right direction, I think, and I don't think, uh, I think the Nexus is doing a good job of of directing the flow. Yeah. I think that's the right wording. Yeah, I think I think now the only the only risk remaining in the Bethesda community is whether or not Bethesda will continue to support it because the they have financial incentives not to give us the tools because then they can cash in on the microtransaction markets that they're creating. So I don't know. I think Fallout seventy six kind of helped us in that regard because they realized they're not invincible. Right, I think they can they can make some pretty big mistakes, and people will call them on their bullshit. Right. Yeah, I think and I think there was. If, they, if you look at the download numbers, I can I can see the the where people went away in November, December, and then everybody came running back in January. Um, just looking at the download <laughs> numbers across my mods, uh, so people got frightened away from that. But I don't know that has anything to do with the microtransactions. It is more just to do with the game isn't fun enough and doesn't have enough content. And one of the things that would always fill that gap and give more content are mods. So. Yeah. It, yeah, it might be hopefully that's a lesson they're learning. I'm just I I don't we don't know. We don't know if we don't know when we're going to get a CK for 76. We don't know how it's going to work. We don't know if we'll get one for the next game. It's uh it's kind of up in the air still. But I'm hopeful. I think they 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 can't be stupid. They can't they have to recognize that some of the draw and the reason that you yeah. know like we have 100,000 people downloading our mods is because those 100,000 people are still sticking around waiting for the next Bethesda title. Um <laughs> I have confidence in guys like uh, Todd to uh, to make sure that's that the ship stays upright. You know what yeah. I mean? Awesome. All right, man. I think uh, I think this was a All great right. podcast. I appreciate your time, and I can't wait to see what you got working on next. And I'm gonna keep hounding you on that ZBrush tutorial. One day we're gonna make it happen. I'll I'll oh, do yeah. the I'll oh, do yeah. the okay. I'll, no, I'll I, offer to do the video editing for you. If that's how you've already got the you've already got the seed planted in my head, and I like <laughs> it. So I might I might go somewhere with that. Awesome. So, but okay. Go ahead. Is, do you have do you have like a sign off or something? Or, no, we just we just let it let it end however it may. Um, <laughs> okay. I guess I, I sometimes remember to offer. Do you want to say anything to the audience before we uh, before we close out here? Um, I will definitely link your uh, pa I will definitely link your Patreon below because your stuff is amazing and you deserve it. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll score <laughs> some new patrons after this. I was just gonna do an ironic like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. I, I guess you could link the Patreon too. <laughs> uh, awesome. You don't have to like. And, I don't think I even have a YouTube uh, page that anyone knows about, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> they can like and subscribe to me instead. That's fair. I'll, ta I'll <laughs> yeah, take. Yeah, go, go like and subscribe. He, he's he's actually into the social media stuff. I'm not. <laughs> uh, awesome, man. All right, good talking with you.